What's up guys, welcome back to a brand new story. Today we have a story of a kid in the subscribers class who keeps on bragging about how he has a real job, but he's just a Discord moderator. But then the kids and the subscriber in the subscribers class learn that the Discord mod has a girlfriend slash kitten slash whatever cringe thing you want to call it. And let's just say that it is a very uh, sus situation. It is very, very... Chris Hansen, if you if you're catching my drift without uh, YouTube being big mad at me. So yeah, with that being said, uh, leave a like in the video to claim your free nothing, and let's jump right into the story. So anyways, we're gonna call the subscriber who submitted the story Aiden. So there's a kid in Aiden's class who we're legitimately just gonna call him the Discord mod. I'm not gonna give him a name. I'm just simply gonna call him the Discord mod. And here's the thing. No disrespect to the mod Discord mods in general, because um, I, I have a Discord server and some really great people mod that staff. But there's definitely, definitely a uh, certain uh, characteristic. Like, you can, when I say Discord mod to you, you kind of have an image that pops into your head. So, whatever image that pops into your head, make them even worse and then multiply that by seven, and you have the Discord mod in this story. So, anyways, there's a kid who comes into class every single day. He wears the exact same anime hoodie. The, in, okay, he wears the same outfit every single day. He has this stained, greasy, fr kind of like crusty at this point, so it's like kind of like stiff because it's so crusty and gross, anime hoodie, that he legitimately wears every single day. And the thing is, right, since the crust and the grease and the slime, it just never leaves the hoodie, people have just kind of come to the conclusion that the... Uh, that the, uh, the, the anime, uh, not the anime kid, the, uh, the Discord mod has just never washed the hoodie. And then he also wears the same slides with no socks every single day. And uh, let me just say, those dogs are barking. And these are some sickly, gross dogs that are barking right now, dude. Like, it is really, really bad. So anyways, this kid comes in every single day. And one day, one day, he sits down. And this is before anyone knows, like, really that he's a Discord mod. I mean... They probably guessed it by, like, some other reasons. <laughs> they probably just... They weren't surprised by it, is all I'm trying to say. But I don't know if they guessed it, right? So he sat down one day. He's like, what's up? Also, yeah, I always make all the guys I find annoying in these stories, Cartman voices. It's, it's just how it is, right? He's like, hey, wow. It's so hard to be so responsible sometimes. And, like, at this point, Aiden, the subscriber, and a few other kids are sitting around him, and they're kind of just like what he's like ah, it's so hard to be responsible sometimes man i'm so mature and responsible and they're all just like okay this kid is obviously baiting us into asking oh why are you so mature and responsible and then just allowing him to go on some kind of probably like tirade of you know how he's better than everyone or something you know very standard spoiled kid discord mod behavior y y you already know how it goes right but they kind of look at him and aiden is not giving him an ounce of satisfaction so he doesn't say anything and so this, the discord bot's like Ugh, it's so difficult to be mature and have a jab and at this point, Aiden was like, oh, did he, like, start working at the local CVS or something? Or what's the word with that, bro? Like, I, what? He's like, yeah. And at this point, like, Aiden's actually kind of kind of curious what the job is. He's like, oh, what's your what's your job? He's like, oh, I'm a full-time Discord mod. It's very difficult. And let me just say for a second, no disrespect to any of the mods on my server, They've had to deal with a lot of crap. And I'm never there on purpose because it's Discord. I, I can't, I can't even, I, I can't show up, right? I can't do that. I'm sorry, guys. But they deal with a lot of garbage, so shout out to them. And it is very difficult. However, they're not going around being like, oh my God, I'm so mature. I have a real job. It's called being a Discord mod for seven servers. Like, no, bro, they're not doing that. They're actually like, they, they are real people that actually exist. Unlike this kid who is, He's not a person, bro. Man, it's just a full-on clown. Um, but you'll you'll understand why I'm going so hard on him in a little while. I mean, I kind of gave you an idea in the beginning of the video why I'm not a fan of this guy. But uh, anyway, she's like, yeah, I have to mod six Discord servers. It's very difficult. I spend a lot of time, like at least 20 minutes every day doing my Discord. It is such a difficult job. And uh, at this point, it's like, oh... So do you get paid? Just because he knew 
that the Discord uh, that the uh, the Discord mod kid definitely did not get paid. <laughs> Sorry to my staff, I'm still not paying you. Anyways, um, you'll get a union if you'd like. No, 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 I'm kidding, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Anyways, right, so, you know, Aiden's like, oh, so do you get paid? He's like, ah, well, no, but, I mean, do volunteer firefighters get paid in money? No. They get paid in respect. And I am respected around those Discord communities. And Aiden looks at him, he's like, oh. So they respect you for being a Discord mod? He's like, exactly! When I walk into the general chat, they all bow down to me because I have the power to mute them, not permanently ban them, but I can kick them temporarily, and they don't want to mess with me. So when I come in, they all bow down to me, and they understand one thing about respect, and that it is must be served up. They're all kind of just looking at this kid like, bro, bro, he needs, he needs to chill out, bro. So they're all kind of like, Aiden and his friends are kind of like, oh, so you got a lot of respect around here. And Discord, and the Discord's mind is like, yeah, basically, that's what I'm trying to say. I just got a lot of people respect the work I do. It's really difficult. Not anyone could be a Discord mod, bro. And Aiden's like, okay, cool, like. I'm sure that that respect will translate to around here. And he's like, and the Discord mod's like, yeah, I'm already, like, noticing little things. Like, people are looking at me, and it's uh, definitely not the stain on his shirt that's been there for a month. Oh, it's definitely, like, oh, I think they're just looking at me, and they're like, whoa. I wish I could be that guy. And Aiden and his friends are like, okay, um, sure. That's cool. All right. Yeah, but okay, so... The next day comes around, and the Discord mod continues to talk about how he is so mature, and he has a job. However, this is, it's funny. The Discord mod was sitting in the back corner of the room where Aiden and his friends sat that day. The next day he comes in, and he sits in the middle of the room to the left, where a different group of people normally sit down. And Aiden and his friends legitimately heard him say word for word, bar by bar, like exactly what he said yesterday. Be like, oh my god, I'm so mature right now. They're all like, what? The kids up there are like, bro, what? He's like, oh, dude, I have a job because I'm an adult and I understand that adults just got to have jobs, bro. And they're all like, what? They're like working at the mall or something? He's like, no, I'm a Discord moderator for six servers. And uh, they're all like, okay, I wouldn't call that a job. He's like, yes. And they're like, okay, do you get paid? He's like, no, but I get paid in respect. On all those servers, they fear me. And look, in the next day it comes around, and Aiden and his friends are sitting back there, and he sees the Discord mod sit at the front of the class, is now talking with a group of girls, and Aiden just can't help himself, so he goes up to the front of the classroom to sharpen his pencil, but he literally, like, rotates the pencil sharpener at, like, one rotation per minute, because he just wants to hear exactly what's happening. So the Discord mod sits in the front of the class, where all the girls are, and he's like... Hey, girls, what's good? And they're like, hello? What? He's like, oh, man, it sucks being so mature all the time. And they're all kind of just like, oh, I, I, what, what are you saying? Like, I, I just don't understand. And he's like, oh, man, I'm just so worn out from my job that I have. <laughs> they're all like, okay. He's like, do you want to hear what your job is? They didn't even ask. They're just like looking for uh, looking for the person who asked on this one. Oh wow, he doesn't exist. No, but they're like, um, okay, I guess. Whenever so, by the way, if you ask, if someone responds to you, okay, I guess, and they add in the I guess, that literally means no, bro. That means they're really not trying to hear or do or agree to or whatever to like whatever you they responded to you with. Take that as a no, basically. Or take that as the most reluctant yes. They're like a yes because they probably have to, but a no if they had a choice. Whenever someone says, I guess, after okay, you already know you're in the dog park at that point. But anyways, he's like, yes, I have a job, and it is moderating six, count them, six, and he puts up five fingers, which, genius right there, six Discord servers. 
And they're all kind of looking at him like, what's a Discord server? And the Discord kid literally, like, falls over in his chair laughing, like, oh my god, guys, they don't know what a Discord server is. <laughs> like, do you guys not even join your communities of interest? Do you not even, like, join the TV shows that you watch that may or may not be My Little Pony as well as me? And you don't do join the Discord servers to figure out, like, the other people of interest? Oh my god, guys, laughing point. Yeah. Turns out that uh, no one was laughing and pointing with the Discord mod because, believe it or not, um, most of them had a healthy social life. Uh, not saying if you're on Discord 24-7, you don't have a healthy social life. But I'm also not saying that you do. So feel free to join my Discord server, but spend like 20 minutes or less per day. Just he healthy rule of thumb. Just make sure, make, guys, make sure you're getting out there. If I have to, if I have to teach a lesson to the masses... Um, Go outside. Grass is green. Grass is good. Fresh air is good. Um, meet some people outside, if possible. Human interaction is pretty important. We, you know, just, just a little word of advice. But anyways, the next day happens. And the Discord mod has already made his runs, like, around the place, explaining to everyone how he's so mature because he has a job or whatever. And this is where things start to go really, really, really south. Really, 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 really south, right? It just gets really suspect because uh, these kids were juniors and the Discord mod had repeated um, the grades uh, several times, which is fine. Sometimes you need more time to figure things out. However, this means that the Discord mod had turned 18 like a month ago. So he was officially an adult. So yeah, this is where the story starts to turn a little bit south. Um, so anyways, one day the Discord mod comes in and he sits down next to Aiden and his friends. And Aiden and his friends are looking at him like, what's good, bro? <laughs> Do you have to tell us about how mature you are again for moderating Discord servers? Because we've already heard the shtick, bro. We've already heard it. I don't, I don't think we need to hear it again. We got it. I understand. He's like, no, no, no. Hi, guys. Oh, are you guys single and sad? You look very single and sad, Aiden. And Aiden did just happen to break up with his girlfriend two weeks ago. So he's like, well, actually, matter of fact, yes. Very recently. I don't, Aiden doesn't even know why he admitted to that. Because it's literally just giving the Discord mod more fuel that he definitely does not need. But he's like, oh, that's a shame. Because I've been in a long-term relationship for a while now, and she's beautiful. She is beautiful. Oh yeah. And they're all kind of just looking at this kid. Discord mods is like singing in a corner. Like, what was what, that song? Oh no, the song is I'm beautiful no matter what you say. I thought it was like, she's ah, That was supposed to be, I don't know. Anyways, sorry guys, Discord mod can't dance, break out into song anymore, but Discord mod was like, Talking about how he's got that, like, oh, my God. She's so beautiful, guys. Yeah. And they're all like, oh, like, tell me about her. He's like, okay, well, she's my kitten. And they're all like, oh, cringe. No, no. Okay, so just another word of advice from the Connor Pugs channel. Don't, don't call someone your kitten. That's fucking weird, bro. Stop. I never swear in the channel. I only swear when it's serious, and that is serious. Don't call anyone that, okay? Okay? Anyways, yeah, so he's like, yeah, she's my kitten, bro. <laughs> We've been together for so long. It's so great. And they're all kind of like, some of them started to raise some eyebrows. They're like, for so long? Like, how old is, like, uh, what, what is the average age range of the people in your servers? He's like, oh, like, 13 to 16. And they're all like, you know, the rock meme where it's like, like that explosion sound effect and he raises his eyebrow. Insert that right there, right? And uh, they're like, oh, where did you meet your kitten? He's like, oh, one of my Discord servers. Insert rock eyebrow emoji or eyebrow meme with explosion sound effect again. And they all started looking at each other like, hey, yo. Hey, yo, Chris Hansen. Chris Hansen. Yeah, but uh, anyways, um, they're all kind of looking at each other. And uh, he's like, yeah, she's pretty great. 
And they're like, oh, how old is she? And he's like, that is private information. I'm not going to talk to my kid. <laughs> they're all like, oh, my God. Oh, oh, my God. And Aiden looks at his friends. And the Discord mod eventually gets up and sits somewhere else to brag about his quote-unquote kitten, right? And Aiden talks to his friend. He's like, dude, we might actually have a crime on our hands. Like, this might actually, this is, like, serious, bro. Like, we need to investigate. Like, we need to, like, go in and try and investigate this stuff. Because What? What is happening right now? Yeah, so sure enough, the Discord mod is sitting there. And, uh, you know, he leaves his computer to go up to use the bathroom for the next six hours. Um, Because all he eats is uh, Cheetos all day, so his bathroom trips are half of his life. But uh, anyways, he while he's off of the bathroom, you know, Aiden and his friends sit down at his laptop. And, like, they see it, and they're like, okay... Like, it's open. Like, there's no password. Because the thing is, he just left it. Like, he just left it on a, like, uh, unaccounted for. So they all sit down, and they're like, oh, God, it reeks over here. And well, I shouldn't say reeks, because that has a different connotation. It smells so bad over here. Oh, my God. Oh, God, what is this? And they sit down, and, like, Aiden's like, dude, I'm not touching this keyboard. You look at the keyboard. It is literally 50% keyboard. 50% gamer grime grease and Cheeto dust. It is the most disgusting thing ever. It is exactly what you expect a Discord mod keyboard to look like. Uh, one for one matches up 100%. If you saw this keyboard, you would have been like, okay, he definitely moderates at least one Discord server. Like, at least one Discord server he moderates at a minimum, right? So, they're like, okay. They go open his Discord account. There's like a thousand notifications. They're like, oh my God, like we're never going to find this out. And they kind of like quickly glance through the names or run the cursor over the names to see who's texting. And that's when they see Kitten Heart Heart. And they're like, oh my God, this is definitely her. So they type in, they open it up. And she's like, hey, Mr. Moderator. I was wondering if you wanted to have a movie night tonight. I, I don't know. That's the best voice I could give. Um, and so they're basically like, they're, they find this, like they keep, they scroll or they find this person's profile, right? And they click it, right? And they, they copy down the information. And after copying down the information, they start scrolling through the messages. And one of the kids, one of Aiden's friends is sent on hall duty, basically to make sure that the discord mod, when he's coming back, like from the bathroom, which could be centuries for all the Cheetos he eats and no water, drinks no fluids, except, uh, I don't know, uh, <laughs> uh, Red Bull and Cheetos. His diet exists on that, so he basically just uh, has goes to the bathroom for seven hours per day. Um, but anyways, when the Discord mod comes back, uh, one of Aiden's friends will see it and then run back in the class and be like, go, so you don't get caught. Anyways, Aiden is scrolling up, trying to find anything incriminating, but unfortunately his friend runs back. He's like, he's coming back, he's coming back. Must have just had to go pee. So like Aiden like exits out, stands up and they all go back to where they're sitting the discord mod sits down starts typing away the thing is though aiden got the contact information for the discord's mods quote unquote discord kitten right um and uh yeah so the idea is he's gonna go add this person and just ask some information some very basic information say he's a friend of the discord mod so anyways aiden and his friends they go back home and today is a friday so they go back home, and they were having, like, they were planning to have, like, a get-together anyways. So they decide that they will be Chris Hansen. They will be to catch a uh, oh, spaghetti a word, right? They, they, that's their job today. And uh, they take it with, uh, with pride. So they sit down, and they create a Discord profile together. And they try and be like, okay, what, what possibly could I make this, right? And, oh, another thing I forgot to say that they got information from... They checked, like, the six Discord servers that he was in, and they found the one that she was in so that they could add her naturally and pretend that they are friends or whatever, right? So, yeah. Anyways, um, they make this profile, and it's like they're in a, I don't know, some kind of, like, specific anime something, which is fine. You can like what you want. Um, I'm, not, I'm not bashing that at all. But they were in a very specific, like, anime show one, and... Uh, so they make the profile pic, and they make the profile pic like the main character from the anime or whatever, and they join that Discord server. 
And they see at the top of moderators, it's like the Discord mod is very intimidating. Oh my god, guys. They all have so much respect for me because I'm a moderator in your server. Yeah, but anyways, they eventually find his quote-unquote kitten, right? And they talk to her in chat. They're like, hey, I'm new here. I was wondering if you would like to talk about whatever, right? And she's like, oh, yeah, sure. I'd like to talk about dish anime or whatever. What do you want to talk about? Something like that. I don't know. And she's all like... They're all, like, having a conversation. The whole idea is they're, they're going to make this, this guise of friendship so that they will eventually be like, oh, can you add me on a... Pri oh, no, that's her voice. Oh, can you add me on a, ch a private chat? And she'd be like, okay, sure. And then they'd be like, how old are you, by the way? I'm 14. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that, because that's how we handle serious situations like that. Explosion noises. Anyways, um, so, yeah, that's the plan. And let me just say that there is a massive plot twist. Not only the fact that, you know, it's a little suspect, but there's a massive plot twist. This is one of the best stories I've ever received. So you definitely want to stick around and hear this out. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying right now. Anyways, if you made this far into the video, comment Discord down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. I'll try and hard a bunch of comments to say it, but I can't really guarantee too much because I got a lot to do today. But either way, comment that down below. And also, make sure that you, or if you prefer listening to these on Spotify, uh, I have a Spotify link down below. All the stories are being re-uploaded on there now. And also, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, TikTok is where I repost my short videos. And then also, Instagram and Twitter, where you can submit your own stories. They'll be linked down below. And finally, the best way to support the channel is two things. First, Finish watching this video all the way to the end, which the ending is pretty great, so I bet you'd want to do that either way. And then after you're done, go ahead and watch another story video. Like, just watching another one after this one signals to YouTube that, you know, the channel's doing well, helps us reach new people. And a super easy way to do that is the story time playlist in the pinned comment down below. Makes it real easy to watch these videos. Anyways, let's get back to the story. So Aiden and his friends, um, they make the profile account and they log into the Discord and they find the Discord mods, quote unquote, kitten, right? And they talk to her and they're talking about like anime or some crap, right? And eventually they're like, oh, hey, like they send a, a, a friend request and she accepts it. So they start talking privately, right? They start first of all talking about like anime or whatever. And then eventually they get around to the asking of the age. And she's like, oh, I'm 15. Uh-oh, Mr. Discord mod. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, so anyways, they're like, oh. Oh. Okay. And they pretend that, like, they're going to keep on with the conversation. And they're pretending, like, okay, whatever. Like, we're just going to pretend, like, nothing very shocking just happened. We're going to pretend, like, we didn't have a shocking revelation of just a little bit of truth, right? We're just going to pretend, like, we didn't hear that. We're just going to pretend, like, that just didn't happen. Um... Yeah, yeah, they basically end the conversation after that because they have all the information that they need. And they sit down, and they're like, what do we do? Like, what are we going to do about this? Like, the kids at school need to know. And Aiden and his friends are like, I, I just don't know what to do about this, right? So they call up one of their friends, that someone that is also in their class, but they're not as close with. And this is where the craziest plot twist of the story happens. So they're, they're sitting down, and they're talking with this friend, and they basically are like, dude, they're like, I knew the Discord mod was, like, weird and stinky, but he's also, like, he's also, like, a weirdo, too. Like, look at this. And his friend is like, hmm, okay. And he's like, I don't know if I should, you know what? It's going to come out anyways, so I might as well tell you. And they're all like, what? Because at this point, they're like, you know about this? And he's like, yes. Like, did you know that the Discord mod and his kitten have never showed their faces to each other before? And at this point, Aiden... Wait, did I call the main guy Aiden? Yeah, Aiden, Aiden's like, wait, how do you know that? And he's like, you also know that, you know, the Discord mod has never FaceTimed with this girl. They've never seen each other before. And he's also never video called with her, never a voice called. They've only typed. They've never spoken. They've never seen each other. And they're all just kind of like, dude, how do you know these things? Like, do you know these people, like, personally? Are you close personal best friends with the Discord mod? Like, how do you know this? And basically, the friend of Aiden and his friends goes on to say, do you ever think that, you know, this kitten wasn't actually who you think she is? And they're like, wait, 
wait a minute. And he's like, do you ever think that this kitten isn't even a she? They're like, wait, wait a minute. He's like, yeah, I think you guys caught on, but I set up the Discord mod to see, and I made it very clear my age and who I was as this kitten, right? This is a honeypot, bro. This is a trap. And I've been planning to come out with this information on Monday when you get back. Everyone's like, yo! Yeah, so basically this kid in Aiden's class had been very, found the Discord mod very interesting and just wanted to see if, like, he would fall for such a thing. And, uh, yeah, he, uh, he did fall for such a thing. And uh, he, apparently, right, the friend of Aiden goes on to explain that he's made it clear a billion times that his character that he played was 15, right? That was not 18, was, had quite a range from him, right? Made it very abundantly clear, did not like, he was the one who started talking to her, he came on to her, right? He made it very clear that he was 15 a billion times, just so that like when the chat logs came out, the chat logs came out, and basically, right, he explained to Aiden and his friends that on Monday, he was going to start telling people, revealed that the kitten that the Discord mod was, like, bragging about was actually him pretending to be a 15-year-old. So, yeah. Let me just say that the, uh, the, uh, that was the most craziest night they've ever had, having that revelation. I'm just like, the oh, my God. Like, wow. So, yeah. Monday comes around. And a word gets around school so freaking quickly. Like, it is the quickest thing that gets around school. Like, basically, this kid just tells people and says, hey, tell everyone else. Like, make this spread. And he also sends, like, these, like, screenshots or whatever and all that kind of stuff. And they get into class, and the Discord mod is sitting there. And everyone's, like, turned around looking at him with this, like, this look. With this look, right? And he's just like, what's up, guys? Watch good. Look, uh, he doesn't know yet. So he starts, dude, he starts bragging about his, his girlfriend again. And he, it is the most awkward, uncomfortable thing because Aiden knows that everyone else knows all the details that he knows. Besides, yeah, so they're all like, oh, really? Like, someone responds because he's like, oh, yeah, my girlfriend and I are so tight. And someone's like, oh, you guys are so tight? Someone from, like, the front of the room is like, oh, you're so tight? Then how, how old is he? she? And he's like, dude, I'm not going to reveal her private information. That's like asking for her social security number, bro, or her address. Like, I'm not going to do that. You're definitely a weirdo who's going to, like, dox her or something. And they're like, oh, really? Really? And, like, the whole glass is so tense or whatever. So eventually, the friend of Aiden, who made the fake account to expose the Discord mod, goes, uh, well, this is the plan the whole time, but goes to the front office, goes to the front desk, basically explains everything. And the administration looks it over. It needs to be kind of walked through, like, what is Discord? What is a fake account? Are you sure this wasn't him knowing that you were pulling a funny prank on him? Eventually, they're like, oh, my God, this is actually kind of bad. So, yeah, they went to the administration with all this information. And eventually, the administration actually comes to the conclusion that, you know, this kid is a risk to have in their school. So, yeah, eventually they kind of, they, conf they ask the Discord mod to come to the front of the office, right? You can hear it on the loudspeaker. It's like, Discord mod, come to the front office or whatever. And I, from what, you know, from what Aiden has been told, because obviously he wasn't there, but from what he was told is the Discord mod was given, basically told like, hey man, you gotta go. Like, I don't know what else to say. Click on the video on screen go. right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it, do it. Sometimes it feels like Gen Z kids will literally believe anything they see on TikTok. So for example, if you see on TikTok that snow is fake and planted by the government, uh, a Gen Z kid might actually believe it. And in today's story, one of them does. It's absolutely crazy. So uh, let's just jump right into it and subscribe if you're new. And yeah, let's go. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted today's story, Brian. So anyways, right, one day, Brian was just out with his class during recess, and there's, you know, it was, snow, it was the wintertime, so there was snow out there, 
it was just, I don't know, man. It was always fun when it snowed for me. Like I'd always like, you know, we'd have like snowball fights when the teachers weren't looking. You'd make snow forts, snow castles. It was just so fun to live like in a place that had snow. So sorry to the people who haven't experienced snow. It's not actually as fun as some people make it out to be or how it looks, but it can be a lot of fun. But anyways, Brian was with his friends one day and this kid who we're gonna call the Gen Z kid, and I'm really just calling him the Gen Z kid, not because he was technically born in Gen Z, so don't take it personally, guys but because he got all of his information off of TikTok and Twitter, which is a total Gen Z kid move. So anyways, uh, you know, so, sorry, I was gonna call him Luke. Brian and his friends were just, you know, out there, chilling, making snow forts, making some snowballs or whatever, and that's when the Gen Z kid comes up and says, Hello guys, did you know that actually, um, the snow is a prop from the government, right? Um, and Brian's just like, Dude, what? And he's like, yes, guys, I don't know if you realize this, but <laughs> you guys are kind of NPC bots, so I wouldn't expect you to realize this, but the snow is actually fake. It is a plant from the government. And uh, Brian's like, uh, okay, like, what, what, what kind of plant? Like, why would they make fake snow? And Brian's like, that's not incredibly important. We don't understand the inner workings of their uh, of what they're doing but just so you know the snow is fake it's not real and it is a government who has put it there and brian's like and his friends kind of were like dude what because they like pick up a clump of snow and they're like how is this fake and he's like so it basically the government puts fake snow and there is no real snow it's actually all government props they put the fake snow out there and it basically confuses the masses like you. So someone like me who isn't a sheeple uh, won't fall for such a easy trick to understand. And so Brian and his friends kind of look at each other like, okay, what the heck is going on right now? And he's like, what do you mean? And he's like, oh, so yes, the government, it, it, they fool a lot of people like you, especially the weak-minded. But me, who's very strong-minded, knows better than this. And so Brian, like, picks up some snow, packs it together into a snowball, and chucks it at this, not the spoiled kid, the Gen Z kid, and it, like, hits him in the face. And he's like, dude, like, I'm pretty sure that was real, dude. Yeah, so basically the Gen Z kid walked away from them being like, you guys are just puppets of the government. You don't know any better or whatever. And the Gen Z kid, what he does is he starts walking around, starts talking to a lot of different people in the playground. So he's only, a, he's not able to convince most people. I think most people realize that snow is actually real um, and it is not the government they're putting, uh, I don't even know. I don't even know, right? Um, it's not a massive plot to like, I don't even know what the plot would be about. That's the craziest thing. Like, why would they even do it? But anyways, this, the Gen Z kid was actually able to get a decent group of people, like five to ten kids. Okay, remember, they're kids, right? These aren't like adults or anything. But five to ten kids to believe him to actually learn the truth about snow. And like, they all started going around like a little group. So the Gen Z kid was able to make a snow is fake support group, basically. And they would go around starting to talk to people, right? So Brian and his friends see this and they hear about this. And Brian turns to his friend, he's like, bro, this kid needs to be stopped. Like, why, why is he telling everyone? Why is he convincing people? How is he convincing people that snow is like not real? Like, why would they actually believe this? And uh, yeah, so... Uh, the next day, the snow melts because if you don't know, snow comes and snows go, snow goes, but I, I don't know, man, like that happens. And Brian walks over, or not Brian, sorry, the Gen Z kid walks over to Brian and his friends. And it's the next day at recess. And the Gen Z kid is like, show Brian, where's all, where did all your precious snow go? And this time, the Gen Z kid was not alone. He was with the five to six or so other members of the snow is fake group or whatever that he made. And everyone in the group starts laughing and pointing at Brian. And Brian's like, what? Like, dude, snow melts. And the Gen Z kid's like, oh, so that's your excuse? Just such a poor excuse, Brian. Oh, it just melted? OMG, like it definitely wasn't like undeployed by the government. That makes a lot more sense, bro. Like you're so stupid. And everyone in like the group is pointing and laughing at Brian like, oh my God, this guy actually believes snow is real. Oh my God, how did he come up with something so crazy? Wow. And so Brian is just looking at him like, dude, 
Like, why? Like, why do you even think this? Like, this is literally the stupidest thing I've ever, like, heard. Like, why? And Brian's like, or no, sorry, the Gen Z kid is like, well, actually, if you uh, did research like I did, I did my own research, and I wasn't a sheeple like you. And I found many, many sources telling me that it's actually a shy-up operation in the government is pushing snow down to have complete control over the population. That's how they do it, Brian. I've broken free of their grasp, but you are still a sheeple. And Brian's like, dude, what? Like, okay, man, can you explain to me why they would fake snow? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. And the kid's like, well, no, but, uh, well, they are, Brian. I saw it on TikTok. It's real, it's real, guys. And everyone else in the snow is fake group is like, yeah, Brian, he's just trying to educate you. And you're being not very nice right now. Because he's just trying to help you break free right now, Brian. And you're not listening. It, I, I kind of feel bad for you, Brian, because I was once like you. The government once had complete control over me, making me think that snow is real as well. But then I saw the truth, Brian. And Brian's just like, dude, I don't freaking know you. So anyways, that group kind of walks away. And uh, Brian's friends turn to him and they're like, dang, these guys are weird. Like, why? <laughs> anyways, though, Brian had a class with the Gen Z kid. And in this class, they had to do a presentation. And the presentation, they were in a science class. And what unit of science were they doing? They were doing like natural science and environment right now. So they had to uh, choose a, a location and do a presentation on the environment. So I don't know if you guys can guess, but can you guess which one the Gen Z kid chose? Yes, the Gen Z kid chose Antarctica, which in the Gen Z kids world was the base because like Antarctica is very, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's like very cold, snowy. It's basically like snow caps at the poles, right? And the Gen Z kid believes that Antarctica is the, the, like the, the, the main point, like the base operation for the government to control the population with snow. Yeah, yeah, I'm not even kidding you. So you guys, strap in, because if you thought the previous was a little cringe, a little uncomfortable, a little like, dang, that kid's delusional, well, you guys are about to listen to the rest of the story, which involves the Gen Z kid doing a class presentation on why snow is fake and Antarctica is the capital of the, of the Illuminati, basically. So strap yourselves in. So about a week after the whole Gen Z kid going up to Brian and saying, oh, you're a sheep of snowish fake dude. Like after that whole thing, like I think the Gen Z kid kind of like chilled out a little bit or he didn't chill out, but he wasn't going around actively mocking people for believing that snow is real. He just, you know, because there wasn't snow in the next week. So I guess he kind of just like did other things. However, so Brian completely forgot about that. But uh, a week later is the day that everyone's presenta presentation was due and they were gonna deliver it in front of the entire class. I think Brian chose like the Sahara Desert or something. So he went up there, he showed some PowerPoint slides and did a little bit of like, here's some information about the Sahara Desert just so you guys know, stuff like that, whatever. And now it's time for the Gen Z kid to go up in front of everyone and give a presentation on Antarctica. Yeah, or the Arctic, right? So the Gen Z kid walks up there. He's like, Ahem, everybody, I want to let you know that you are about to see some top secret classified information. Uh, I just want to let you know that if the government tries to hunt you and your family down after seeing this, it is not my fault. That is your final warning. And so everyone in the class kind of just was like, bro, what? <laughs> Excuse me, sir? Hello? Question mark, right? It just, everyone was kind of weirded out by this. They were just like, what? And the teacher, right? The teacher didn't like step in or anything because I think the teacher was just like, um, okay. <laughs> like, is this like some kind of like funny meme that they, is this a funny meme that you kids do? So the teacher wasn't really doing anything. Uh, Brian was really confused. I don't think Brian realized at this point that the, that the Gen Z kid was about to do a presentation on why snow is fake, but uh, yeah, he does. So anyways, um, let's just jump into it. So the Gen Z kid is like, all right, so none of you guys left, which is cool, which means that you want to be working free from the government. I understand. 
Anyways, you guys, uh, raise a hand. How many of you guys know about Antarctica? And, of course, the whole class raises their hands because it's Antarctica, bro. Like, I, I know what that is. And so the whole class raises their hands, being like, yes, I know what Antarctica is. And the Gen Z kid's like, Wong, you guys don't know anything. And, like, the whole class is like, dude, what? <laughs> like, okay, um, enlighten me then, bro. So he's like, so you guys probably think that the Antarctica is just like a bunch of snow and ice or whatever. Wrong! Because I want to let you guys know a little fact that a lot of you don't know and I know. And like the whole class is like both annoyed because this guy, the, spo the Gen Z kid, I keep trying to say spoil kid. The Gen Z kid is saying this in such like a condescending manner, but also super confused because he's saying like what sounds like actual nonsense in a condescending manner. Like, he's saying, like, oh, do you know what Antarctica is? False. I know the truth. Like, bro, what, what does that freaking mean, dude? So everyone in class is kind of just like, uh, okay, whatever, I guess. I guess. And he's like, okay. So first of all, snow. You guys know about snow, right? And the teacher is kind of looking at this kid. Because the teacher is starting to realize that this presentation is completely going off the rails. But the teacher, it isn't so bad that it's time for the teacher to step in yet. So the class kind of like nods in affirmation of yes, I do know what snow is. And he's like, wrong again. And the whole class is like, what? He's like, you do not actually know what snow is because what do you think it is? Uh, real? <laughs> the whole class is just like, oh my God, this kid's actually gone insane. What? He's like, well, actually, well, actually, well, well, actually, tips for Dora. Well, actually, snow. It's not actually real, guys. I mean, it's just, it's just as simple as that. Snow's not actually real. And it's, it's quite funny. It's quite funny that you think it's real, but it's actually not. It's actually not, guys. It's not real. And the whole class is like, what? He's like, yes, and Antarctica is like known as the, the big snow place, which means it's the big fake place. Are you guys catching my drift? And uh, let me just tell you that no one was catching his drift. Not a single person. They were all just massively confused and not sure what is going on. Yeah, so uh, basically the whole class is just kind of like sitting there, um, uncomfortable at this point because they just genuinely don't know what's going on. The teacher probably should have stepped in earlier and you'll see this kid goes a lot more off the rails and the teacher doesn't even say anything. I think the teacher was kind of just like, trying to give him an opportunity to recover or pivot or be like, sorry guys, big joke, big prank. Now let me do the actual information part. Um, but yeah, no, the kid never ends up. Anyways, I'll, I'll just tell you. So the, the, the Gen Z kid is like, okay, so I'm about to blow all of your minds. So if you don't want your mind blown, you can leave now. And I mean, no one gets up to leave, even though they probably wanted to. I bet everybody in the class is kind of just like, Dude, like, please just let me go. I don't want to deal with any of this. Like, this nonsense. I, but probably the other half were like, I want to see where this goes. Like, this is the funniest, weirdest thing I've ever seen. So the Gen Z kid is like, perfect. So, Antarctica, it showed to us, is a little ice cap that we don't need to worry about and that we don't need to actively check in on. Why do you think this is the case? Answer. This is where they make all the snow. And he has like big like air quotes or whatever. The truth about snow is it is used to control the U.S. population. This is a fact. And uh, everyone kind of looks at each other like, this is a fact? How? <laughs> How is this a fact, dude? He's like, this is a undisputable fact. Snow is not real. I, I know your parents have been lying to you being like, oh, snow is real or something. Snow is not real, okay? It's not real. And it is used by the government to control the population. And the uh, Brian is just kind of like, what? <laughs> Dude. So some kid raises his hand. And the Gen, not the, yeah, the Gen Z kid is like, yes, Steven. Have I not been clear enough for you? <laughs> and this kid named Steven will say, raises his hand and is just like, yeah, like, how do they control the population with snow? And the Gen Z kid just doesn't respond for a second. He's like, Shy Lynch, I'm telling you information. Stop interrupting me. And the old class is kind of like, dude, what? Dude, because he asked a genuinely decent question. Like, 
What do you mean snow is fake? Like, well, what? Also, how does it control the population? Like, how would that control people? People is the secret word of the day. So comment people down below if you made it this far into the video. And while you're down in the comment section, make sure to check out the pinned comment because in the pinned comment is a link to my Spotify account in which all these stories are uploaded as podcasts. I'd love it for you to listen on there if you like that. And also in the pinned comment are two YouTube channels that I'm also working on. Please make sure to go ahead and subscribe to those and watch some of the videos as I think you will enjoy them. Anyways, so anyways, yeah, the... <laughs> The spoil, not the spoil kid, the Gen Z kid continues to go on about how snow is fake. So he moves to the next presentation, the next slideshow, not the presentation. And it's just a bunch of letters saying, snow is fake, wake up sheeple. And you say, like, guys, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to repeat after me. Snow is fake. And he waits a second. And literally no one in the class says anything. This is dead silent. He's like, guys, you're not paying attention. I mean, I get it. You're sheeple and you're just like, beep, boop, bop. I'm a bot. I'm a robot. I'm an NPC. I do whatever government says. Snow is real. But guys, is it really that hard to follow orders? And like, the whole class is like, dude, what is this kid going on about? And so at this point, the teacher steps up. He's like, hey, man, <laughs> buddy, buddy, old pal. Where did you get this information, by the way, that the uh, that, that snow isn't real? And the, you know, the Gen Z kid's like, well, I got it from really reliable sources. And um, the, you know, the teacher's like, can you show me those sources? The first time anyone's actually asked to see, to see the sources, not even the people in the Snow is Fake group that he created earlier asked to see the sources. And he's like, oh, yeah, sure. And he pulls out, like, his phone. He's like, wait a minute, I have to go find it. He's like going on TikTok, going through his saved or whatever. He's like, here, this is undeniable proof that snow is fake. Prove me wrong, Mr. Teacher. <laughs> and so the teacher looks at it. It's like, uh, son, like this. Because the teacher, I guess, has TikTok or whatever. And he's at least, I think the teacher's a little bit more with it when it comes to the internet or something. Or, okay, basically the teacher looks at the account and says, oh, like, like Gen ZK, like this. This is a parody account. Like, it's like, huh? <laughs> He's like, yeah, this, this account is like, it's like a comedy account. It's like, it'll say something satirical or obviously fake and make it portray it as true. But it's, it's even says in the account, like clicks on the account and it says like parody in the account, satire. Like, <laughs> and he's like, yeah, no, this, this account is just satire, man. Like, this is just a joke. And the Gen Z kid's like, oh, what? Um, no, the government got to him. The government got to him. Yes, yes, yes. The government got to him and made him change the account. Oh, you thought I was going to fall for this, man. The government got to his account and made him change it to satire so that he could, like, protect himself. He's trying to avoid being captured by the FBI right now. <sighs> and, and the teacher's like, no, I'm pretty sure this is just uh, satire. Because if you actually watched the video, apparently it was, like, very obviously, like, for all for comedic effect like it was literally done mocking people that like it would come to these crazy conclusions about stuff but this boy the gen z kid must have seen it and been like this is real oh my god guys yeah so uh eventually i think the gen z kid starts to realize that he fell for an obvious joke <laughs> and um yeah, he starts to be like, well, actually, I'm going to do some more research on the topic, and I will get back to you guys later. And the Gen Z kid sits down in his seat and just doesn't say anything. Yeah, so for the rest of the class, the other presentations are pretty normal. But, uh, yeah, a week later, um, it snows again, and uh, Brian goes up to the Gen Z kid and is like, hey, man. And the Gen Z kid's like, watch, watch up. He's like, is this, is this real? And the Gen Z kid's like, yes, uh, it is real. It is real, Brian. You happy now? How's it going, everyone? Today, we have a story of a crazy furry who tries to eat this kid in class. I know. No, no, no. You heard that right. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't, don't double check your hearing. You heard that 100% correctly. So sit back, 
relax, subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're going to call the subscriber who submitted the story Sammy. Real quick, I do want to say that if you are a furry or like to dress up as animals, look, I don't personally get it, but I have no hate for you. All love, trust me. As long as you don't do what the people in this video do, you're totally cool in my book. Same thing when I made the video on like the crazy dream stand. I don't hate dream stands. I have all the love for you guys, but as long as you don't act like the crazy people in these stories, I like you. So anyways, this all started when one day Sammy was innocently walking down the school hallway. He didn't really think anything of it. I mean, bro was just walking to his hallway in school. Like, it doesn't matter, man. But at the end of the day, Sammy made a huge mistake, apparently. Because Sammy was walking, he wasn't really paying attention, and he bumped into this kid. And this kid, after he bumped into him, turns around. And Sammy was kind of expecting, like, by the aggression on this kid's face and by the way he whipped around, that this kid was going to be like, watch where you're going, bro. Or he's going to be like, you want to fight, bro? Or I, I don't know, something like that. But instead, the kid growls at him. Like, freaking growls like an animal. And all, all of a sudden, like, Sammy's just so taken aback. He's like, What? Bro and the kid is like growling at him and staring at him and then turns around and runs away. He doesn't walk away. I emphasis on running away. So Sammy is so confused, but honestly doesn't think much of it because he's like, okay, yeah, sure. It's one weird kid who turned around and growled at me when I bumped into him. Who cares? It's really not a big deal. But sure enough, right, Sammy keeps going, and he goes to class, and life is totally normal. Things are totally normal. And honestly, Sammy doesn't even think about, you know, what just happened earlier in the day. He just thinks about, like, the class. He's just going day to day. But that's when, after school, he returns to his locker. And he opens up his locker to grab his backpack when he sees a crumpled up ball, like a crumpled up piece of paper, sit like stuffed in there. It was like obviously folded up but crumpled and pushed through the, the vents of the locker. So sure enough, Sammy like looks at it and thinks like, okay, may, I don't remember putting this here. Perhaps it fell out of my backpack. Let me open it up to see what it is just to make sure that I'm not going to throw out or lose something important, like, I don't know, notes from class or something like that. And he opens it up, and in really crude handwriting, in, like, black Sharpie, it says, You have disrespected the Wolf Brotherhood. You shall now pay. And Sammy was like, Huh? Like, is this some kind of joke? Is this some kind of mistake? And for some reason, once he read that, and once he read Wolf Brotherhood, that immediately made a connection in his brain to the time when, like, like three hours ago, when he bumped into some kid and growled at him. And immediately, Sammy's like, all right, there's no way that that kid growling at me has any connection to this weird letter. This weird letter is probably just, like, I don't know, unrelated or something like that. But Sammy was really just weirded out by this letter. And he just keeps looking at it. It says, you have disrespected the Wolf Brotherhood? The Wolf Brotherhood? He's like, what? I'm so confused. Like, what is this? Remember, so Sammy's in seventh grade for context. This isn't like, I don't know, they're adults or something in college and it's actual a serious thing. Obviously, the Wolf Brotherhood is something corny, but he's like, what on earth could this be? So the next day is Friday, and literally nothing happens that day, except at lunch, you know, one of the kids is, or Sammy asks, like, the people at the table, and is like, does any, I know this is going to be strange, but I got to ask, does anyone know what the Wolf Brotherhood is? And his friend laughs and looks at him and is like, bro, what are you talking about? And everyone kind of just says no, except one kid at the end of the table speaks up and says, hey, I, I don't know much, but I know a little bit. And Sammy's like, what? He's like, yeah, I, I think I've heard it thrown around once or twice before. It's not like an official student organization, but it's like some kind of like unofficial club that some kids made or something. I, I don't really know. And Sammy's like, well, and then he reaches into his backpack and pulls out the now neatly folded letter and he unfolds it and he shows it all crumpled and it says, you've disrespected the Wolf Brotherhood and Sam, and you shall now suffer the consequences. Sammy like shows this around. He's like, I received this in my locker yesterday. And everyone around the table is kind of like, sorry, bro, like... That's really weird. Don't get me wrong. We agree or the, we agree that that's kind of sus, but like I, we know nothing about it. So the next day is Saturday and it's not school. So Sammy's pretty excited that you know it's the weekend, so he decides that he's going to go to the park. And the plan is for him and his friend to go over to the park around 2 
And, you know, Sam, you know, is walking over, walks from his house and walks over to the park. And the park has like a swing set, a bunch of trees, it has a slide, it has like a place for bike racks. It's a really big park and it's a pretty cool place to hang out. And he, he, Sammy looks down at his phone and he sees a text from his friend saying, hey man, I'm so sorry, I can't make it. And Sammy's like, oh, okay, fine, whatever. And that's when Sammy is about to leave when he sees someone sitting on the swing set at the farthest part of the park. So it's a pretty big park, but he can look all the way down there and he sees someone in a black hoodie. But, the we- but here is where things get weird. He notices that something is wrong with this person. Something is not usual. What was that thing you might be asking? Well, Sammy looked closely and he's looking at it and he's like, that can't be. Like, that can't be. What did Sammy see exactly? He saw a blue tail, like one of those like things you get on Amazon that like kids might put on like their backs and they walk around with like a fake tail or something, dressing up as a fox or wolf or some kind of animal. And at this point, right, the person gets off the swing and turns around. And Sammy can't see like what their face really looks like because they have like sunglasses on and they have a black hoodie pulled down. But the person is very clearly walking towards Sammy. Uh, Not running towards Sammy, but walking towards Sammy. So Sammy's like, okay, this is very strange. And Sammy turns around and starts walking back to his house. And this is when Sammy starts to feel uncomfortable again because he looks to his left, right? Because now he's walking on the road back to his house. And you you know how there's like one side of the sidewalk and then the other side of the sidewalk, and then there's a road in between? On the other side of the sidewalk, there's another person in a gray hoodie this time. And Sammy's like, okay just a coincidence. And that's when Sammy takes like a quick glance at the person over on the other side. And he sees this weird pink thing dangling between their legs. Stop being weird in the comments, you guys. Don't say it. Don't say it, it was a tail. <laughs> Anyways, there's a big like furry tail type thing. And at this point, he's like, Sammy's like, ah, oh, hell nah, bro. I'm not doing this. This is way too weird. And Sammy starts to power walk. But the thing is, as Sammy starts to walk faster, these guys pick up the pace as well. Sammy's not about to run because he doesn't want to get like exhausted or something and then, you know, have to, you know, get caught by these guys because he has no idea what's going on. These also don't look like adult men. They look like kids about his age. And I mean, they have fur tails on, so they're probably not going to be like, I don't know, CEO of Apple and Microsoft secretly have furry tails on or something. But sure enough, right, Sammy's looking. And he sees, like, these kids, and and now at this point, just so you know, the guy in the black hoodie is behind Sammy, pretty significantly far behind, but still behind him, but on his side of the sidewalk. And sure enough, right, Sammy's just like, oh my god, like, like, what, who, why? Like, who is this? What could this be? And that's when Sammy remembers. That's when Sammy remembers the letter he got and couldn't figure out. He said, yeah, what was it? What was it? Wolf Brotherhood. And he looks over and he's like, I'm pretty sure wolves have tails, maybe? He's like, you know what? This is way too much of a coincidence. These guys are obviously after me. And then Sammy's like, you know what? I don't actually know if these guys are after me. I'm gonna like make a sharp turn and then hide. So this was kind of a risky move by Sammy, but he decided that he was gonna do it anyways. So Sammy quickly makes a left-hand turn around the corner. So for a brief like 30 seconds, both the gray hoodie and the black hoodie wouldn't be able to see him. Instead of continuing to walk, Sammy jumps into someone's yard, jumps into one of their bushes, and hides. But as Sammy's looking out, the gray hoodie and the black hoodie, the gray hoodie crosses the street, and the gray hoodie and the black hoodie both turn the same corner that Sammy was turning. They stop walking, they start looking around, and then they start talking with each other. And Sammy's close enough to hear a little fragments of what they're saying. They're saying, blah, 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 Sammy, blah, 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 can't find him, blah, 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 wolf brotherhood. So at this point, right, Sammy knows the two things. That one, these kids were following him, and they were after him. And second of all, that they have some relation if they are not, you know, the wolf brotherhood themselves, right? So Sammy is just like, this is so freaking weird, I don't know what to do. And he waits there, and he's just waiting there. Until, like, the guys, you know, eventually they get up and they leave because they can't find Sammy anymore. So Sammy eventually gets out and just walks home as quickly as possible. Completely, completely freaked out at this point. Completely freaked out. So he walks on home. He gets back home and he calls up his friend. His friend's like, yo, dude, like, sorry I couldn't make it out of the park. And Sammy's like, 
probably a good thing. You're not going to believe what I just what I just witnessed. So Sammy tells the story to this kid, and yeah, sure enough, this you know Sammy's friend's like, oh my god, like, dude, that's insane. Like that's not normal. And Sammy's like, bro, I know, I don't know what to do about this. And Sammy's friend's like, man, like I, I, I don't know what to tell you, like advice wise, but just just be careful, man. Like just just be careful is all I'm trying to say. And he's like, you know what, you know what, man, I'm gonna start asking around for my friends. And see if any of them happen to know anything about, like, I don't know, this, like, this fox or a wolf cult thing you were telling me about. Like, I, I don't totally, like, I, I don't think it's something, but, like, I, I, I don't know. I'll ask around. So, sure enough, Sammy's friend's now in the case, and he's going to ask around. And Sammy's like, you know what? I'm just going to get my mind off of this. Tomorrow, I'm going to go to the mall and just hang out there. And Sammy felt a little bit safer at the mall than, like, at a random park with no one there just because, like, other people were there. So the next day, Sammy walks over to the mall, and he's very paranoid walking over. And he's, like, looking over his shoulder. He's kind of looking around, but he plans to meet up with someone at the mall. So Sammy walks over about five minutes, and he gets to the mall. He sees his friend out there. He meet, They link up, and they start walking around. They walk to different stores or whatever, and they do what you do in the mall. And after a while, Sammy's friend's like, all right, man, I got to go. My mom's here. She's coming to pick me up. And Sammy's like, okay, well, I think I'm going to stay here a little bit longer. So Sammy's friend leaves, gets picked up by his mom, and Sammy walks into a clothing store. In this clothing store, it's really big, it's really wide, and there's a lot of, like, shelves. There's a lot of, like, racks and racks and racks of clothing, and it goes really far back. So Sammy is just, like, kind of, like, sifting through the clothes. He's kind of just looking around. And he's kind of, he's going through and he's going through. And that's when, you know, all of a sudden, he, like, he, he sees someone. He sees someone next to him who's kind of just standing there, not necessarily doing anything, but someone who's looking at their clothes, looking through clothes or whatever. And that's when he looks. And he looks at this person. And something just feels off, right? Someone, they're not like approaching him, but they're standing kind of, they're standing like in the corner of the store looking through clothes and, you know, he's just like, I got, I got to look. I got to look. So sure enough, Sammy takes a peek. And yes, they have a red tail dangling between their legs. Sammy is so freaked out, he immediately turns and power walks out of the store. And he looks behind him. And the person, now in a blue hoodie with the red tail, has turned around and is starting to walk towards him. Sammy is completely freaking out. This is much bigger than he ever expected. And things are only about to get worse from here. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment furry down below. Uh, yeah, that'll be the secret word of the day. And if you want to continue supporting the channel or just support the channel in general, just keep watching videos after this one. Or at some point, just watch a bunch of videos in a row. Basically, the more videos on my channel that you watch, it gives me more minutes watched. Like, the more minutes you watch, the more it helps me out. And I'm actually genuinely curious what you guys are doing while watching these videos. And a lot of people recently have been telling me that, you know, it helps them go to sleep. And if that's the case, let me just direct you to the playlist section on my channel. It'll help you guys watch videos, like, in a bunch in a row. And just so you know, if you want to submit stories of your own, go to my Instagram. It's in the description. It's Connor Pugs, And there you can uh, submit stories. Make sure you're following me. And also... All these videos, every single video I post will be up on Spotify within two to three hours after it's posted on here. So if you want to listen to these things on Spotify, if you're like working out or you're doing something where you can't have a YouTube video playing, I highly suggest you go to my Spotify linked in the description. Make sure you're subscribed, leave a like, and let's just get back into the story as it's about to get crazy. So Sammy is power walking out of this store, like out of the store, and he's walking as quickly as he can to the mall exit. And that's when, like, you know, he passes by a store and he catches a glimpse of someone standing and sure enough, they have a blue thing dangling. And sure enough, it is a blue tail. So as Sammy passes by someone, right, as Sammy passes by someone, he immediately sees, like, someone walk out of a store and starts following him too. And that happens with another and another and another. Now there are five whole people that have come out and they're stalking Sammy at this point. Five people are walking after Sammy with, you know, these blue or red or whatever tails, you know, in between their legs, and they're walking faster and faster, and they're gaining ground, and it's not looking good for Sammy. 
Sammy starts making, like, starts dodging around, and he goes into a store, which kind of sounds like a death trap. You're like, why would you go into one exit? But the thing is, he knew that the store was big and complicated, but also there was an exit that didn't turn on the fire alarm. Because a lot of times, like, you know, if you go into one of these stores and you go out their exit or whatever, it's going to have a fire alarm. But Sammy knew in the way back there's an exit where the fire alarm is disabled and you could leave it without setting anything off. So Sammy walks into a store and 30 seconds later, the five furry people walk in as well, trying to chase him down. And so sure enough, right after, after a little while of doing this, you know, Sammy's going through, he's looking around, he finds the exit, he bursts out of it. At this point, he can't keep on, like, like he knows that he has a little window of probably about a minute before they figure out that he left through this exit, or maybe they don't, but maybe they do, right? So Sammy's like, all right, I know what I gotta do, like, I gotta... Anyways, right, so at this point, Sammy is making, getting some ground or gaining some ground or whatever. He's actually getting some distance, and he just starts running. And, you know, he runs and runs. He runs all the way back home, and he gets to his house. His mom is gone for the day or something, so he gets in there, locks the door, runs up to it, makes sure it, like, kind of, like, goes around to make sure that everything on the first floor is locked, runs all the way up to his room, and just, like, looks out the window. And it's like, okay, there's no way that those kids saw, like, I outran them. They're probably still in the mall. They probably have no idea where I am. Yada, yada, like, I'm totally fine. Like, things are okay. And in the middle of thinking that, he sees five individuals in hoodies and furry tails walking down his street. And he's this thing to my, himself, like, oh, my God, there is no way. There is absolutely no way that this is true. There is no, no shot, like, that this is actually happening. This is not real life. And he's looking, and these four furry guys are, like, walking. And in unison, they all turn, and they're staring at his window. He immediately ducks down and kind of then, like, after a couple seconds, peeks back up, and he just sees, like, these five furry guys staring at his house. And he's like, oh, my God, like, this is actually intense. This is one of the most insane thing ever. After about two to three minutes of them just staring there, they all turn in unison again and walk away. So once again, Sammy gets out his phone, calls up his friend, and is like, dude, I don't, I don't think I can do this anymore. I don't think I can deal with this. This is way too insane. And his friend's like, dude, this is so crazy. I was talking to people all last night, telling them your story, trying to figure it out. And only one person said that they heard it was like a weird kid club or something, but they didn't know much about it other than that. So the next day comes around, and it's now Monday, and Sammy goes into class. And Sammy's like, you know what? That's fine. I'm safe in school. Like, things are totally okay. Like, as long as I'm surrounded by people, these weirdos can't come after me in public. So Sammy goes to his locker, and he sees another crumpled up piece of paper, right? And he's like, oh my god, there's no way. And he goes in, and he opens up the piece of paper, and it says, like, you know, this is, on, this is only the beginning. Signed for uh, Wolf, like, Wolf Brotherhood. And he's like, no, no, this is only the beginning. Oh, my God, these guys are crazy. These guys are insane, man. And right, sure enough, you know, he's just like, okay. Folds up the letter, puts it in his backpack. He's trying to collect some evidence just in case. And, you know, he goes to his first period class. He is totally tweaking out. He's feeling super weird. He is just stressed out beyond belief. And, and, oh, my God, this is where it gets weird. And he's watching, and he sees... Someone, you know, he sees one of these kids walk into class that he's not really friends with and normally sits in the back. And the kid is wearing a hoodie, right? And this kid is now the first time ever coming into class with a red furry fox tail. And Sammy freezes up because he's like, oh my God, that's one of the kids that was stalking me. Like, this is one of the kids that was stalking me. Like, this is crazy. And the kid sits, like, literally takes the seat right behind Sammy. And Sammy is so uncomfortable right now. He is so weirded out. He's like, oh my God, oh my God. Like, this is so scary. Like, this is so crazy. And the teacher starts teaching class. And that's when he feels the furry kid behind him, like, scoot up a little closer, scoot up a little closer. And then he feels the furry kid. He just, like, feels the vibrations of the kid getting out of his seat and going onto all fours. And he's like, what the, what, bro, what are you doing? 
and he turns around and the furry kid grabs his hand and puts his entire hand into his mouth and bites down. At this point, like Sammy's like, oh my God. And the teacher like kind of yells it out. The teacher looks over and he sees this kid on all fours chewing on Sammy's hand. Thankfully, he didn't break any skin because Lord knows this kid has like 3,000 diseases in his mouth or whatever and his saliva would basically be as toxic as a king cobra. But sure enough, right, the teacher's like, Xavier, stop that right now. Let's just call the kid Xavier. And the teacher goes over and basically pulls Xavier off of uh, off of Sammy. And he's like, what's going on? And Sammy's like, I don't know. This kid just bit me. And, you know, she's like, Sammy, go to the school nurse. And Xavier, like, go to the principal's office. I will be sending up a note to make sure that you make it there and to tell him what you did. And sure enough, right, you know, Sammy goes over to the nurse's office. And they look at his hand and they're like, wow, what happened here? Did, like, like what's what's going on? And Sammy had to explain that a crazy furry in class tried to devour him. And the nurse was like, you know what? I'm not going to ask any more clarifying questions. I'm good with just that, you know, like no offense, but we're going to keep it at that. So the nurse is, nurse is making sure he doesn't have any wounds, kind of just like sanitizes the area anywhere. It's like, do you want any bandages? He's like, no, that's fine. And so anyways, when Sammy's done, he doesn't go back to class. He goes to a room. He goes to like some kind of printer, grabs a piece of printer paper, goes in his backpack, takes out a pen and writes down a note saying, dear like wolf brotherhood, I propose a truce. If like meet me at the uh, meet me at the basketball park or net or the basketball court after school, five minutes after school, he takes his letter and he puts it on his locker and he folds it up a little bit, but he puts it on his locker because he assumes that they're going to go by again. And uh, sure enough, by the time, you know, the bell rings and Sammy goes to his locker, he sees the note is gone and inside his locker, there's a piece of paper and he opens it up. And he said, and it, it reads, we will be there at that time. See you then, Wolf Brotherhood, right? So he was like, all right, finally, I'm going to meet these guys. So anyways, right, Sammy is a little nervous and he walks out to the basketball court and he sees five people in hoodies and tails standing there. And he's like, oh my God, this is actually low-key kind of scary, bro. I'm low-key kind of scared. And sure enough, right, uh, you know, he's like kind of like freaking out. He's kind of sweating a little bit and he walks over. And he hears, hello there, Sammy. Welcome to the Wolf Brotherhood. <laughs> Immediately by the, vo- the sound of this guy's voice, he was no longer scared. And they all take off their hoodies. And, like, some of them have fox ears on. Other of them have, like, super long emo black hair. Like, they're definitely not, like, it's not like Mike Tyson on his prime in the ring. Like, you're, you're okay. Like, it, I, I'm, I'm definitely not too scared by their appearances. Don't judge a book by its cover, but in this case, yes, do it. So sure enough, the kids are like, hey, <laughs> it seems that the Wolf Brotherhood has scared you quite well enough, Sammy. And Sammy's like, yeah, you guys are weird. It's really weird. Like, one of your kids, like, try to bite me. And they're like, yes, that was a Wolf Brotherhood performing a wolf bite attack. Sammy's like, yeah, it was really weird. You guys are strange. And they're like, so, you want a truce? Because you lost to the Wolf Brotherhood. And Sammy in his head is like, okay, these are a bunch of geeks, but, like, they also have literally no life. So if I say no, then they're going to keep stalking me and being weird. And Sammy's like, yeah, I'd like a truce. Like, I don't know why you guys were after me in the first place. And one kid steps up. He's like, I see you don't remember our battle a couple of weeks ago. And Sammy's like, dude, what are you saying? He's like, you don't remember our battle in the hallway? Sam was like, oh, wait, yeah, you were the kid who I bumped into accidentally and you were, like, hissing or growling at me. He's like, yeah, we needed revenge for that. He's like, oh, well, it was an accident, man. I'm sorry. And they're like, there are no accidents. Trying to be all, like, I don't know, like, ancient wisdom type deal or something, but they just kind of sounded, like, cringe. And sure enough, right, you know, Sam was like, all right, well, I'm sorry. Can there be a truce? And they're like, council unite. And the five of them kind of like huddle in a circle. Sammy's like, dude, I swear to God, they come out with some BS or something. They're like, actually, we need $500 from you and then we'll let you go. Like trying to do some actual extortion type stuff. But they, you know, eventually they they go back to standing in a row of five. And they're like, you know, you should be grateful that the cancel of the Wolf Brotherhood is so generous. 
we have granted you immunity in our land. And Sammy's like, wait, your land? And they say, yes, the school, par- the school, the park, the playground, and the local mall are Wolf Brotherhood territory. You were an enemy number one for a while, but now you are on the safe travelers list. Have a good day, Sammy. The next day, Sammy's sitting at lunch with his friends, and his friends are dying to know what was happening, because his friend told everybody about what happened. And Sammy's like, dude, do I have a story for you? Leave a like for nothing. I mean, dude, I'm honest, so leave a like. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new story. And just for a second, imagine you're just chilling in class. You're having a pretty good old time, right? And then all of a sudden, right, this Roblox kid goes to the front of the classroom and just confesses his love via a Roblox video of him doing certain things. Yeah, I I can't even really get into it. I know this sounds very vague, but... uh. It's really bad, so sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, and let's just jump right into it. So anyways, we're going to call a subscriber who submitted this story, Bryce. So anyways, there's this kid in Bryce's class who was always playing Roblox. Like, he always sat in the back of the class, and he always had his computer out. He was playing Roblox. I think the teacher kind of knew that this was the case, but there are so many kids in the class, and the teacher was kind of with the mindset, like, if they want to learn, they'll learn, and if not, like, I'm not going to interfere which I don't know if that's a good mindset or a bad mindset, but either way, it just was how it was. So anyways, he was kind of known as the Roblox kid because every single day, without fail, he would be playing Roblox. Like, if you ever saw him, he would be playing Roblox, and sometimes he'd even have the sound on, which is kind of funny, but whatever, right? And occasionally, he would wear, like, a Roblox hoodie or something, but the reason is, every single day, without fail, this kid was playing Roblox. Like, literally, no matter what, he was always playing Roblox. So, uh, we're skipping towards the... We're literally skipping right towards the juicy part. I mean, the whole thing's the juicy part, but we're getting to it right away. They had a presentation this Thursday, and we're actually going to jump to Thursday. It was a pre- This was a history class, and they were studying, uh, you know, the Civil War, and each of them was supposed to go up and present a slideshow of important... Th- of just, like, something that happened in the Civil War. It could be a battle, it could be a general overview, it could be a character piece, like, you could do one about the life of Abraham Lincoln. These kids were given weeks to do it, right? So anyways, the subscriber Bryce goes up, and he speaks about the Battle of Gettysburg or whatever. A little fun fact, in 8th grade, I actually went to go, like, to see, like, the, like, Gettysburg and, like, the battlefields and all that cool stuff with my class. It was a really cool time. But anyways, right, you know, Bryce goes up there, he does a good job with his presentation, and the next person to be called up is the Roblox kid. And normally I save, like, very interesting stuff like this for later on. I'm blessing you guys because we're jumping straight into the cringe. Actually, I don't know if I'm blessing you guys or if I'm cursing you guys because we are jumping. We're jumping straight into the cringe. And when I say straight into the cringe, I mean legitimately straight into the cringe. Like, this is bad. This is So just prepare yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually because this is going to be quite the experience to say the least. So anyways, the Roblox kid goes up to the front of the classroom and everyone's kind of just looking at him, right? And he flips on his presentation and from the very start, actually no, in the very start it looked normal because it was an image with text on it that says like the life of Abraham Lincoln by Roblox kid. He obviously said his real name, but for the sake of this, the life of Abraham Lincoln by Roblox kid. The immediately the first slide is like the goofiest thing ever. So Bryce is looking at it and on the first slide it is <laughs> it is a Roblox character with a top hat on, and there's an arrow pointing to him, and then text that says Lincoln. And then there's more text that says, Lincoln was a good guy. Lincoln was a president. And then, and and the Roblox kid went up there and is literally just reading out, Lincoln is a good guy. Lincoln was a president. And then he goes to the next slide, and it is, (laughs) dude, this is the funniest thing ever. It is the Roblox character of Lincoln, but his head is on the ground. It's like decapitated from his body. And the next slide says, Lincoln died. (laughs) It literally just said, Lincoln died. 
Okay, at least he didn't say, like, L, like, Lincoln took the ratio, young boy's better than Lincoln. At least he wasn't, like, going like that, right? But he was like, Lincoln died. Literally, no context. Who was he shot by? He was shot after the Revolutionary War. Did it happen in a movie theater? Or, like, not a movie theater, you know what I mean? A theater well, was, like, who was the name of it? No, just Lincoln died. And then it was a photo of a Roblox character with his head on the ground decapitated. And an arrow pointing to him saying... It literally, an arrow pointed to it and said, died. Not, here lies Lincoln from whatever, right? It just says, died. So the entire class is, like, holding back laughter because this is, like, the worst presentation on planet Earth. Because, like, oh, look, these kids are, like, in 6th or 7th grade or something, so it's not like they're coming out with uh, college PhD thesis type things. These are not dissertations that are being dissected by other professors, right? Sure, whatever. It's a little slideshow presentation. However, most people had pictures and a lot of text and the pictures were not roblox characters with arrows pointing to them saying lincoln or not lincoln but here's the thing it gets so so much worse so much worse that you guys probably won't even be able to comprehend how bad it is right so the next slide <laughs> I, I i don't even know if i comprehend how bad this is the next slide is just text so just a little recap We've had three slides so far. The first one saying the life of Abraham Lincoln. The second one being a Roblox character with a top hat saying this is Lincoln. He was cool. He was chill. He was a chiller, right? The next slide was the Roblox character with his head on the floor saying he died, lol. And then the next slide says, okay, okay, let's talk about something much more important. So at this point, Bryce was sitting in the classroom. He's like, bro, much more important. This is your presentation, dude. Like, what are you talking about? Like, are you trying to sabotage yourself here? Because it definitely feels like it. And, uh, you know, everyone in the class was kind of confused. And for some reason, the teacher wasn't stopping the Roblox kid. I think the teacher was kind of hoping that the Roblox kid, like the first couple of slides were like a, a joke. And while the teacher didn't find it very funny, the teacher was hoping that the Roblox kid was going to make a bit of a recovery. So I bet the teacher at this point thought, oh, OK, well, the Roblox kid was obviously kidding. Like he's saying, let's talk about something more important. He's probably going to like go over to talking about like the life of Abraham Lincoln. No, the teacher and everyone else was unfortunately wrong because the Roblox kid goes on to just do the, the most insane thing I've ever seen. And you guys, look, I told you before to buckle in, like buckle in for the cringe. You guys got to strap in for the cringe. Like this is an atomic blast of the cringe. So you have to lay straight down on the floor. Make sure it doesn't destroy your lungs and eyes and everything. All your internal organs don't turn inside out with this. So just prepare yourselves. So anyways, the, the Roblox kid clicks onto the next slide. And it is a video. So you know how in like Google Slides you can click onto a video? It is an unlisted YouTube link. So he clicks into it and it goes over to YouTube. And all of a sudden, <laughs> oh my God, I don't know if I can do it. Guys, guys, I think I'm, I'm going to pass away from the cringe, guys. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel to help me survive. Anyways, so all of a sudden, uh, you know the song like What Makes You Beautiful by One Direction? Yeah, that starts playing. And everyone is super confused because Bryce knows for a fact that this was definitely not music to fit the timepiece. <laughs> yeah, I don't think this is like Civil War Abraham Lincoln music. I don't know, man. This just doesn't really seem like it. And all of a sudden, while that song, the, you know, What Makes You Beautiful by One Direction is playing, a video appears on screen of the, of the Roblox kid Roblox character. And it's like a screen recording of him running around this map with like text appearing on the screen. You know how it's like you can have like your Roblox character have like a text bubble. I, I don't know if that's actually true. I don't really play it myself, but I've seen like meme images or whatever. So at first, he, the Roblox character is just like saying the words of the lyrics. So he's like, you're insecure, not sure what's for. Dude, I'm not looking at their lyrics right now. Like, uh, turn in heads when you walk through the door or something like that. Okay, you, you know the song I'm talking about. I butchered the lyrics, but in all fairness, I'm trying to get them from the top of my head. And I haven't heard that song in like a year or last night, either one. Um, but yeah, so everyone is super confused. Bryce kind of turns to his friends. The teacher is just like, okay, like I'm going to let this play because like I don't know where this is going. But everyone is realizing that this is going downhill extremely quickly. And no one realizes like why this, like where this is actually going. Until, like, after, like, a little bit of the Roblox characters, like, dancing on screen and, like, singing the lyrics to the One Direction song, eventually, right, 
eventually, like, the Roblox character, like, it, it zooms in on him, and the music's still playing in the background, but the text is no longer, like, the text of the song. It is, so there's a girl who we're gonna call Eve in this class, and she's sitting in the front row. Rest in peace, Eve, bro, because she's about to get slammed by the Roblox kid. Completely embarrassed in front of everyone. So, uh, yeah, uh, the, the text on screen of the Roblox Kids presentation turns from saying the One Direction lyrics to saying, like, I have a super important question for you, and then Eve, her name appears on screen, and everyone, dude, I feel bad for this girl, because, like, as soon as her name appeared on screen in this dumpster fire of a presentation, literally everyone, including the teacher, turned their heads to look directly at her, which is a, such a tough situation, because, like, bro was just existing, bro was just chilling, trying to, like, live life or whatever, and then all of a sudden, she just gets completely destroyed, gets a left hook to the face, like, you just simply hate to see it, right? And all of a sudden, like, it, the text on screen turns to, like, Eve, will you go out with me? And it says this for, like, five seconds. And Bryce, it, like, even though it was only on screen for, like, five seconds, Bryce says that this is probably the longest five seconds of his life. He's never seen a five-second duration go by any slower. And all of a sudden, right, the Roblox character on screen starts doing, like, a break dance. Like, it is the worst thing I've ever seen. I will say that there are worse ways to to ask out girls and if this video gets 1000 likes i i, I clear a thousand likes all the time but if this gets 1000 likes in the first 24 hours i will tell you the worst story of how to ask out a girl and it's from me it is a personal story so you better smash like right now and i will do it i'm a man of my word it is embarrassing it is terrible it is awful but it is funny and if it gets more engagement on the video then i'll sell my soul for anything anyways so yeah, the Roblox character is like breakdancing in the background. And <laughs> remember, this is during a history class presentation on the frickin' Civil War. And all of a sudden, there's this a Roblox character breakdancing while the Roblox kid, literally, I don't know if dude thinks he was asking to marry her, because the Roblox kid gets on one knee, and everyone's like, what is this kid doing? Roblox kid gets on one knee, and like... <laughs> I don't know why he was on one knee, but he was. I think he saw, like, a movie where someone proposed, and he's like, oh, this is how it works. He's like, Eve, will you be my girlfriend? And while this is happening, like, a really, like, poorly audio, like, poorly edited in audio, so it's really grainy audio of, like, what makes you beautiful by One Direction is looping in the background while there's a video of this Roblox character breakdancing on screen. Like, it is the biggest dumpster fire anyone has ever seen. Everyone at this point is completely shocked. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment Roblox down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. I'll try and heart a bunch of the comments. I can't always because, look, full-time college student as well. Also trying to have a life. However, it's not that hard for me to go through and heart a bunch of them. So if you comment Roblox, I'll do my best to do that. And also, if you want to support the channel, the best thing you can do is after you're done watching this video go ahead and binge watch a bunch of videos. And please let me know in the comment section how many videos you watched today or this week. Because when you watch my old videos, it helps the channel get promoted more, which helps our community grow. And it's awesome. It's great. I just want to say thank you. So let me know in the comment section if you are doing that so I can say thank you personally. Yeah, so just a little recap of what is happening. And by the way, prepare yourself for the cringe because it's pretty bad at this point. But anyways, the Roblox kid has gone up to give a presentation on Abraham Lincoln. The first two slides were crappily edited in Roblox characters, where the first one just has a top hat, and the second one just has his head falling off, right? So not super great. Um, and then it converts to like, let's talk about something more important. And then it's a video of his Roblox character running around, screaming out the lyrics to One Direction's like, what makes you beautiful. And then it turns to the Roblox character breakdancing while the Roblox kid goes on one knee and asks this girl out in front of everyone. So yeah, at this point, like Bryce is sitting into, uh, Bryce is just like so shocked and confused because dude, this all happened within the span of like two minutes. And the Roblox kid is like, yeah, so at this point, you know, I, I don't know, Bryce just wasn't expecting anything like this to happen. Like, he's just like, this all happens so quickly, just for context. Like, one second in, this happens. The next second in, like, or like one second in, they're all doing, like, Civil War presentations. The next second in, this Roblox kid is trying to ask out this girl with a Roblox dancing icon, and he's down on one knee. And it's just, like, a huge mess. It's just like, dude, what is even going on at this point? 
And uh, yeah, it is the most awkward. Oh my God, it's Connor Pugs. I've never seen your face in real life. You're so sexy. Dude, how do these fans keep getting in? <laughs> security, security. Anyways, guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, anyways. So at this point, the teacher is starting to realize what is going on. Like the teacher like is kind of snaps to it. And remember, the Roblox kid is literally sitting, standing, or not standing, is literally on one knee and is just like, Will you go out on a date with me? And, uh, poor Eve, bro. Like, everyone's just looking at her. And the teacher goes up to him. And is just like, what is, like, what is wrong with you? Like, the teacher full-on says, what is wrong with you? Which, like, the, teacher, <laughs> the teacher's not wrong, dude. Like, what is wrong with this kid, bro? Like, can't be going up to people in class and just, like, asking them out when you're supposed to be doing the life of Abraham Lincoln. Like, it's a little bit different. And the Roblox kid is like, you're a hater of my love. You're a hater like John Wilkes Booth or whichever one shot Lincoln. You're a hater just like him. I'm like Lincoln. You're like John Wilkes Booth. And you're shooting me in the head metaphorically. And the teacher's like, why didn't you say that in your thing? It's like, (laughs) because the teacher started to like freak out because the Roblox kid actually knew the history. He actually knew who shot Abraham Lincoln. He knew the context. But bro decided not to put it in his presentation because he was too busy doing like... Dude, he was too busy doing Roblox dances to ask out this girl. So at this point, the Roblox kid is like, you can't stop me. You can't stop me and my love. And at this point, Eve just has her head down on the desk like, oh my God, dude. Oh my God. And everyone feels so bad for her. But they're also just so curious, like, what is going on with the Roblox, the mind, uh, Roblox kid, right? So at this point, the Roblox kid, like, the teacher starts walking towards the Roblox kid because the, the teacher is going to escort him to the front office. But the Roblox kid says, no, no, I must have an answer. You can't take me away. So the Roblox kid starts to run around the classroom. So the desks are kind of in a, uh, just imagine a normal classroom. So the Roblox kid starts weaving in and out between the desks. He's just, shoo, 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 just kind of like dodging in between the desks sliding under chairs, knocking stuff over. And while he's doing this, right? Because, like, the teacher's starting to close in on him, but the teacher's not going to, like... The teacher's not going to slide tackle him, dude. He knows better. But while he's doing this, he's shouting, like, Eve, Eve, do you hear me? Eve, Eve, will you be my Roblox girlfriend? Eve, Eve, will you be my Roblox girlfriend? At this point, Bryce is like, oh, my God. What is going on right now, dude? What is going on? And the Minecraft... uh, Sorry, the Roblox kid is just kind of like jumping around, jumping, jumping. And at this point, right, you know, I think Eve is starting to realize that if she doesn't say, like, this is a terrible position and I feel really bad for her because, like, dude, right, you definitely don't want to. Ball, uh, yeah, thing. Oh, are you recording right now? Yeah, uh, my balls are, my balls are actually, yeah, I got my set of balls in on Amazon. Wait, they can't hear this. No! We've had a lot of lore in today's video, like a lot of, uh, anyways, though. So at this point, the teacher is just like, he's running after the Roblox kid. The Roblox kid is running back and forth. And I think Evie at this point kind of just knows that she needs to say, like, she needs to say something. So she kind of, like, stands up, which is tough for her, because, like, this is obviously super embarrassing. She stands up and says, I'm sorry, like... I don't think we should, like, go on a date or something. Or, like, I have to decline. However she said it, she said it very politely. She said it very nicely. And, uh, you know, the Roblox kid stops running. And that's when the teacher catches up to him and kind of grabs him. And the Roblox kid literally slumps on the floor. Almost like he was shot with, like, a tranquilizer dart, dude. Like, he just slumps on the frickin' floor. Like, he's just down. Down for the count. And, uh, you know, everyone is kind of looking around because it's like, uh... What, what, what do we do about this? And the teacher is like, come on, get up, get up. And the Roblox kid's like, no. When my heart is broken, my legs are broken too. Like, kid is being super melodramatic. Apparently, like, he's never even talked to this girl, the one that he asked down in front of the whole class. He's never spoken to her once. He just saw her once and like, oh, this girl's pretty. Let me ask her out during my Abraham Lincoln presentation because that makes a lot of sense, right? And the kid's literally slumped on the floor. He's like, no, my broken heart has paralyzed my entire body. And the teacher's like, dude, get up. He's like, no, I will get up when she says yes. And at this point, the teacher's like, ah, hell no. Because, like, the teacher, look, it was already in a terrible, she's already in a terrible situation. You got some weirdo in front of everyone being like, go on a date with me now or else. And then all of a sudden, this kid decides that he is also going to pull a, if she doesn't go on a date with me, 
I'm just going to be collapsed on the floor forever. <laughs> Feel bad for me, guys. Like, no, that's definitely like he's cut. He's drawing the line there. We're, we're not letting this one slide. Uh, yeah, basically, right? So the teacher pulls him up because the teacher, you know, he can't be too physical with this kid because he can get in trouble and lawsuits and whatever. But he grabs the kid by the scruff of his collar and like yanks him up and is like, You've had a, you've like, you've been distracting enough today. Like you caused enough drama. You've caused enough trouble. You're going to the front office with me. So he drags him out to the front office. And afterwards, the classroom is just dead silent until one guy who's sitting next to Eve kind of speaks up and says, I'm so sorry. And literally after that kid says, I'm so sorry, the whole class, the whole classroom dude, including Bryce chimes in to say, yeah, I'm like, that's so sorry. Like, that's so tough. I'm so sorry about that. If you need anything, like everyone was being so nice to her because they realized this, like, dude, like this is day of a presentation. This is already kind of a stressful day, but everyone kind of knew that like, yeah, no, I mean, no one wanted this, and she definitely did not ask for this, and, like, if the, if this happened to any of them, they would have known that they would have just, like, they would have had the worst day ever. So, yeah, everyone was super nice to Eve after that point. Uh, the Roblox kid did get in trouble. He obviously, f- he, he would have failed his presentation, um, but the, the teacher said, I'm gonna give you another chance to redo the presentation, and he did, and the presentation actually wasn't that bad, but the kid didn't get a great grade because the teacher's like, I'm not gonna give you a great grade even if the presentation's really good, but just feel lucky I'm giving you a chance to try at least again. So yeah, moral of the story is don't ask out uh, your crush via your Abraham Lincoln presentation and with a Roblox video dancing to One Direction, going on one knee and run. Dude, I think the moral of the story. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. In today's subscriber story, this Roblox kid who is being a jerk to a lot of people gets absolutely destroyed when he tries to be a jerk to this girl. And it was hilarious. So there's this kid, right? And he's known as the Roblox kid. And he's not known as the Roblox kid because he, you know, is just a big fan of Roblox, just plays the game a lot, enjoys the game. You're totally free to play the game and enjoy the game and not be called a Roblox kid. For example, I'm not going to call you a Minecraft kid just because you play Minecraft, man. That's just not how it works, right? Roblox kid has a certain connotation to it that, like, you're doing a lot of stuff along with like in Roblox. For the duration of this story, I'm just gonna call this guy Roblox Kid, right? So Roblox Kid had had a history of terrorizing people in my subscribers class. If you don't know, a subscriber sent in the story, you can always do that, link in description, all that information's down there. Anyways, right, so this guy, known as like the Roblox Kid, had been terrorizing my subscribers class ever since he transferred to his school about a month ago. This story took place in like the very beginning of the year and this new kid transferred in and no one really knew what, you know, he was going to be like. And the thing is, when you have like a kid transferring in and like he doesn't know a lot of people, of course you want to be nice to them. If anything, I encourage you to be nice to them. So everyone in my subscribers class, including my subscriber, you know, he was very nice to this new kid and like they didn't know him as the Roblox kid who like was menacing and terrorized people yet. They just knew him as like, you know, you know, just, just a kid, right? Just a new guy who probably doesn't know a lot of people, who probably feel isn't feeling so good, right? And it's only within the first couple days that they start to realize that something is up. The first thing the Roblox kid did wasn't really necessarily a bad thing that made him a menace. It just started off on the wrong foot, right? So all these kids, they wanted to follow this guy on Instagram because, you know, you want to connect with him even if you don't see him a lot out of school. You want to make him know that, like, Everyone in the new school that he just transferred to is like really open to him and is really open to, you know, new people coming in. They want to make him feel welcome. So they all decide to go follow him on Instagram. So they look up his name and obviously his name's not Roblox Kid, even though I will be calling him that. And they find his Instagram account. But what they find on the account is a little bit weird. I'm just going to be honest. So you know those kind of like Roblox, like Roblox Kid cringe videos that like Poncho and Pegasus and Tagswag and those people would do? You know those types of posts, like those in, like those like TikTok posts that like they they reacted to. Uh, those were the type of posts that this kid posted unironically, and uh, ever since then he kind of gained the reputation as the you know the the the, the Roblox kid because he would post stuff that was just like oh boy, like he posted one of those videos where it was like I'm talking in my real voice, and he's obviously not talking in his real voice. He's talking in some kind of like fake deep voice to make him sound all cool and like oh my god the ladies are gonna love me now man because i'm talking in this weird voice so like here's the thing 
while that was all pretty cringe to them, they're like, oh my god, right? It doesn't mean that he was a bad guy. It was what he did next that definitely solidified himself as being known as a bad guy. So right after, you know, some people follow him on Instagram, they see like some kind of weird posts or whatever, they aren't necessarily like going to not try and make him feel welcome. They still decide like, okay, this might be a little weird, but we don't really care. Like, sure, man can like enjoy posting weird stuff, but we're still going to be nice to him, right? So it's a couple days in the class, and, you know, over the first couple days, Roblox Kid was kind of just kept to himself, right? He was just kind of, like, shy. He wasn't really saying anything, but he definitely grew comfortable really quickly, which normally is a good thing, but in this case was not a good thing. Yeah, so basically, right, within a week of Roblox Kid being in class, the teacher would say something, and he would just laugh. And the teacher would look back and say, like, oh, you know, what's so funny? Like, what, what joke did I miss? And the Roblox kid would say, nothing. And people just were like, okay, that's a little strange, right? That's a little weird. And he just kept doing that. But then he started to do it when, like, someone would, like, say an answer. Like, the teacher would be like, does anyone know what whatever is, right? And someone would answer, and the answer would be wrong. And he would let, let out a little laugh, right? And the teacher would be like, what's so funny? He's like, nothing. And he would just keep doing that, right? And he definitely, he especially did it when people were like somehow a little bit vulnerable. Like, you know, you, you said an answer and it was wrong. And he would make sure to just have a sneak a little laugh in there. Quickly, if you enjoy story time videos, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. That's it. Back to the story. The level of snarkiness coming from Roblox Kid only increased every single day he was there. And at one point, Someone came in with like an outfit, I think it was some guy, and he was wearing green on green, which you know, yeah, neon green, like top with a neon green bottom normally isn't the move. Look, I'm not a guy who like knows a lot about fashion, but even I know that like probably, you know, wearing neon green on neon green probably isn't the, you know, the hottest look ever, and all the ladies aren't going to be fawning over you. But when this guy came in, Roblox Kid looks at him, kind of like, like it gives this little laugh, and then is like, uh, and he turns to the guy and he's like, do you need to have your eyes checked, buddy? And then the guy's like, uh, what do you mean? He's like, uh, looks at the outfit. He's like, uh, do you see what you're wearing? The guy's like, uh, I was like, I got out of bed late. I just threw on what I had on. And then people kind of like looked back and they're like, oh, that's that, that was a little aggressive, man. Like that was a little aggressive for literally no reason, dude. Like, yeah, the guy didn't have the greatest outfit of all time. Like, lock him up. Like, okay, it's just class, bro. Like, no one else is. No one else cares. Why do you have to have such an attitude? What did he do to you? And just after that point, the snarkiness and like backsided comments, and just kind of like Roblox kid being like a massive jerk, it just kind of like went up every single day, and it got worse, and it got worse, and it got worse. For example, a couple weeks in, like the after he had that last comment to the kid, and was just being snarky and laughing at people, right? So in the very beginning of class, before class started, kids were kind of, kids kind of like sat down, and like the teacher was kind of getting the stuff together, but Roblox kid was sitting, sitting kind of near this girl, and he kind of like looks over, and says, hey, and she's like, hey, what's up? And he's like, are you wearing makeup right now? And she's like, uh, no, I'm not wearing makeup right now. And he's like, maybe you should. So that comment was like, first of all, I just want to say to the guys out there, never say anything like that to like a girl or really don't say anything like that to anyone in general, like common decency. But like, I don't care if you think you're funny, man, like it's going to really have a negative impact on someone. And in this case, it did. Like, the, when he said that to the girl, like, she already was having, like, her own insecurities. Look, a lot of people, like, around their age, I, I don't know exactly, like, what grade this guy, the subscriber who sent in the story was. I'm probably going to say, like, 6th, 7th, 8th grade. Probably, like, late middle school, early high school. That's when you're most... Honestly, bro, that's when you're like your most insecure over everything. When you think all these things matter and words like this, is, it's really going to go a long way. This girl ends up running out of the classroom, like crying and like some like her friends go running after her. And this is the first time that the teacher actually does have to get involved and like talk to the Roblox kid. He's like, Roblox kid, obviously he says his name, but we're going to say Roblox kid, like go down and see the principal, like the go to the principal's office, like 
Yeah, uh, what I, I heard what you said, it was unacceptable because he was close enough to the front of the classroom now where he sat because he didn't sit in the same seat every day. He decided to terrorize a new person every single day by sitting in a new seat and also disrupting the unassigned assigned seats. If you know what that is, then you know that that's criminal behavior. But anyways, he was close enough to the front of the classroom that the teacher's like, I heard what you said, go to the principals. So when Roblox Kid went to the principal, apparently the principal said, since this is your first offense, like, we're not going to give you a punishment, but basically, no, you're on very, very thin ice. And next time we hear of something like this, you know, you're going to be suspended. And so the Roblox kid's like, okay, like, I'm so sorry. It was just a little mistake. Like, I'm having a bad day. Trying to, like, weasel out of it and also pretending like he has not been doing this for months on end to basically everyone. But anyways, right, from this point on, you might be thinking, okay, did Roblox kid actually improve? Did he become a better person? No. He was just more careful when he was being a jerk to people, right? He didn't do it in front of the teacher. And he was also a little bit more careful who he did it to. But this didn't mean that he wasn't, like, continuing on his tirades of terrorizing people, you know, as being a jerk, right? He started sitting more in the back of the class, and he started making his comments then. He also started making comments in the hallway with people. For example, someone would walk out of, like, a class, like, his class with him, and they would have gotten, like, a, a pretty bad grade on the test. And as they were walking out, the Roblox kid would be like, to all the people around him, like, he'd say really loudly, he's like, I can't believe you got a, you know, a whatever score on that test. Maybe study next time. Roblox Kid probably f failed the test, dude. Like, we're gonna be honest. He was too busy making those hey there baby girl Roblox edits to get, like, three likes on TikTok. But, like, he needed to make sure that it was everyone else's business that the guy next to him failed the test. Right, so you might be thinking, like, Connor, this story is kind of depressing. Like, this guy just is, like, a terrible person to everyone, and he just keeps on getting away with it. And let me just say that, like, if this, if there was no good ending to the story, if there was not, like, a satisfying conclusion, I would not be telling the story, right? Just hold out a little bit longer. Trust me. The ending is good, and karma, baby, karma is sweet. But before we get to the sweet, sweet ending, I'm gonna interrupt this video to tell you that the secret phrase of the day is tree. So if you made it this far into the video, comment tree down below. I wanna see how many people actually made it this far, and I appreciate you if you do. So there was this girl in the subscribers class, uh, let's call her uh, Ashley, right? So Ashley was known as like, you know, a being like very nice, very like kind and respectful at least when you were being kind and respectful to her. But she was also known for like standing up to herself and standing up to herself firmly and like really well. Like if you tried to come and like roast her man, you were gonna come out scorched. That is not a flame fight you wanna enter into. That's all I'm trying to say, bro. Ashley was something else, but she was also very kind and respectful and was a good, very solid friend that like, she was just an overall very good person, as long as you were a good person to her. She really had a whole eye-for-eye eye mentality when it came to stuff. And let me just say that Roblox Kid, since he was still kind of new to the school, he didn't know Ashley's reputation. But he also kind of like got a sense that she was a little, had a little bit tougher skin. So he decided that she would be the next victim of like his like, you know, his heart is basically his his being a jerk, right? His trolling, right? She was going to be the next victim because she probably wouldn't break down crying and get him in trouble and get him suspended. But she would also be like, you know, she would be a perfect target. Little did he know this was a huge mistake. But one day the Roblox kid went up to Ashley when they're leaving class and he just like kind of looked at her and he's like, hey, ugly. And she didn't respond. And she's like, and he's like, oh, I'm talking to you. Oh, it's just like something really stupid and lame, but like just like really just trying to come for her. And she kind of looked at him and she kind of like smirked and said, you're going to regret that, buddy. And he kind of like was like taken aback a little bit because like people had either been like, like, like go away or like they'd start crying or they'd just be like, bro, they never like smirked and said, you're going to regret that. He didn't think much of it after that, at least for a while. But let me just say that, like, that was the beginning of his downfall. He should not have messed with Ashley, bro. So coincidentally, wink, wink, nod, nod, right? The Roblox kid starts talking about his, like, his new girlfriend, right, that he meets on Roblox. And he's talking about how, like, 
oh man, I met someone who's perfect for me. Like you guys suck. You're all single. L L plus ratio plus young boy better. Like saying that in real life, like something you would actually do, right? Like was this every single day was telling everyone he possibly could about the girlfriend he met on Roblox and how he's so much better now than them because he had a, he's in a relationship and they're not. So one day, right, he comes into class and just like, he's just going off on someone. He's calling someone ugly. He's calling someone stupid, right? And then he's also bragging about not being single. And then Ashley comes up to him, right? Out of nowhere, after about three weeks since their last encounter. So Roblox Kid has not thought for a second about what, you know, about Ashley. And he's like, oh, oh, what's up, ugly? Because uh -huh, he remembered his joke. And she said, what's up? And then said something very specific. And his face just went super cold. And the subscriber doesn't remember exactly what she said, but apparently, right, what he had said, what she had said was word for word what his Roblox girlfriend said to him like the night before. And he's like, oh, ooh, what? And then before he could say anything, Ashley kind of turned to people, like turned to the class before the teacher was there because they got there a little bit earlier before the teacher some days, and this was one of those days. And she turns to everyone and she's like, you know this girlfriend that he been, he's been talking about for the last like week? Well, that was me. Get trolled. Get roasted. And the Roblox kid is like, that's not true. And she said, all right, open up Roblox. He boots it up. He's like, oh, 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 right? And then he boots it up. She opens up her like laptop or I don't know if you can have an app for Roblox. She, let's just say she opens up her laptop. I think that's what she did, right? This, this is what I'm told. And basically, she just sends him a message. And he receives it. He's like, <sighs> packs up his stuff. Just, just walks out of the class. Walks out of the class. And he's not back for the entire day. And apparently the next day he came back and he was just silent. And for the rest of that week, he was silent. And for the rest of that year, he wasn't silent. Like he spoke in class and tried to speak to people a little bit, tried to make friends. But basically he was done being a jerk to people because he got absolutely decimated. If you enjoyed today's story video, consider watching another one. Watching old story videos after watching this video really helps the channel. And if you want an easy place to find all the story videos I've made, top link in the description is a link to my story time playlist, which will have all the stories. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Today we have a story about an arrogant kid who got absolutely humbled incredibly quickly by his crush. Enjoy. Subscribers said in this story, uh, we're gonna call him Mason, right? So Mason was in class, and there's this kid in his class, we're just gonna call him Roblox Kid. And by the way, disclaimer, right? I, I know there's already people typing in the comment section right now, Connor, I play Roblox, does that mean I'm a Roblox Kid? Uh, I hate you, I'm gonna unsubscribe. Once again, similar to when I call people Minecraft kids, look, I love Minecraft, and if you love Minecraft, cool, me too. You're not a Minecraft kid. If you like Roblox, you're not a Roblox kid. If you want to know who a Roblox kid is, look up the videos that, like Poncho or Pegasus made. Those are Roblox kids, and this kid was a Roblox kid. Anyways, right, he wasn't just a Roblox kid. He was super arrogant, he was super full of himself, and he just loved telling the entire class about how many women he got, how he was just the king of women. And here's the thing, guys. Sit down, sit down on my lap. Uh, actually, don't. That could be weird. Sit down on my metaphorical lap uh, or chair next to me. That's a lot less weird. Sit next to the metaphorical chair next to me, right? And learn a little lesson, right? If someone keeps bragging about their game, if someone can't stop talking about how many women they get, uh, but you've never seen them actually, you know, uh, even talk to someone, even talk to like another guy, not even a woman, like it has never even spoken to another human being before, right? If there's literally not a single moment of evidence besides what they say, uh, I'm going to give you a little spoiler. I'm going to cut to the chase for all of you guys. Yeah, they probably are just full of it, like 100% full of it. Anyways, right, so Mason is in class, right, one day, and he happens to sit down in the Roblox kid. He sits down next to Mason, and Mason is, like, friendly enough with the Roblox kid. Mason's a good kid. He's not going to be a jerk for no reason. So anyways, right, Mason's like, yo, what's up? Like, whatever, and the Roblox kid's like, hey... Just done bagging some tens, bagging some hotties. Complete cringe. Don't don't say that, okay? Don't unironically say that. Even ironically saying it is like kind of skirting the line of like complete cringe. I don't know. He's like, yeah, I just I was just like, oh, typical day, man. Just got another ten. Like they can't stop hitting me up. By the way, these kids were in like seventh grade or whatever when this happened, which is pretty funny. Um, 
I'm not saying, I, I know I got a lot of people that are probably in seventh grade watching. I, I'm not like coming for you. I was in seventh grade, actually a wonderful period of my life. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't care if you're in seventh grade. I don't care if you're in 12th grade. I don't care if you're in college. I don't care if you're the CEO of JP Morgan Chase. I don't care if you're like a grandfather. Please do not say, I've been bagging hotties. I've been getting tens. Uh, just, just don't say that for me. If you're not going to say it for you, don't say it for me, dude. Anyways, right, so the Roblox kid is like completely mouthing off to Mason about how he's so many women are just flooding his DMs, man. He just can't hold them back. Like, the, 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 the female, the female species is just, they're just lustful to him. They're just always on top of him. They can't let him go. At this point, Mason's like, hey, bro, like, for real? Like, that, that definitely isn't real. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's like, nah. The Roblox kid looks Mason square in the eyes, and he, like, leans in a little bit, and he looks around the classroom, and he's like, Mason, look around you. Mason looks around him, sees like all of his classmates, and he's like, hey, Mason, these lustful, lustful women, Mason, they won't leave me alone. They want me. They want me, Mason. At this point, Mason's like, hey, yo, bro, like, stop, stop. Plus, there was also this girl, uh, we're just gonna call him Roblox Kids Crush. I don't really feel like giving her a name. Uh, I, I, I just want to juggle too many names. I mix them up, and uh, you guys always remind me in the comment section. Uh, so uh, I just don't feel like it. We got one name. We got Mason. We got Roblox Kid. We got Roblox Kids Crush. So we're just gonna call her the Crush. Anyways, right? So the Roblox Kid starts, you know, starts talking about this girl specifically, the Crush. And you know, uh, you know, Mason is actually like he's not friends with the Roblox kid necessarily. I would say he's acquaintances. He's not buddies. He's like he he's working friends. Like he's work friends or school friends because they're not at work, right? But sometimes school friends implies that you're closer than you actually are. I feel like work friends adequately implies that like you just get along with each other because you're in the same place doing the same thing you don't really want to be doing. But anyways, right, he's kind of known about the Roblox kid's crush for a while, and, you know, he doesn't know her that well, but he definitely knows that, like, uh, you know, no offense to Roblox kid, but she is definitely out of his league. Uh, unfortunately, right, a Roblox kid starts to go on this tangent to, 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 to Mason, poor Mason, right? Roblox kid starts talking about how his crush, right, how we could totally pull her, dude. Like, uh, no questions, no questions asked, no problems, no issues at all, actually. 100% guaranteed, 1,000%, 100% guaranteed win for a Roblox kid. Like, I'm not even kidding, dude. 100% win. And he keeps going off about how he can totally get his crush and how his crush, he actually starts, like, changing it. He doesn't just talk about how he, you know... You know, his crushy will totally love him, right? Will totally fall for him if he, like, says anything or even starts talking to her. Because, right, at this point, Roblox Kid had not even spoken to this woman, right? But he starts, he changes the conversation a little bit. You know what he starts doing, guys? You know what he starts saying? He starts talking about how she is actually secretly in love with him. Yeah, no, I'm not even, I wish I was joking, I wish I was kidding, I wish this wasn't real life, I wish the Illuminati had reprogrammed my mind to just interpret reality backwards, but no, no, this is real life. Uh, he actually started going off about how uh, the, his crush, someone who's completely out of his league, who he's never spoken to, etc., right, uh, is actually in love with him. At this point, right, Mason, Mason isn't, a, Mason isn't about to correct this kid, right? Mason's not about to correct this kid because... You know, he needs to be humbled, man. And uh, Mason kind of believes at this point that reality will catch up with him and will humble him. Mason doesn't need to have any blood on his hands. He doesn't need to do any of the dirty work. He doesn't need Roblox Kid plotting against him because he hurt his feelings. Reality will take all of that. We'll take care of all of that for him. Anyways, right, so uh, the Roblox Kid starts to explain, starts to explain to Mason about his master plan, about not the Technoblade master plan, not one that's actually going to work, right? But the master plan, the master plan to uh, get this girl to fall in love with him, which, like, why does he need a master plan when she's already in love with him? Uh, don't ask me, dude. Anyways, right, so what you need to know is in this class, they had a very, like, a, not a very large, but they had a, a project due the next day. 
In that project, they had to present in front of the entire class. And so basically, right, the Roblox kid, he explains to Mason, the subscriber who sent in the story, you can send in stories too to my Instagram in the description. He explained to Mason that he was going to basically ask his crush out via his class presentation. And Mason was like, dude, you know you're going to fail the presentation if you do that. He's like, yeah, totally worth it though. Like, I already have 100% in this class. Also a lie, but whatever. So the Roblox kid explains to Mason the details of what he plans to do. And I'm not going to explain to you the details because I just want to tell you what actually happens without spoiling it. But let me just say that, you know, Mason was sitting there and was like, no shot this kid actually does this. Like, that's insane. But he also thinks to himself, if this kid actually, the Roblox kid, if he actually does this, right? If he actually does this, this is, this is the instant humble. This is the instant karma. This is the thing that will bring him back to earth. This is what he needs, man. Just a little public humiliation is good for the soul. So Mason does something that maybe you guys might not be the biggest fan of. Maybe Mason wasn't the greatest guy on planet earth for doing this, but I honestly don't blame him and it does make it for a better story. Mason tells the Roblox kid, hey man, that's a great idea. That's a great, do it, dude. Like, I'm 100% behind you. Yeah, you could argue that, you know, maybe kind of like set him up for failure, but look, I think this kid was gonna do it either way. I don't blame Mason. And it makes it a better story, so even better content. You love to see it. Anyways, right, so the next day rolls around and it's the project. And Mason is like one of the first people to present. He goes up and he gives his presentation. And he feels like he does a pretty good job. So anyways, he goes back to his seat. And since he's sitting next to the Roblox kid, he's like, hey, dude, are you, are, are you actually like going through with it? And the Roblox kid's like, yeah, of course. <laughs> and Mason's like, all right, dude, good luck. <laughs> kind of a little, little mean, but whatever, right? It's, it's funny. It's funnier. It's better if it's funny. And also Roblox kid, Loki needed to be humbled a little bit. So probably for the better anyways. Anyways, so like, you know, Mason's sitting there listening to his class, you know, go up there, give some presentations, whatever. And yeah, eventually the teacher calls up the Roblox kid and all of a sudden it's the moment of truth. So the Roblox kid goes up there, connects his computer to like the projector and uh, what the, uh, what Mason sees on screen, oh boy. Oh boy, that's all I can say. Today's phrase is Roblox. So if you made it this far into the video, I'd like you guys to comment Roblox in the comment section down below. I'm gonna try and heart as many comments as I can that say Roblox in them, or just say Roblox. That's actually easier if you just say Roblox so I don't have to read it. Make sure you guys aren't saying something evil or whatever, I don't really know. Uh, just know uh, I'll probably be unpacking or moving into a new dorm slash flying on a plane tomorrow. So I won't be able to get, and that's when this video is going up. So I won't be able to heart a ton of comments. I'm gonna do my best but don't take it personally if I don't get to yours. Also today, today's your lucky day. Today's your lucky day, man. I, I don't know how to break it to you, but today is your lucky day. Cause for every single person who leaves a like on today's video, they will actually receive their very own nothing in the mail. Two to three, two to three days shipping by the way. So once you leave a like on this video, you will receive your nothing in two to three days. Amazon shipping it. So if you have any complaints, bring it up to them, not me. Leave a like, 5,000 likes, and I'll cry myself to sleep. With that being said, back to the story. Anyways, right, so Roblox Kid, he goes up to there, connects his computer, opens up his presentation, and you know what? For the sake of the story, I actually do need to give his crush a name. Let's call her Abby. Let's hope I remember that name. I do not have it written down right now. So he opens up his screen, and the first slide, it says, Hello, class. And he stands up. He's like, Hello, class. I have a very important announcement. And then he turns around, and he goes to his computer, and he clicks the next button. And on screen, it's a photo of Abby. The whole class is like, hey, yo, what the fuck? Vlogs kid goes up there and he's like, looks at the photo of Abby. He's like, Abby, this is for you. And everyone's like, hey, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> he's like, Abby, you're so beautiful. I think you're the prettiest girl in the entire world. And everyone's like, what the fuck? Will you? You. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm sick. I can't do this. Yeah, yeah, Abby. You're so beautiful. And I'm so handsome. We're perfect together. And he goes to another slide, and it's like a photo of him. And it's like, under it, it says like 10 out of 10. At this point, Mason's like, dude, okay, um, I, 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 know, I, I know I said yes. I know I greenlit this, but I somehow feel responsible for this tragedy. Not, not for Roblox Kid, right? Mason didn't feel bad for Roblox Kid. He felt bad for everyone else in the room at that point. Which, like, honestly, honestly, everyone else has a right to blame Mason partly for this. Eventually, Roblox Kid, 
he clicks to the final slide. And he, he, all it says on the slide is, it's like, will you be my dot, dot, dot? And then he's like, Abby, will you be my? And then he clicks onto like another, okay, it wasn't final slide. Sorry, I lied. He clicks on the final slide and it says like girlfriend, but it's in this like really weird, like fire font, like something that'd be like, ha ha, so lit guys. Like something you'd say in like, I don't know, fourth grade or something with like one of one like the, the emojis with like the sunglasses and something. It's like, it says girlfriend. He's like, girlfriend. And he's like, so Abby, uh, you want to go out with me? And look, Abby, here's the thing. Very nice girl. Uh, but she's, she also like, will definitely speak her mind. She doesn't have a lot of filter. She doesn't have much of a filter. That, that's okay, you know? Especially if something like this just happened to you. I think you kind of have the right to say literally whatever you want. So small but very important detail I forgot to say earlier. Um, Roblox kid kind of stank. Like, I don't know how else to say it, but he was a uh, unhygienic young man. His cleanliness was definitely a 0 out of 10, even though his confidence was an 11 out of 10. And uh, Abby kind of just ripped into him. Abby stands up in front of the whole class and goes, I will never ever go on a date with your stinky, unwashed little self. And Roblox Kid was like, Abby, no, I'm just kidding. At this point, right, Mason is just like, yeah, I'm partially responsible for this man. <laughs> like, this is partially on me. This is partially on me, dude. I feel kind of responsible. But no, the whole class is sitting there just like, mouths wide open, like, oh my god, what? Huh? At this point, right, Roblox Kid is stunned. He's just, he's a deer in the headlights right now. And, and then he turns to Abby, and he shuts his computer, and he's like, Emmy, you're actually very mid. You're ugly. Uh, L, L, L ratio. And then he just like runs out of the class. Yep. Yeah, and uh, kid failed um, the, the assignment, and uh, he had to go to the principals because the, you're not allowed to do stuff like that. Like, that's crazy. And uh, yeah, he, he got humbled pretty fast, to say the least. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now go click on another video. Like, there's some videos on screen. Click them. Why have you not clicked? From a kid who tries to use Robux in real life to a kid telling the teacher that Roblox was a country, these are the craziest Roblox kids ever. So in this first story, right, there is a Roblox kid who tells all of a sudden, right, tells all of his friends that he is taking them out to the mall for a treat. This adventure to the mall will be on him, and it's going to be a big surprise, and it's going to be really cool for all of them. So obviously the subscriber and all of his friends are pretty excited for this because, I don't know, I mean, the, the kid says, like, there's a big surprise at the mall for all of them. I mean, if I was a kid his age, I'd be pretty excited myself. But anyways, right, so sure enough, the subscriber and all of his friends are excited to see why the Roblox kid has invited them to the mall. And they all tell their parents that the Roblox kid has invited them to the mall, so their parents drive them to the mall and drop them off. They're about like 12 to 13, so they're at the age where their parents are kind of okay with them being away by themselves for a little bit, but definitely not for too long of a time. So anyways, right, uh, sure enough, the Roblox kid comes up to the subscriber and all of his friends and is like, hey guys, like... I want to let you guys know that I have been, I've been doing a lot of business, a lot of mogul moves. I'm quite a businessman myself, and I wanted to let you guys know that uh, you see that toy store over there, and they point to like, I don't know, like a, a Toys R Us before they went bankrupt or something like that, some kind of toy store, right? And all the kids are like, yeah. And the, and the, the Roblox kid is like, you guys can pick any toy in there, and I will pay for it. So first of all, right, the subscriber and all of his friends are immediately super excited. They're immediately super happy because, I mean, they're now able to get whatever toy that they want. This is a pretty good deal. This is pretty cool. But then immediately the subscriber afterwards kind of thinks to himself, this is really cool, but is this like too good to be true cool? Like this is great and all, but this just feels a little bit just a little bit too good to be true. But at the end of the day, if someone's offering you a free toy and you're a kid, what are you gonna do? Say no? So yeah, sure enough, the subscriber and all of his friends, they rush, they all rush into the, uh, you know, the toy store. They're going around, the subscriber finds something he likes, and they all make it to the front desk. 
So sure enough, they're all like walking up to the front of the uh, the toy store. They all find the Roblox kid, and the Roblox kid is looking so smug. He's looking so full of himself because you know he's the generous one today. He's the one who is buying all of them a gift because. Out of his generosity, he feels like it, he, it's time for him to give back, guys. It's time for him to give back. When in reality, he is, uh, you'll see. So sure enough, they all get to the register, and they start ringing it up. And the subscriber watches as, like, 15 kids ring up toys. And they're not ringing up, like, a pack of Pokemon cards, which is, like, $5, which is still $5 is a lot for a pack of cards. They're ringing up like legit 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 dollar toys. Like they they find the craziest toys that their parents would never buy them. And if the I, I don't know, man, if the Roblox kid says, "Hey man, I'm going to buy them." Then they're like, "Okay, dude. Then here we go." So sure enough, they all go to the front and they ring up all these toys. The total is like legitimately $1,500. I don't think there's ever been a case at this store that a single person has rung up this much money, this many items. So sure enough, like the guy behind the cash register is kind of looking at them very suspiciously. Because I don't know about you, but I would definitely be suspicious if a bunch of like 12 year olds came up to the front of a toy shop and rung up $1,500 hundred dollars worth of items like i don't know about you but i would be at least a little bit suspicious so yeah sure enough right you know you know the the, the cash register the cash the kid the cash register the cashier is like okay um that's gonna be fifteen hundred dollars and he says it with kind of a confused look because it is fifteen hundred dollars and he looks at the kids and he's like okay so are your parents here to pay for it and all the kids, including the subscriber, they all turn over and they look at the kid, uh, the Roblox kid, who promised that, you know, he would be paying for all of this. And sure enough, the Roblox kid is like, no, 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 that will be no problem. I will be paying for this. And the cashier kind of looks at the Roblox kid, looking at him like, um, bro, are you really going to be paying like 1500 Are you sure? Are you positive that you will be paying $1,500 for these toys? Like, are you 100% certain that you will be paying $1,500? And the kid looks at him. He's like, yep, this will be me. And he goes in and he pulls out a iPad. And on the iPad, he brought his like backpack to the store. On his iPad, he has Roblox. And he opens up Roblox, and everyone is so confused right now because they're like, okay, this kid literally just told us that we can have whatever item we wanted, and when he goes to pay, instead of paying, he pulls out his Roblox game. Like, bro, this might not, this might not be the time to be playing video games. This might be the time to, I don't know, pay for the thing you said you'd pay for. But sure enough, right, the Roblox kid... What he ends up doing is he pulls up his Roblox account and it says that he has 2,000 Robux. And he goes and shows the cashier and he's like, hey man, so I have 2,000 Robux. Well, th this should be more than enough to cover it. And everyone is looking, all the kids are looking at the, the Roblox kid and they're just assuming, oh, this is a joke, right? Like he doesn't actually expect the cashier to accept Robux as a legal tendency, ten, legal tendency, as legal tender. The, the, he doesn't actually expect the cashier to accept his Robux to pay for the $1,600 worth of toys, right? And that's when it all made sense to the subscriber. This kid didn't have $1,500. He had 1,500 Robux. And I think the kid must have assumed that there was a one-to-one -one conversion between this fake virtual currency that you can buy stuff on Roblox on and uh, in actual, like, in, like, the actual, like, U.S. dollar. So sure enough, the cashier looks at this kid and kind of just gives him a long look of, like, I know you don't know any better, but still, seriously? Like, seriously? So the cashier has to inform this kid that, no, he cannot pay with Robux. Sorry to break it to you. Robux is not legal tender, and he cannot pay with it. So the, you know, the kid starts to realize that he cannot pay with his Robux. So he has to turn around and tell everyone that, uh, hey guys, sorry to break it to you, but you got to turn around and put all the stuff you just got back. Yeah, all that stuff you just got out, you got to turn around and put it back. 
I'm sorry to say, it's almost like that episode of Scott's Tots from The Office. It's that one episode you watch once and you can never watch again. Yeah, so sure enough, uh, he had to tell every kid to walk back and put back the toys. And yeah, for the rest of the 20 minutes before the parents came and picked them up, it was mad silent because everyone was pretty mad at the kid. I think the subscriber wasn't that mad because he realized it was a genuine mistake, but everyone else was pretty mad at this kid, and it was pretty funny. But if you thought that this Roblox kid was crazy, you weren't ready for the next one. So this all started one day in class. So basically, for some reason, there was a discussion going on. And the discussion entailed, uh, I don't even know how this conversation came up. The subscriber doesn't remember how this conversation came up. But basically, the question of, is Roblox real or not? And basically, there is a kid in the class who we're going to call the Roblox kid who is basically arguing with the teacher that Roblox was a country. So yeah, they were talking about countries, and they were going over countries in Europe. And the Roblox kid was convinced that Roblox, the game he played, was based on a real country in Europe. So anyways, they were going on the map, and the teacher's like, hey guys, can it, does anyone want to come up to the board and like write down three countries that you know exist in Europe? So someone would come up and they would write, I don't know, France, Italy, Slovenia. I, I, I don't know, something like that. And that's when the Roblox kid went up and was like, uh, I don't know, Italy, Germany, Roblox. So everyone looked at the Roblox kid and kind of gave him a double take of like, are you sure you meant to write that, bro? Like, are you positive? When the kid wrote down that Roblox was one of his answers. Because uh, I don't know if you guys know this. But uh, Roblox is not a country. It is, in fact, a name of a video game. But sure enough, the kid was very confident with his answer and kind of like walked back down like nothing happened. Half the class looked at the board confused. The other half kind of burst out a little bit into laughter. And the teacher must have had a son who played Roblox. He's like, hey, don't write down like funny jokes on the board. This is serious. Like write down three countries, like erase this and write down a third country if you can. And the Roblox kid legitimately looks at the teacher with this look of confusion, saying, I wrote down three countries. And the class laughs again, or at least the class, the part of the class that laughed before. And the teacher's like, that's not funny. Like, Roblox is a video game. It's not a country. Come on now. I have a son who plays it. Don't think you'd be able to pull this a fast one beyond me. And the kid legitimately looks at this guy and is like, I don't know what to say. I like I, Roblox is a country. Like I know it's a video game, but it's based off a real country in Europe. And this, and the teacher is just looking at this kid, and the subscriber is just trying to realize he's he. The subscriber first thought this kid was like pulling a, a prank on everyone by just how goofy this was. But apparently, this kid legitimately believed that Roblox was a real country in Europe. So sure enough, um, the teacher and the kid have this back and forth that legitimately lasts like five minutes of Roblox is not a country, bro. And then the kid's like, dude, Roblox is a country. And then the teacher's like, Roblox is not a country last time I checked. And once again, the, t the kid's like, no, Roblox is a country and it, that is final and that is a fact. And the teacher's like, no, it kind of goes back and forth like this for a while. And this is when the kid starts to get angry. And he starts yelling at the teacher, no, Roblox is a country. And at this point, the teacher's like, don't raise your voice at me. Look, you know what? How about this? If we go on the globe right now, because the teacher had a globe, like, you know, those like real life spinning globes or whatever. The teacher had a globe. So the teacher's like, you know what? All right, let's have a bet. If I go on here and I find that, you know, Roblox is actually on the globe, or if you can find Roblox is actually on the globe, then guess what? You get, to, you get recess for the rest of class. And the kid's like, okay, and then, like, what do you get? And the, guy, and the teacher's like, okay, if we look on this globe and we find that, uh, you know, Roblox is actually not a thing, not an actual country, then guess what? For the rest of class, you need to write up a paper about how you're sorry for wasting the classes and my time. And the kid is like, yeah, okay, get ready to lose, bud. This kid was so confident for some reason, and he goes up to the front of the class. And he goes up to the, to the globe, and he's looking at the globe, and he goes over to Europe, and he's like, I'm pretty sure it's next to France. And he looks next to France, and sure enough, Roblox, the country, does not exist. So he's like, actually... 
I was just kidding with you guys. Roblox is right next to Germany. He looks next to Germany. He's like, uh, I mean, Roblox is actually a Nordic country. And he goes up to like the Netherlands and I live those places. He's like, uh, actually, Roblox is a island off of, uh, in the UK. It's off of Wales. And he looks over there and sure enough, Roblox is not an island off of Wales. He's like, um, I mean, uh, Roblox is actually in Asia. And he's like, teacher, do you, I, 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 I totally messed up. So the, the Roblox kid looks at his teacher and says, teacher, I totally messed up. And the teacher's looking at him with this kind of smug look of, yeah, okay, bro, I know Roblox is not a real country. And the kid's like, um, so basically Roblox is actually in Asia. I'm sorry. Can I amend my bet? And the teacher's like, sure. Amend your bet to say that Roblox is actually a real country in Asia. Go ahead. So the kid is frantically looking all around Asia, and he doesn't find it. He's like, actually, Roblox is a real country in Africa. My fault. The teacher's like, look there as well. And eventually, the Roblox kid, he doesn't say it's a real country in Australia or a real country in Antarctica, Antarctica or something like that, or North America. Eventually, the Roblox kid realizes that he's been wrong the entire time. And the Roblox kid sees that there's like, you know, 10 minutes left of class. And he's like... Uh, I, I think this globe is outdated. And the teacher's like, nope, look at the date. And sure enough, the globe was bought like two years ago. So the Roblox kid is like starting to like be in a stage of denial. He's like, uh, no, you changed this globe last minute so that it wouldn't have Roblox the country. And uh, so the teacher's like, all right, well, we can use my computer and look up Roblox the country. We can look up global maps that are updated daily and that I don't control. And if Roblox isn't there, then I win. And at this point, I think the Roblox kid realized that Roblox was not actually a real country, but he was just super stubborn. So he said, um, you probably just hacked the internet. And the teacher is looking at him. He's like, really? I hacked the internet? And this kid was just looking at the teacher. And this teacher was just looking at the kid and they were just looking at each other and the kid literally bursts out crying and runs out of the Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. So spoiled kids are extremely annoying. They're super entitled. And today a spoiled kid just starts getting away with so much and just is so annoying that he actually makes the teacher who's been teaching for like 15 years quit their job. Yeah, this is a pretty crazy one, so buckle up, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and enjoy story videos, and let's just jump right on into it. So we're gonna call the subscriber who submitted the today's story, Luke. So anyways, in Luke's class, there was a kid who we're just gonna call the spoiled kid, and they had a pretty major assessment that was coming up. So the teacher decides to put Luke and all the other classmates, including the spoiled kid, into small groups to review. So basically, they've had an entire week to study for this test, it's like one of the major tests that will have a pretty big impact on the grade. So they're put into small groups to kind of just go over material, just kind of like go over stuff that they need to do. And so they're in the small groups and Luke happens to be put into a group with the spoiled kid. And the spoiled kid almost immediately starts, I don't know if it's bragging or just, I, I don't know what this is. I think it's bragging, but I'm not sure. He starts telling everyone in a bragging tone that he has not studied at all. So all the kids, including Luke, look at him a little bit uh, confused and also a little bit concerned because this wasn't some easy class that you could kind of figure out. I think this was like biology or something. It's one of those classes where it is really memorization based and in maybe some, I don't know, other types of classes, you can kind of wing it. However, in memorization like heavy classes, it's a lot harder to wing, wing it because it's less about common sense and more about information recall, which you can't really wing information recall unless you're literally attached to the internet through like Elon Musk's Neuralink or whatever, right? So uh, yeah, the kids in Luke's group with the spoiled kid kind of looked at the spoiled kid with this look of concern, it, like genuinely just concerned about him because they're like, bro, how are you actually going to make it through this exam? Because like Luke and all the other kids in the class had actually been studying for this for a while. Because I think this was actually an AP class. I think this was AP high school biology, which is known for being a very difficult class. I mean, different classes, different schools can teach it at different levels of difficulty, but it is overall a very difficult class. So Luke pipes up and says, bro, like, you should probably start studying, like, for your own good and your own, like, success. You should really consider, like, studying, bro. Like, you really should consider studying. 
And the spoiled kid looks at them and says, no, not have I only not studied, but I don't plan to study at all. And guess what, guys? I'm going to get an A, and I guarantee it. So all of them look at the kid like he's completely delusional, which I mean he is a little bit, but also he knows a thing that they don't know. His daddy's a big shot freaking lawyer, bro. Yeah, so basically the spoiled kid had a father who was a lawyer and was like one of the most successful lawyers in like their state. Like he was always like representing private, he was doing all these things, right? And he also ended up owning his own law firm. Like he was very powerful, very successful. And here's the thing, there are children of successful people and sometimes they turn out to be, you know, really great driven individuals who are humble and grounded and they just happen to have more resources at their disposal. So sometimes they use that just to, you know, to elevate themselves and to be able to do even more. However, other kids sometimes will let the kind of like the resources and power that, you know, their parents and family have go to their heads as if they were the ones who rightfully earned it, right? As if they didn't just luckily spawn into existence into the right family, dude. Yeah, so this sort of entitlement definitely followed around Luke. And unfortunately, Luke's parent, not Luke, sorry, the spoiled kid. And unfortunately, the spoiled kid's parents completely encouraged this type of behavior. They would, you know, whenever the spoiled kid would have a tantrum, they would basically back him up. So because of that, he was super inflated, like inflated ego, inflated confidence, inflated just like everything like that. So the spoiled kid was basically bragging about how the fact that he hasn't studied and he doesn't need to study. The thing is though, Luke and everyone else in the group of the spoiled kid, they don't realize that the spoiled kid is gonna pull the daddy is a lawyer card. They just think that this kid's gonna freaking fail. So they keep trying to tell him, dude, like, this is really hard. Like, we've been studying for even more than a week. Like, we've been preparing for this even before we knew that we had a test. Because they were told about that they were going to have a test in a week, but it was kind of clear what the material was going to be on because or what the test was going to have on it because it was it followed this very sequential, uh, a very sequential order of everything, right? So a lot of them, including Luke, had actually just been reviewing after every single class because not only this, they wanted to do on the AP test too. And so it makes a lot of sense to review as you go along, not even just for tests. It'll make studying for the AP a lot easier. Have you guys ever taken an AP class in high school? If you have, let me know down below. I took a few, but uh, anyways, right? So Luke is looking at this kid in this kind of like feeling of like, oh geez, bro, bro's actually gloating about failing. Yeah, so little did he know that the spoiled kid had a trick up his sleeve. So anyways, after the spoiled kid brags about not studying and not planning on studying, but thinking that he was going to do super well, everyone in the group just assumed that, okay, we tried to warn this kid that this is a hard exam. He's not heeding our warning. So like at the end of the day, what can we actually do? Like, what can we actually do about it? The answer is probably nothing. So they decide that they're going to go ahead and continue on doing what they're supposed to be doing in the first place, which is studying for the big exam. So yeah, sure enough, they, they study for the rest of the period and the spoiled kid just completely goes on his phone, not even paying attention. So in other stories, like uh, the schools have been stricter about going on your phone. However, this school, it's kind of less enforced. It like, there is a rule against blatantly going on your phone in class, or at least teachers are given the ability to enforce the rule really strictly. However, this teacher really did kind of abide by the, if you wanna learn, you'll learn. If you wanna like goof off or whatever, you can goof off. Especially since this is an AP test, it's like the teacher probably is thinking, if you don't want to study for the AP test that you're paying for and need for college, I mean, go for it. Like if you want to do all the studying on your own or like not pay attention to my class, like I'm not going to like force you to. So the spoiled kid was literally just on his phone the entire time while everyone else was preparing for the exam. So finally, the next day, Friday comes in and it is the first exam. It's really difficult, or at least that's what Tom says. And even the people who put in a lot of effort, including himself, and studied, it would, they did pretty tough. Like, it was really hard. And by, like, the, the average was like a B minus, which a B minus is not a bad grade, but it's definitely, like, on, I'd say average grades for a lot of things are, like, Bs, high Bs, not really As, not really Cs, unless you're in like a college physics class or something. Hey guys, the average is a 24%. Congratulations, you all did amazing. It's not like that, this is still high school. However, let me just say that the spoiled kid was the very lowest score. 
So basically, the teacher goes on the board before handing out the tests and says, all right, guys, so before I hand back the tests, I kind of just want to show you how this, like, scatters out. I know some teachers who do this, and it's always kind of interesting, but also a little, a little humiliating if you learn that you actually did the worst. So he says, all right, so he goes on the board, and he says, the high on this test was a 90, um, and the lowest score was a 12. And he said, and then he kind of like drew a kind of like, you know, one of those like bell curves, but he didn't do it like a standard distribution. He kind of like had the curve go way up around the 70 to 80 range. He said, okay, the majority of the test scores were in the 70 to 80 range. We had a few in the 50s, few in the 60s, majority in the 70s, and a few and a lot in the low 80s. And 190, which was not 190, but 190%, he says that was the highest. So the teacher then goes ahead and walks around handing out the tests. And as soon as the spoiled kid gets his test, he looks at it, but he doesn't have a look of, like, shock. Like, sometimes when spoiled kids are really arrogant and think that they'll just be a genius and be able to pass their test because of their sheer genius ability and epic mind because they were always told by their parents that they were geniuses. No, no, no. So, and not in this case. The spoiled kid, in this case, knew that he wasn't going to do well. So instead of having a shocked reaction, he looks at it and simply very calmly raises his hand. So the teacher, expecting like a little bit of commenting from the kid who got an 11%, right? Uh, but didn't really expect the commentary to come as a class question. The teacher kind of expected the spoiled kid to ask to meet with him after class or during a free period, and they'd go over the test together and how the spoiled kid can salvage his grade in this class. However, it looks like the spoiled kid wanted to get attention for this in front of the entire class, so, you know, the teacher's like, however, you know, whatever, right? So the teacher looks at him and says, yes, spoiled kid, what is it? So the spoiled kid looks at him and says, you know, we're going to call him Mr. Davenport. Some of you guys have been asking, why is every teacher name Mr. or Mrs. Davenport? I used the name once, and then similar to me using Ben as the secondary character, I'm just not creative, and I like routine, so I've just been using it every time. So we're going to call the teacher Mr. Davenport. And Mr. Davenport looks at the spoiled kid and is like, yes. And the student, the spoiled kid, stands up and looks at Mr. Davenport and says this in a forceful yet calm manner. This spoiled kid is a lot more, uh, I don't know, uh, it, I don't want to say competent, but a lot more confident and a lot more tactical when he like, goes about being a spoiled brat. He looks at this teacher and says, if you do not change my grade to an A, I will sue you and the school. So the entire class was like not quiet, not, not, not like speaking super loud, you know, they weren't all talking, but what the, the, the light hum of kind of like a little bit of talking, a little bit of movement that was present before this kid said that cuts out immediately and it is dead empty silence. So everyone is just kind of like, oh damn, did this kid actually just say that, bro? So yeah, um, the teacher has a very, Mr. Davenport has a very stunned look on his face because I don't know about you, but if I was a teacher and some kid very calmly stood up and said, hey, I, if you don't change my grade from a fail to an A, I'm gonna, uh, I don't know, sue you and the entire school. Yeah. So the teacher kind of like laughs a little bit because genuinely, how do you react in a situation like this? And is this like, uh, <laughs> come again? So the spoiled kid looks at him and says, yeah, I think you heard me the first time, but if you don't change my grade from an 11% to a 90%, basically from a fail to an A, I'm not only going to sue you, but I'm going to sue the entire school, and this school will come crumbling down. So at this point, this is when the subscriber, Luke, realized that the spoiled kid did have no intention of studying but he didn't have any intention on doing well in the test from like the first time around. The spoiled kid had no intention of studying because he was going to basically threaten his way to an A. Look, there's a lot of strategies of doing well in high school. I do not suggest this one, guys. I, I mean, I don't know how many of you guys could pull this off. I know I certainly couldn't, but I really don't suggest this. Yeah, so uh, sure enough, um, Luke and everyone else in the class they're just like, oh my God, like, what did this kid just say? And, you know, the teacher's looking at the spoiled kid 
And the teacher, like the smart, the, kind of like the smirk, laugh, smile the teacher had on his face, that wasn't really because he thought it was funny, but just because he was completely taken off guard, slowly dissipates as he realizes that the spoiled kid did just say what he thought he said, and also said it with completely seriously. So the teacher kind of makes his tone serious as well and says, you know, I will not take such threats in my class. Like, you're going to sit down and nothing's about your grade is going to change. Like, you didn't put in the work, you performed poorly, and because of that, you threatened to sue me. Like, that's insulting. Like, just sit down. I'm not hearing anything else from you for the rest of class. So the class is, like, super silent as this kid sits down, as this is pretty crazy. Like, this is like, whoa, because this teacher was pretty chill. I mean, I don't know. He was, uh, he wasn't like, I'm going to be your best friend, but you kind of don't want your teacher to be your best friend. You don't want them to be so ridiculously out of touch that they, like, I, I, I don't know, like, that they can't actually, like, relate or they make things really hard not realizing because they're just so out of touch. But you also don't want your teacher to be your best friend. Because, you know, they're, also, they're supposed to be, have a figure of authority over you. They're supposed to be your teacher, not your friend. However, while this guy was very chill, they've never seen him lash out at anyone. So it was pretty uncomfortable for them to see this, uh, even though it totally, even though everyone agreed this was a totally justified response. Because I don't know about you, but if I was a teacher and some kid threatened to sue me, I don't think I would just be like, oh, okay, that's fine. That's a totally normal thing that normal people say. I think I would recognize how insane of a thing that just, that was said just was. Like, I think I would, I, I don't know. I think I'd be upset as well. I don't know if you guys agree or disagree. You can let me know in the comments if you'd like. So here's the thing. Luke and everyone else in the class kind of assumed that the spoiled kid was pulling a massive bluff. They kind of assumed that the spoiled kid did not actually believe that he was going to be able to sue the school or that anything like that, or even try. So ever, some people, not Luke, but Luke learned a little bit later on, but other people knew that the spoiled kid came from a really powerful lawyer type family that owned a law firm, and his dad was specifically one of the top lawyers, whatever, in the state. But at the same time, they were just like, no way that his dad is actually gonna go along with it. Like even if the spoiled kid, right? The spoiled kid might say, I'm gonna sue you. But at the end of the day, the spoiled kid is not gonna sue the teacher nor the school. It would really be the parents who own the law firm or <laughs> sue them individually. Who even knows, right? And no one in the class thought that the parents would actually stoop that low. However, this is where they were wrong. Because yeah, um, let's just say that the spoiled kid threatening to sue was not the most ridiculous thing. Sue. Sue is the secret word of the day. So if you made it this far into the video, comment Sue, which is S-U-E, uh, in down below in the comment section. I'd love to see how many people made it this far into the video. And while you're down in the comment section, uh, make sure to check the pinned comment. In the pinned comment is a link to my Spotify account in which I have all these story times uploaded on Spotify. So if you want to just listen to them as a podcast and help me out as well, go ahead and do that. And also in the pinned comment, final thing is there are two channels, one which I post meme kind of type videos, and the other one are story times, but they're specifically Reddit story time videos. If you can go ahead and subscribe to both those channels and perhaps watch those videos, it would help them out a lot as they're a lot smaller and your, wa your viewership goes a long, long way, especially when I'm st when whenever you're trying to start a new channel. So anyways, let's get back into it. So sure enough, um, basically what happens is the spoiled kid his family gets in contact with the school. Yeah, so basically his family gets in contact with the school and they, uh, I don't know exactly how they do it. I don't know exactly what they say. They don't, okay, there's no way that they actually say, hey, you're st like my son failed an exam because he's an idiot, but because we have money, we're gonna th and threaten to sue you unless you change it back. They basically said probably something along the lines of some kind of BS like, emotional damage, unfair, something, something, um, a bunch of other stuff, legal jargon, basically saying that we're going to drag you through the mud because we have the money and resources too, but we'll totally let this go if you uh, make things right with our son. Correct his emotional damage by forcing an A in the class, right? So the thing is, the teacher, this is literally the worst news ever, and it is delivered to the teacher in the worst way possible. So the next day in class, everyone's sitting there, 
Spoil Kid is sitting there, you know. Spoil Kid's pretty confident, even though at this point, I don't think he even knows that he is going to win this. Yeah, guys, the Spoil Kid actually wins for once, which is terrible, I know. And so the teacher is in midway through teaching something about biology. Uh, I'm not sure what he's teaching. I, I took biology such a long time ago, man. I think it was a good class. But uh, anyways, one of the f- faculty slash staff members walk into the room. They say, hey, Mr. Davenport, um, can I just talk to you for a second? And Mr. Davenport's like, okay. Mr. Davenport walks outside, has a conversation. So the thing is, um, the subscriber, the subscriber Luke doesn't 100% sure know that this was a conversation exactly when Mr. Davenport learned the truth, or not the truth, but what he had to do. But uh, either way, he eventually learns. However, when Mr. Davenport walks back into the classroom, he is very clearly a little bit shaken up and also quite a bit angry slash upset because either he was just told or, I don't know, maybe he was informed that he really had to. He thought it was a joke. That basically, he had to change the spoiled kid's grade from an 11% to a 100%, from a fail to an A plus or an A, however you want to go about it, simply because the school genuinely just saw that that this family would drag them through the mud and burn them through all their resources for a case that wouldn't even amount to anything, If the, and the only thing they had to do was basically change this kid's grade back. Yeah, it's pretty messed up, I'm not going to lie, and the teacher, Mr. Davenport, also thought it was pretty messed up. Yeah, so Mr. Davenport was just super weird for the rest of the day, probably because he learned that he needed to basically give someone a fake grade, something that they didn't earn after threatening, which is after doing something insane, basically awarding their worst behavior ever and also giving someone a grade that they didn't deserve, all because the school was scared of this family, right? So the next day in class, the spoiled kid walked in 15 minutes late. And Mr. Davenport, while being pretty chill, was not a fan of, like, not showing up on time. He didn't care if you were a minute late. I mean, maybe if you're, like, three minutes late every single day, no matter what, like, he'd be like, dude, just, like, leave, like, walk a little faster, maybe don't take the same. I, I, I don't know. He would, like, figure it out, or if there's a genuine reason, I don't think he'd care. But this, he didn't like kids when they were late, right? He, he'd always give them a hard time. So the spoil kid shows up 15 minutes late. And the reason why the spoil kid showed up so late was not because, I don't know, he got out of class late or even because, like, a genuine reason. The reason was, was because the spoil kid learned from his parents that the school had instructed Mr. Davenport to change his 11% to 100% and that he was going to have to go through with it. So at this point, the spoil kid basically learns that he won and that Mr. Davenport will be forced to do whatever he says, practically. So the spoiled kid walks in 15 minutes late. Mr. Davenport turns to him and says, why are you 15 minutes late? The spoiled kid says, eh, I didn't feel like coming here on time. I came, I, I come on my own schedule. And Mr. Davenport's like, like, no, that'll be deducted from your grade. Like, you gotta be like showing up on time. You can't be like showing up 15 minutes late. And the spoiled kid's like, I don't know, Mr. Davenport. I kind of think I can do whatever I want. So yeah, he sits down and Mr. Davenport is very very obviously very angry and steaming. However, he also seems a little reserved, a little bit held back. And Luke has no idea that the school has told Mr. Davenport that he needs to change his grade. So at this point, Luke is like massively confused because he's like, wait a minute, this kid just blatantly disrespected Mr. Davenport. And he looks and sounds extremely angry, but he didn't pursue this. This makes literally no sense. So Mr. Davenport just starts teaching, tries to get through it, and that's when the spoiled kid basically just keeps taunting him. Spoiled kid raises his hand, because Mr. Davenport asks a question. The spoiled kid raises his hand and says, doesn't really matter for me, might matter for those guys. I don't know the answer, and I don't really care. And everyone in the class is just so confused by this answer. They turn around, and they look at him. They're just like, what? And then after turning around and looking at the spoiled kid, they immediately turn to Mr. Davenport because they're like, oh my God, Mr. Davenport's gonna chew him out again. Like some of them are rooting on for Mr. Davenport to just rip him a new one because they're like, this kid is literally the worst. He sucks and I really like seeing a spoiled kid getting owned by their teacher, right? However, Mr. Davenport looked at him. 
And Mr. Davenport gave a long, cold stare, but he didn't say anything. And, and Luke was so, so confused. Luke was going to learn the truth in a couple of minutes. Stick around as Mr. Davenport does kind of blow up on him in class. It's very entertaining. But anyways, Luke is just really confused at this point. He doesn't know what's going on. And he's like, what? Like, why is he putting up with this? So finally, the spoiled kid, after Mr. Davenport goes back to teaching again, the spoiled kid basically breaks the last straw. It's the last straw on the camel's, that broke the camel's back at this point. So the spoiled kid just starts playing a video on his computer. So kids weren't even really supposed to have their computers out, but you know, for some classes, you bring a computer in, and for other classes, the teacher would be like, hey, can you not have your computers out? And biology was one of the classes where the teacher asked very nicely, like, don't have your computer out. We don't have any need for it. And I know it's just going to be a distraction because let's be real, guys. If you have your computer out in class, if you're not playing jump or the dinosaur jump game or slither.io, or if you're not just like doing stuff on it, bro, what are you doing on that computer? I, I guarantee you, bro, I have, I sometimes sit in the back and I see, I have, I have a full perspective of everyone's computers. No one is doing what they're supposed to be doing, which in most cases is just paying attention. They're not paying attention, bro. If I'm a teacher, those computers are shut. Cause I know for a fact, no one's paying attention to me if their computers are open. That's kind of how it goes. But the spoiled kid not only takes out his computer, but he starts really loudly watching a movie. Like you hear the 21st Century Fox thing, like the da 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 like very loudly. It's very clearly a movie. So the whole class turns around again and sees the spoiled kid put his feet up on his desk, recline back, and literally opens up his backpack and pulls out a thing of popcorn. Yeah, the spoiled kid was planning his moves to be as disrespectful as possible. He literally popped popcorn in advance just so that he could be disrespectful to Mr. Davenport. Yeah, I'm not even kidding here. So at this point, Mr. Davenport stops what he's doing and he asks nicely, like, spoiled kid, can you please not play a movie in class? And once again, Luke and everyone else in the class is like, huh? Like, why is Mr. Davenport not going in? Like, he would go in on anyone else, and some of the kids were probably getting a little bit mad. Like, what is the special treatment of such a jerk of a kid, right? And the kid's like, nah, I don't think so. And he literally just continues to watch, and he pops more popcorn. And that's when Mr. Davenport just freezes. He doesn't say anything for literally 60 seconds. I think Ms. Davenport, Mr. Davenport was having just like, was really thinking, and what I'm about to do, is it really worth it? And eventually Mr. Davenport came to the conclusion, yes, what I'm about to say is worth it. So Mr. Davenport takes his like, go, walks over to his desk, has all these papers on it, and literally swipes all the papers off angrily and forcefully. Papers go flying, and as he does it, he says, I'm done. And the whole class is like, oh my God. He's like, that's it, I quit. Mr. Davenport has been a teacher for over 10 years. And one thing that the kids don't know about Mr. Davenport is that he isn't like a lot of teachers. A lot of teachers, they need their jobs, um, or not they need their jobs, but they don't get paid a lot as teachers, right? Unfortunately, one of the most important professions gets paid somewhat near the least, especially when you compare it to how important it is, right? So the thing is, um, Mr. Davenport was not like most teachers. Mr. Davenport wasn't originally a teacher. He actually made a lot of money being like a stock guy before he was at, in head fund and stuff like that. However, he made enough money and then wanted to pursue something that he felt was more meaningful and where it didn't really matter how much he got paid. And that happened to be, you know, that happened to be teaching. So Mr. Davenport was actually like a multi-multi-millionaire, multi right? And he happened to work with the spoiled kid's dad. So he knows all about it, right? So Mr. Davenport, at this point, is really just teaching for fun. However, this, like, this recent thing that happened, which having to give a kid a false grade and letting him boss him around was a little bit too much. And Mr. Davenport decided that it wasn't worth it. So the whole class is completely silent. Because Mr. Davenport just like slammed all the papers off his desk and screamed that he quit, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, so uh, that's when Mr. Davenport decides to go in on the spoil kid. So the spoil kid kind of like kind of straightens up his back, takes his feet off of his desk, and pauses the movie because he's Mr. Davenport has gotten his attention 
to say the very least. So Mr. Davenport starts walking in on the spoiled kid. He's like, everyone, I want you to know something. This kid's family threatened to sue the school that if I, if, to, like, threaten to school, sue the school unless I change his grade from a pitiful 11% to 100%. And guess what? One of the faculty informed me that I needed to do this. And so everyone's like, oh my God. So everyone starts freaking out. They're like, oh my God, right? And the spoiled kid has a little sense of like arrogance and smirk or whatever. And that's when the, you know, the teacher goes in, Mr. Abbott's like, spoiled kid, you're so confident. You're so full of yourself. It's like, do you really believe that you've done anything? And the spoiled kid is like, my family, dot, 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 whatever. But Mr. Davenport catches him off. He says, yeah, your family, not you. You've done nothing. You've achieved nothing. And everything in your life is not because of you. You've contributed nothing. You're a little leech who's bitten, digged his little fangs into the side of our society and sucked and sucked and sucked it dry. And the spoiled kid was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Because spoiled kid had never been spoken to like that before. And the spoiled kid's like, I don't think he, who you know you're messing with. And the teacher screams back at him, because remember, this teacher used to be a super successful, like, hedge fund, millionaire, whatever, and he's kept his identity pretty low key. However, he's also still kept up in the world. The teacher screams back at him, I don't know who you think you're messing with. Spoiled kid did not know this, right? So the teacher goes on to say, class, I'm sorry. I cannot do this anymore. As much as, you know, I love teaching, the school is corrupt if they'd let something like this happen. The school is corrupt, the system is corrupt, and from this day on, I quit. And the teacher begins to pack up his stuff. And the spoiled kid has a little bit of a smile on his face because the spoiled kid believes that he's won. And that's when the teacher says, oh, spoiled kid, I, I, I gotta let you know something. D just so you know, you didn't get away with this. You didn't get away with this. And the spoiled kid kind of speaks up like, Spoiled Kid's a little shaken up at this point because this is like a crazy turn of events, right? But the Spoiled Kid speaks up a little shakenly but a little bit more confidently than he would have been a couple, like a minute ago. He's like, how did I not win this? Like, I got my A and you quit. And the teacher's like, Spoiled Kid, do you think I've been a teacher for my entire life? And the Spoiled Kid's like, um, yeah. And he's like, no, there's some things you don't know about me. I never had to be a teacher in the first place. In fact... For uh, like, and he's like, you know what? Might as well let it all go. I'm no longer a teacher after this point, so it doesn't matter. I, in fact, am a multi-millionaire. I used to live a completely different life, and I left it all, and I left my job behind to pursue teaching. I haven't needed to teach a single day, but I came in every single day to do so. And he looks at the spoiled kid. He's like, you know what? Also, you know what happened when I worked in the world of finance and business. I, I met a lot of people because we, we consulted with a lot of really big organizations. And some of these big organizations were schools. In fact, I've met with almost every board of a pension fund of every major college in the United States. And at this point, the spoiled kid's like, uh-oh. And the teacher's like, I just want to let you know something. I will individually reach out to them and let each and every one of the colleges know who you are, what you stand for, and what you've done. And I guarantee you, it doesn't matter what SAT score your parents pay for. It doesn't matter what extracurriculars that you make up. It doesn't matter what other fake grades you get from bullying other teachers. You will not get into any of those schools. And for once in your life, you will have, you will get into a school, you will get something that you actually deserve, my friend. And with that, the teacher, dead, the class is dead silent right now, because this is like the most mic droppiest mic drop of all freaking time. And so he walks back, the teacher walks back, closes up his suitcase, clicks it, walks out the door. The kids are literally silent for the last 10 minutes of class. How's it going, everyone? Today we have a story time of probably one of the most spoiled kids on planet Earth. You guys probably know that kid who's pretty spoiled or entitled, but take that kid, imagine him, and make him twice as worse, and that is the spoiled kid we have today. So subscribe if you're new, and let's just jump right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber James, who submitted this story. So anyways, 
James was on a class trip, and in this class trip, uh, they were going to a kind of like a museum type thing. It was something that they would do every single year, or at least the fourth grade would do every single year. So James and his classmates were pretty excited for this, as it was a pretty big deal. So yeah, anyways, they get onto the bus, and you were, you didn't, you already had like assigned seats just so that everyone would be organized or whatever. Because whenever you have like a really long like trek out or whatever, like it, it's going to be a lot of cases where the school just wants to be as organized as possible so that they, so that they don't you know lose anyone. And because of this, you not only had assigned seats, but you also had an assigned buddy that you had to spend the entire time with. And because they wanted everyone to be with their their buddies or whatever, just to keep people together. So Jack, the subscriber who submitted this, right? Uh, he was really hoping that you know because he was really chill with the majority of people in the class. However, there's this one kid who we're going to call the spoiled kid who is just known as being a really entitled jerk. And Jack was like, oh God, please don't put me with this kid. Whatever you do, put me with someone else and don't put me with this kid specifically. So yeah, Jack was waiting outside the bus as, as well with everyone else, waiting for the teachers to read out the names. And Jack is like, please don't be spoiled kid. Please don't be spoiled kid. Please don't be spoiled kid. And the teacher was like, all right, Sam and Ben, Aiden and Steve, whatever, Jack. And, and it almost felt like there was an intentional pause. There probably wasn't, but I think it was just because Jack was so like in the mode of anticipation, really hoping that it wasn't the spoiled kid that, you know, it almost felt like there was a pause where there wasn't. And the teacher's like, and spoiled kid. And Jack is like, how, 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 how? Like, what are the odds that that's actually how it went? Like, genuinely, like, what are the odds that out of everyone possible, that is actually the freaking spoiled kid I get part, like, I get partnered with? Like, that is 100% my luck. Like, how is this even possible? There was like, a hundred kids in his class, and somehow he got partnered with the one kid that he didn't want to be partnered with. But I'm pretty sure that's like Murphy's Law, where it's like the whenever, like, uh, yeah, something like that will always happen. And it's like, it's the one thing you don't expect to happen will always happen, so be prepared for it. But anyways, eventually they, uh, you know, Jack is told, and everyone else is told to go find your buddy. So Jack finds the spoiled kid, and, uh, you know, the spoiled kid's like, what's up? And Jack's like, yo. And so they go on the bus, and they sit down. And immediately, once they get to their seats, the first problem of many, the first of many problems arises. Because the spoiled kid is like, I want window seat. And like, the thing was, like Jack was in front of him, so it was just easier for Jack to slide in. And it also didn't really matter. And Jack wouldn't have really cared if the spoiled kid was like, hey man, can I have the window seat? Like, that'd be totally fine, right? Who cares? But it's the way that the spoiled kid was like, give me the window seat now! just so unnecessarily rude and aggressive, really for just a 20 minute bus ride for who has the window versus aisle seat. Like it was so dumb. So anyways, Jack's like, whatever. So he steps aside and the spoiled kid like pushes him on his way to get to the seat. Like he literally pushes him, bro. So Jack is immediately already knows that this is about to be quite, um, quite something to say the least. Like Jack already knows that this is about to be a, uh, quite the adventure he's about to go on, or the experience, I should say, because the spoiled kid is continuing to be a spoiled kid, right? He's continuing to do what spoiled kids always do. And so the kid is sitting there, and he takes out his phone. And the one thing, a pretty strong rule, was no one was allowed to have their phones. No one was even allowed to really have their phones on them. They had to be zipped away in their backpacks. And you could, like, turn it on so you could hear if you were getting a phone call, because, like, I don't know, maybe your parents need to contact you, maybe there's an emergency, but really what should happen is the parents contact the school, that contacts the teacher, that contacts you, uh, and, but whatever, right? So the spoiled kid was on his phone playing some video game or something, and, uh, you know, that's when he gets bored of the video game, and Jack is, like, talking to some of the people, right, some of the classmates, because when you have the aisle seat on the bus, it's a lot easier. I don't know if you guys experience this, but whenever I got the window seat, it was very difficult to talk to people because you'd either have to turn around, which is uncomfortable, and talk to the person behind you, or you talk to the person in front of you, but they would have to turn around, and most of the time you don't want to do that. And uh, the people that are like across from you, you're kind of like blocked by the person sitting on the aisle. So when you sit on the aisle seat when you're taking a bus, it's just so much easier to talk to a lot of people. So remember, the spoiled kid demanded that he had the window seat. Like he demanded that he got the window seat. And so Jack was like, whatever, and he sat down in the aisle seat. And Jack was, like, having a good time talking with people. And the spoiled kid, like, punches him in the arm. Doesn't, like, full-blown, like, smack him in the arm, but kind of punches him in the arm to get his attention, which 
just like hurt a little bit and seem super unnecessary. Like, could you literally not tap me, bro? Like, were you not like physically capable of just tapping my arm instead? So sure enough, Jack, it like turns around, he's like, yes. And Spoil Kid's like, give me the aisle seat right now. Stop hogging all the attention. And Jack is like, bro, what? Like, what do you mean I'm hogging all the, because <laughs> Jack is so confused because he remembers how, in how like intense the Spoil Kid was acting and how like intent he was on getting the window seat that he was like super rude earlier and still left a bad taste in Jack's mouth. And now, 10 minutes later, when the spoiled kid gets bored of his video games that he wasn't even supposed to be playing, he now demands to have like the seat where he can talk to other people. So at this point, you know, Jack kind of just doesn't want to like switch seats. He's like, bro, it would be such a hassle to switch seats and I'm not trying to stand up. They don't want us to stand up on the bus. And the spoiled kid starts punching Jack in the arm. He's like, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. And, you know, he's like, stop, Jack's like, stop, stop. What are you doing right now? And the spoiled kid's like, I'm going to make your life a living hell unless you switch seats right now. So at this point, Jack is like, oh, okay, whatever, bro. Like, I really don't care. Like, fine, fine, dude, sure, whatever. So Jack stands up. And immediately hears, Jack, sit back down. So Jack sits back down, because one of the teachers in the front, because you can't be standing up while the bus is moving just in case it has to stop abruptly. You would go, like, you'd fall over, maybe you'd hurt yourself, just for liability's sake. So he sits back down, and the spoiled kid starts punching him in the arm. He's like, bro, why do you sit down? Like, I'm trying to sit in that seat. And Jack's like, dude, I was just told by the teachers that I need to sit down right now. Like, I'm sorry. Like, you're going to have to climb over me. So the spoiled kid is like, fine. So Jack starts sliding in towards the window and the spoiled kid starts climbing over Jack and the spoiled kid legitimately like falls. Like he's trying to climb over and he loses his balance and then just falls on top of Jack. And Jack's like, dude, get off of me. And the spoiled kid's like, you get off of me, bro. Which is like, did you really just say you get off of me, bro, when you're literally sprawled on top of Jack? Like you are on top of Jack right now. You are sprawled on top of this guy. How is he supposed to get off of you when you have him pinned down? So eventually the spoiled kid gets the aisle seat. And uh, here's the thing. I think the spoiled kid just imagined that anybody, literally anybody, if you sit in the aisle seat, you will have people to talk to. But the thing was, uh, most people didn't like the spoiled kid because I don't know, uh, he's pretty clearly a big massive jerk, right? And it feels pretty obvious right now. So the spoiled kid, when he actually got the aisle seat, people like weren't talking with him. So the spoiled kid starts to get mad and t turns over to Jack, because Jack is now just looking out the window. Jack is not talking with anyone because he's not in the aisle seat. He's looking out the window and he hears bump, 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 or he doesn't hear. He feels up like a punching against his arm. He's like, I swear to God, this kid is going to get KO'd from me if he doesn't stop it. So he turns around, he's like, what? And the spoiled kid's like, you tricked me into giving me you your, like, window seat. Like, I want it back now. And Jack looks at him and is like, dude, can you please just choose? It's literally, we have five minutes left in our drive. Like, can you not chill out for one freaking second, dude? And spoiled kid's like, you tricked me. Like, you were making it seem so fun in the aisle seat so that you could have my window seat. Like, I want it back. And Jack's like, dude, okay, if I give this back to you, we're not going to switch again. Like, I'm not going to switch with you again. If we switch, we're, we're never going to switch again, okay? And the spoiled kid's like, yeah, fine, whatever. So when Jack and the spoiled kid finally switch seats, Jack gets back to sitting, right? And he sits there. And remember, now the people that are sitting in the aisle, they see that Jack is sitting there. So they're like, oh, we like this guy. So they start talking to him again. And the spoiled kid starts to get super angry. And he taps Jack again. He's like, dude, why did you trick me again? And Jack turns around and is trying to keep his rage together. Because I don't know about you, but I would be pretty angry myself as well. But Jack is like, what do you mean now? And he's like, dude, like, you, you're, you, you tricked me again. Like, we got to switch. And Jack's like, no, I'm not going to switch. And so the spoiled kid's like, starts punching him. He's like, ah, ah, like, we got to switch now. And Jack literally just clocks him in the arm as hard as possible. And the spoiled kid's like, Ehh. and Jack's like, oh my God. So sure enough, the bus stops. And as the teacher gets up to take attendance, the teacher sees the spoiled kid just having a complete fit or whatever. So yeah, eventually the teacher comes over. 
um, Jack is like is asked like what happened, and the spoiled kid's like, Jack hit me in the arm. And the teacher's like, Jack. And, then, and so Jack was like, like he was beating me in the arm again and again and again. I just did it back to make him stop. And the teacher's like, well, obviously he wasn't doing it super hard to you and you played way too hard back. No rough housing. Apologize to the spoiled kid. And Jack is like, oh my God, I need to apologize to this kid. Dude, like, I don't think I can, I don't think I can stomach apologizing to this kid. I just hate him so much, bro. Like, I just hate this so much, bro. Like, I can't take this anymore, dude. And so, yeah, um, the spoiled kid, um, you know, Jack is like, sorry. The spoiled kid's like, it's okay. That's fine. I'll recover eventually. Maybe I'll have to amputate this arm, but I don't know. We'll see. Mm. And Jack is like, oh my God, I just want to beat this kid oh my god oh my god and the teacher's like all right well everyone get with your buddies and go off to the you know the museum or whatever so uh they they get up and jack notices the spoiled kid stops crying immediately like he doesn't kind of like you know sometimes a kid will cry and they'll, they'll mean it they'll actually be truly upset but they'll slowly like stop crying they'll cry less and less and less until they basically stop right this was not that the spoiled kid was putting on an act and jack realized it because he literally shut off his tears and any emotion the second they got up the second the teacher walked away he was a totally different kid yeah so uh tears is the secret word of the day so if you made it this far into the video comment tears down below uh, that'll be the secret word. I want to see how many people made it. And while you're in the comment section, check the pinned comment. There's a link to my Spotify page where you can listen to these stories on Spotify as podcasts. As well, there are two links to my two other channels that very soon I'll be posting daily on. So please subscribe to them. It will help me out. And if you're listening on Spotify, please rate five stars on the main page. And anyways, let's get back to it. So sure enough, the spoiled kid and Jack, they start walking into the museum. And I wasn't told exactly what type of museum this is. So let's just say that... I don't know, it's a history museum. That's a pretty, pretty common type of museum because museums are like historical or whatever. Right? Some type of like historical museum, whatever. And this was a pretty popular museum. Like a lot of people would come to go see it. So when Jack and the spoiled kid were walking in, Jack hears the spoiled kid go, oh my God. <sighs> and Jack's like, what? And he turns around and the spoiled kid looks like he just saw a freaking ghost. So Jack is actually kind of curious. He's like, dude, like, what is it? He's like, look at all those people. What? Look at all the diseases they must have. And he like points at them. And Jack's like, what, what are you talking about? He's like, the lower classes, they're, they're everywhere. And Jack's like, wait, what? He's like, yes, the lower incomes, they're all around me. I might catch their disease and be like them. I can't have that happen. Oh. And Jack's like, dude, shut up. Like, what are you saying? He's like, don't say shut up to me. I'm worried for you too, Jack. Even though you're probably one of the poors anyways. But you might become more like them. <sighs> and Jack's like, dude, shut up. Oh my God, please. So the spoiled kid was like, Jack, I need you to tell me. You are around the pores all the time, and you are one as well. Will they eat me if they see me? <laughs> and Jack's like, dude, shut up. What are you even saying right now, bro? Huh? And he's like, the, the, the under, the pores, I think they want to eat me and take all my stuff. <sighs> and Jack's like, dude, shut up. And he just like grabs the spoiled kid and drags him in. The spoiled kid's like, no, 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 Jack, no, you're betraying me. No, and eventually they get in. I think the spoiled kid realized that the quote unquote pores are not going to eat him. And he's like, oh, I'm safe for now. They must think I'm one of them. Oh, gross. And Jack's like, dude, shut up. Oh my God. Yeah, so Jack kind of realized that being with the spoiled kid was going to suck, but, like, he didn't realize it was going to be this bad. Like, he knew it was going to be bad, but he's like, is, he didn't expect it to be this bad. Like, this is a whole new level of terrible. Like, this is a whole new level of, oh my god, like, damn, bro. Like, it gets this bad? Yeah, so, anyways, they're walking around the museum or whatever, and the spoiled kid starts touching something, and... Uh, in the museum, you're not really allowed to touch stuff. At least in a lot of cases, there'll be signs being like, hey, can you please not touch the whatever exhibit? Like, you're just not supposed to. And a spoiled kid is just freaking full-on gripping this thing, right? He's just, like, feeling it or whatever. God, don't take this out of context. He's just like, <laughs> let's say it's a rock. Let's say it's a historical rock or something. He's just, like, feeling this historical rock or whatever, 
gripping the historical rock. I'm going to shut up. Um, and anyway, so one of the uh, people who work at the museum comes over and is like, hey, buddy, can you, like, can you not touch it? And the spoiled kid is like, what do you mean? I can't touch it. Like, I, I get that, like, the, the masses can't touch it. And he's like, but I, I, I'm VIP. And the, the guy working at the museum is like, sorry, no one can touch it. Like, I can't really touch it either. Like, I'm not supposed to. I'm just supposed to tell people that they shouldn't be touching it, right? And spoiled kid's like, no, no, I don't think you understand. I'm actually VIP. And the guy's like, I, I, no, I don't think you understand. Like, first of all, there is no VIP here. He's like, no, no, you don't, you don't understand, bro. I'm, I'm VIP. I'm VIP. I'm spoiled kid. I'm the best. And the guy's like, sorry, there's no VIP. Um, that's not a thing. And also, even if you were, you would not be allowed to touch the historical things. Like, you just, that's just not a thing. Like, there's no, we don't let anyone do that. It's like for the, it's kind of the protecting integrity of it. If too many people t- touch it, it'll kind of like rub down. It won't be as like nice as it was. And also, like, uh, if one person, like, touches it too hard and breaks it, like, we want to make sure that everyone can enjoy it, so please don't touch it, right? Yeah, so the spoiled kid doesn't, like, uh, like most spoiled kids, he doesn't take no for an answer very well. So the spoiled kid is like, what, 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 what are you saying right now? You're saying, I, I can't, you're saying no? He says, you know what, well, then, mister, I'm actually gonna, uh, I'm actually gonna take it. So the spoiled kid literally picks up the rock out of, like, the exhibit thing or, like, the museum thing and grabs onto it. Okay, so that's when the security guard's like, all right, we got to take this seriously. So basically, the security guard takes the thing out of his hand, puts it back, and says, wear, like, your, like, parental figures or whatever. So Jack is like, okay. So Jack, like, calls over one of the teachers. The security guard explains that, you know, the spoiled kid can no longer be in the museum anymore. Like, he's caused too much of a ruckus. He needs to be removed. And says, like, as long as he isn't in the parts of the museum where there's actual exhibits, it's fine. So, uh, yeah, the teachers are like, oh, geez, because they can't drive him back personally. So they're like, hey, can we just plop him in the gift store? And the, you know, the guy's like, yeah, that's fine. And so Jack is like, okay, well, that sucks for him. haha. <laughs> and Jack's about to walk away. And the teacher's like, Jack, where are you going? And Jack's like, wait, what? And the teacher's like, yeah, Jack, I mean, you're his buddy. I'm sorry to say, but you have to stick with him at all times. And Jack's like no dude what yeah so (laughs) yeah unfortunately jack now has to stay with the spoiled kid in the gift store for like the next hour because the spoiled kid is just an idiot and can't keep his him his hands to himself so jack is walking to the store with the spoiled kid and it's like dead silent for a second because jack is like really upset and spoiled kid's like after like a little bit tries to break the silence he's like dude can you believe them bro like that's actually so crazy, dude. Like, I can't believe that they would, like, so unrightfully throw me out. Like, that's crazy, dude. Like, that's that's unheard of, bro. And, like, Jack just kind of looks at him. Just kind of gives him this look. Because he's like, of course the spoiled kid would refuse to take accountability for his actions. Of course the spoiled kid would believe that actually everyone else is in the wrong and he's in the right here. Because, oh, yeah, it makes a lot of sense that he would be allowed to literally pick up the things that are, like, on display that no one is allowed to touch and they're only allowed to see. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense for him to be allowed to pick it up and mess with it and be totally fine. And Jack just kind of looks at him and gives him this look and then keeps going. This boy is like, bro, do you not agree? Like, do you not agree with me? Like, bro, what? And Jack looks at him. He's like, dude, you're going to go in one side of the store and I'm going to go in the other side of the store. Just because I have to be in the same room with you doesn't mean I have to be next to you. Doesn't mean I have to deal with you any longer. He says, you go to that side of the gift store, I will be on the other side at all times. We're in the same place, but I don't want to deal with you anymore. So Jack basically storms off, which I totally understand. I feel like if I was in this position, I'd be pretty angry too. I might just like, I don't know, I might just suck it up because I'm not the most confrontational person ever. So I might just be like, or whatever, and like just deal with it. But I totally understand why Jack wants to kind of distance himself from the spoiled kid because, yeah, I can't, I can't really blame him. The spoiled kid is not being the, Christ right, the best right now, right? So here's the thing. I guess the spoiled kid, I mean, we all kind of know the spoiled kid's worldview is pretty messed up and it's really weird and it's like the spoiled kid's insane. But apparently he also believes that paying for stuff is for poor people, which, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to repeat myself. Paying for items is for poor people. So, yeah, I think the spoiled kid for some reason believed that he was, like, it was it would be totally big chillin' if he was to steal stuff from the store. That he could just pick stuff up, and since he was so VIP and, like, exclusive and, like, the best guy ever, 
the smartest, wealthiest, most handsome, whatever, that he would just be allowed to like just steal from the stuff from the store practically. Yeah, because basically Jack is trying to stay on the other side of the gift shop as the spoiled kid. But occasionally he'll look over to see where the spoiled kid is just to see like where he is so he can keep the most distance. And he watches as the spoiled kid picks up something and puts it in his pocket. Like, you know, when you see someone, I don't know if you've seen this, but like someone, if they want to like steal something from like a, I don't know, a thrift store or a convenience store or just like a store with a lot of like little things or whatever at the mall, they'll find something small and they'll normally just put it into their pocket, put it into their purse, whatever, right? And uh, yeah, so, so the spoiled kid is doing this. But he's not, do okay, so some people are kind of like, will be sneaky about it. They'll take one thing, they'll take the tag off, it won't get caught, whatever, right? I mean, still, that's not a thing you should do. The repercussions could be really bad, and it would, it's not worth it, guys. Don't do that. Um, but the spoiled kid was literally just filling all of his pockets with all the toys and random stuff he could see. His pockets were literally bulging with merchandise and apparel. It was like the most, it was like top 10 dumbest criminals ever. He would be number one at this point. He basically was just filling his pockets to the brim. Like they were probably, there were probably toys and merchandise flying out of his pockets, just falling out of his pockets, right? And like, bro was not being nonchalant at all about it. Um, so yeah, I, I guess maybe someone in the store would have assumed that he was just filling his pockets to come to the front and then pay for it. And he just didn't want to hold on to it all. But eventually, uh, like 30 minutes later, the teachers come by and be like, all right, like we're going, like where, like Jack, where is the spoiled kid? And uh, Jack's like, oh, um, I don't know. And he's like, I thought he was in the store. And so sure enough, they look around and they watch as the spoiled kid is walking out of the store, pockets full of stuff, and you hear beep, 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 beep. Yeah, he sets off the detector and uh, these two security guards walk over and they're like, son, do you have any unpaid merchandise? And the spoiled kid's like, uh-uh, I don't. And then like all this crap falls out of his pants. Yeah, so basically the spoil kid starts to get taken, like, is, like, taken away by these security guards. So the teacher runs over there and is like, stop, stop, stop. And they're like, is this your son? And they're like, no, this is, this is my student. I thought I'd just leave him in here because he was banned from somewhere else. Like, I'm sorry, like, what can I do to, like, bring him home? And they're like, well, we don't really care. Like, we were just going to, like, hold him somewhere until we found his parents anyways. Um, they're like, all right, like, can you empty your pockets? And the spoil kid, and they, like, the teacher goes through and makes sure he empties his pockets correctly. But his pockets are emptied out or whatever. And that's when like the security guard's like, all right, well, he can't really come back here, at least on a school trip on your supervision. Uh, let his mom know about this. Like, that's really what we're just gonna do. Like this kid's obviously a kid. Um, we're not gonna like actually like, I don't know, <laughs> enforce the full extent of the law on him. We just wanna wanna make sure this isn't a pattern that consists into his teen and or early adulthood when it can actually affect him. And so the teacher's like, yes, yes, of course, I'm so sorry. So they're walking out and the teacher angry is like, angrily is like yelling at the spoiled kid, like, what are you thinking? First, you try and like destroy something in the museum and then you try and rob the museum. The spoiled kid literally has a blank face. Like the spoiled kid legit doesn't care, which is pretty crazy. But then the teacher says one of the most insane things ever. And I don't think Jack has been more mad in his life. The teacher turns to Jack and is like, how could you let this happen? And Jack's like, what? Today, we have a story time of a spoiled kid who literally gets so angry that he doesn't get what he wants that he goes on an unhinged rampage and actually says that his dad could buy the subscriber. Yeah, that's a little sus, bro. So stand back, or not stand back, sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, and let's jump right into it. So we're gonna call the subscriber who submitted today's story, Brett. So anyways, Brett and the spoiled kid. There's also a kid in his class who we're just gonna call the spoiled kid. And the spoiled kid was a very standard, typical spoiled kid. He was the type of kid who literally got anything he ever wanted. If he wanted something, he would ask and he would receive. So while it's like a good thing to give your kids things that they want sometimes, this kid literally got everything and anything that he ever wanted. So he kind of had this bit of entitlement in which he believed that he was actually deserved everything ever and like that he actually did deserve to like receive everything. So when he didn't get something, that just didn't make sense to him. So here's the thing. There's a girl that both Brett and the spoiled kid were both very into. And uh, we're going to call her Caroline because that's kind of becoming the very standard girl name I've been using. So anyways, Brett had a thing for Caroline. The spoiled kid had a thing for Caroline. However, the spoiled kid was known as being a big jerk. And uh, Brett was actually kind of a, you know, he's a chill guy, 
was, uh, you know, very talkative, not very talkative, but like could hold a good conversation. And uh, the spoiled kid and Brett would basically duke it out. And uh, this is how it goes. So anyways, almost everyone knows about this little quote unquote rivalry they have. Even the girl, even Caroline knows. And she is actually trying to make up her mind. So, you know, at this point, Caroline's in a pretty good position because she's like, well, I got suitors. Like, I got a lot of guys fighting for me right now. And so anyways, she kind of is just like kind of sitting back and seeing what they do. It's pretty clearly that she's leaning towards the Brett over the spoiled kid because the spoiled kid is kind of a kind of a jerkwad. But let's just jump into their first interaction. So anyways, they're sitting down at lunch and uh, Caroline is sitting there with her friends. And basically what happens is, uh, you know, she gets up to go and get more food. So Brett is sitting with his friends and they're talking about like, oh man, like has been going with Caroline, right? And he's like, actually pretty good. We've been talking a little bit. I got her Snapchat or whatever. And they're like, oh, but like you've heard that like spoiled kids trying to go for her too. It kind of became like a thing around the school to talk about, oh my God, who's going to get Caroline? All that kind of stuff, right? Like, oh, it's going to be so crazy. Who's actually going to get it? And, uh, you know, so sure enough, you know, Brett is kind of, he's a little worried, but at the same time, he's not crazy worried because it is the spoiled kid at the end of the day. So, uh, but the thing is though, they watch or Brett and his friends are sitting at the table and they watch as the spoiled kid walks up to where Caroline is in line. So they start to realize that, okay, looks like he's up to something. So the spoiled kid walks up to Caroline and he walks up next to her close enough that she can see him and she can see whatever he's doing. So she wa- he walks up to Caroline and he goes, oops, and he takes out like his wallet and throws it on the ground. And intentionally, he wanted to make sure that the, the dollar bills in his wallet would spill everywhere. So like literally like a hundred dollar bill floats out of his wallet. Remember, this is a spoiled kid. If he wanted money, he could get money. If he wanted something, he'd get something. He could literally get anything. So he kind of figures that he kind of feels as if he's a little bit entitled to Caroline, which guys don't feel entitled to someone, bro. That's crazy. But he's trying to flex right now by having a hundred dollar bill spill out of his wallet. So Brett and his friends notice this and Brett's like, Does he really think that that's going to get her? But Brett in the back of his mind's like, dang, like, what if Caroline actually falls for this, bro? Like, what if she's alerted by his, I don't even know what she'd be alerted by, but what if she's alerted by something, you know what I mean? And so Brett and his friends are like, dude, like, that's not going to work. So Caroline sees this and she kind of looks like, I don't know, she's not like intrigued by this, bro. Like, I think she's like kind of of some character, right? So she sees this and she's like, oh, well, this is a really low brow move. Like, he's just trying to be like, oh, I have money, so you should like me, bro. But in this spoiled kid is like, oh, my God, how did this fall out of my wall? Like, how did this fall out of my hands? I'm so clumsy. Ha ha ha. Like, it's so cringe and lame and weird or whatever. And Caroline notices this and is like, Ugh, like, <laughs> like, this kid is weird, bro. Like, he's really out here trying to flex like the hundred dollar bill that his parents got him. That's the thing, too. Like. It's a little, it's, I can understand flex, uh, okay, flexing is always a little obnoxious, but I can understand being like, hey, I'm financially secure, especially when you're later on dating, because that's definitely like something that's nice, like going into a relationship with someone financially secure, that's something maybe you don't need to worry about. But bro is literally in like eighth grade flexing a hundred dollar bill that his grandma probably gave him for his birthday. Like, bro, that's just simply not a flex. And so the spoiled kid picks up and is like, oh my God, I can't believe this hundred dollar bill fell out of my wallet. Like, oh my God, this is so crazy. <laughs> Looks directly at Caroline, like waves the hundred dollar bill around. Oh my God, it's going to fall in my hands again. And he like drops on the floor. Oops, my hundred dollar bill fell out of my hands once again. Yeah, so uh, Brett notices this and is like, dude's going way too hard. And he's like, oh my God, the hundred dollar bill, it's on the ground. And the spoiled kid goes down to pick it up. And it's like, oh my God, it's so much money. And uh, believe it or not, guys, this is actually not an attractive thing to do. This is not going to woo Caroline over. Um, spoiler alert. She's not going to be like, oh my God, his grandma gave him a hundred dollar bill. I love you now. Like, bro, that's just simply not how it works, dude. I don't know how else to put it. This is not how it's going to work. So yeah, sure enough, um, uh, Caroline just kind of watches this, kind of is like, Ugh, whatever, right? And the spoiled kid moves on. So the next day comes around, and uh, so Caroline is in the hallways, and she's uh, hanging out with her friends or whatever. And Brett sees this as a decent opportunity. As her friends seem to be walking away, and it's like Caroline is, like, getting her stuff, about to go to another class. So Brett is like, all right, cool, like, I can, because he's already been talking to her. This isn't some cold approach stuff, right? He's already been talking to her. He's like, okay, cool. Like, I can go up to her. We can chat it out a little bit. Word, right? Whatever. 
So Brett goes up to her and he's like, hey, like, what's up, Caroline? And she looks at him and kind of gives him this like nice little smile because she knows what's up, guys. Like she knows what's good. She knows what's going on right now. So uh, yeah, she's like kind of gives him a little smile like, hey, like, what's up? Like, how's it going, man? Like, how's it going? And um, uh, yeah, so they start walking and, you know, Brett's kind of like, you know, chat her up a little bit, asking how her day's been, asking how this class they have together is going for her, all this kind of good stuff, right? And that's when the spoiled kid sees this. And the spoiled kid is like, ah, oh, hell nah, bro. Like, I'm not letting this happen. So the spoiled kid, he gets, so he has a water bottle on him, right? The spoiled kid has a water bottle and he grabs his water bottle and he's walking down the hallway. So um, uh, Caroline and Brett are walking down the hallway in one direction. And the spoiled kid is walking down the hallway as well. And that's when the spoiled spoil kid is like, oops. And he acts ac- accidentally, doesn't actually do it accidentally, but he tries to make it look like he trips. And when he trips with huge quotation marks, I'm doing air quotations in the air right now, actually, because there are huge air quotation marks around this. When he trips, right, he spills all this water all over Brett. And it's funny because, like, it's it's very obvious that he did it on purpose. Like, he falls to the ground, but as he's fall, after he falls, he literally dumps the rest of the water bottle on top of, uh, on top of Brett anyways. So it's like, why did he even pretend to fall, bro? It's so obvious. Yeah, so it was super obvious that the spoil kid was trying to sabotage us on purpose. And I don't know why the spoil kid really thought that just getting him, like, Brett wet is gonna, like, somehow mess up his charisma or something. Or I don't know how, why the spoil kid thought that that was gonna improve his chances. Because if anything, dude, it literally just made it more obvious that the spoil kid was, like, desperate at this point. And the spoil kid literally just made it look like he was trying to sabotage Brett, and it just failed. So Caroline, the thing is, she notices this. She notices that because she knows they have a little bit of a rivalry going on anyways over her, lol. But she knows that they have, like, a little bit of a rivalry going on. But also, right, she notices that, like, who's playing dirty here? The spoil kid's playing dirty. You know what the spoil kid has not done? Really try to talk to her, bro. Like, all the spoil kid has done is tried to, like, flex his, like, lifestyle or whatever, when in reality his lifestyle is literally just what his parents give him. So, yeah, he's been flexing his $100 bills that grandma gave him for his birthday while Brett has actually been putting in the hard work and trying to have decent, good conversations with her. So who do you think she's going to pick, bro? I don't know about you, but it's a pretty clear situation in my mind. Like, it's pretty clear which one she's going to pick. But anyways, I do digress because, uh, you know, Caroline is like, oh, Brett, like, all right, like, do you need me to, like, get a paper towels or something? And the spoiled kid starts to realize, oh, my God, this is actually backfiring in my face. Because he notices that, like, Caroline is like, oh, Brett, let me help you out, whatever, right? And Brett's like, or no, the, sorry, the spoiled kid's like, oh, my God, Brett, you got water all over you. How embarrassing. And Brett's like, looks at him, he's like, wait, how is it embarrassing that you tripped and spilled water on me? And that's when the spoiled kid realized, wait a minute, if anyone's going to be embarrassed here, it's going to be me because it makes me look clumsy because it makes me look like I just tripped and spilled water all over this guy. Like, if anyone here is going to be embarrassed by this situation, it's actually going to be me. And that's when the spoiled kid's like, well, um, no, dude, it's actually super embarrassing that you get water on you. Like, it's actually embarrassing for you. I feel so embarrassed for your behalf, bro. Like, that's actually so crazy, dude. Like, I'd be so embarrassed if I were you right now. Like, (laughs) Uh, shoot. And that's when the spoiled kid realizes that he kind of messed up doing this whole thing. And Brett's like, oh man, don't worry. Like, it's okay if you're clumsy. Like, I don't really blame you for being super clumsy. And the spoiled kid's like, I'm not clumsy. You're clumsy for getting water all over you. And the spoiled kid, and Brett's like, dude, you tripped and spilled the water on me. And spoiled kid's like, I didn't trip. I poured the water on you. And Brett's like, oh, so then you just intentionally poured water on me. And he's like, no, I just tripped. And then Brett's like, so you're clumsy then? He's like, no, I'm neither. I'm just awesome. Caroline, you hear that? I'm awesome. Yeah. Uh, stop stop being so clumsy and getting water on you, Brett. Ha, huh, so clumsy, dude. Goodbye. The spoiled kid literally gets up and leaves, trying to make it look like he won that whole altercation where it's just so freaking obvious that he did not win that conversation at all. If anything, it just shows how embarrassingly desperate he is at this point. Because he, he, I think the spoiled kid is starting to realize that he is not winning this. He is definitely not the one who is going to be coming out in front.
Also, by the way, if you made it this far into the video, comment shoe down below. Completely random word, but I try to make them as random as possible. I just like to see how many people made it this far into the video. So while you're down in the comment section commenting shoe, check out the pinned comment as there's a link to the Spotify in which all these stories are uploaded as podcasts. So make sure to go follow me on there and listen there. As well, there are two links in the description to my other two channels. I will be uploading daily on there from this day forward. Make sure to subscribe as it really does help out. Anyways, right... So Brett and the Spoil Kid are start. It's starting to become like people are like spreading the word that Brett is winning. Like it is becoming like a popular rumor that Brett is absolutely bodying the Spoil Kid in the quest. Uh, the quest for Caroline. That sounds so stupid. In like basically in this little competition they had, and the Spoil Kid is very tapped into what the press is. What the press is saying. I can't believe I just said what the press is saying. He's very tapped into what everyone else is saying, as it is kind of like one of his best indications. Um, I mean, Brett knows he's doing well because he knows for a fact that he's actually putting in the work and talking to Caroline, and he knows that the spoiled kid is literally just, like, flexing his grandma's $100 bills and also spilling water on him and looking like a fool. So the spoiled kid basically has one last hurrah. He has one last major kind of, like, attempt before he has a freaking mental breakdown and calls everyone poor and says that his dad can literally buy Brett, which is... Just a great thing to say, man. Wow, that is top notch. You sound like a great person if you say that your dad can literally purchase someone. Bro, what the freak? What? Yeah, but anyways. Um, so his last real attempt, the spoiled kid in his mind was like, I need to do something big. I need to do something bold if I'm going to get Caroline's heart, which actually you should probably just start talking to her. Like, that's the one thing that, like, he refused to do, bro. The one thing he refused to do was actually talk to this girl, which is pretty ridiculous in my opinion. He would always be like, oh, well, me, I just need to flex my Bugatti or whatever. It's like, bro, how about you talk to her, bro? Like, first of all, if you're a kid, everyone knows that, like, the stuff that you have is probably because of your parents, and that's less impressive. Like, it's at least a little bit more impressive if you have, like, a I don't know, like, fancy watch or whatever, because at least seems like you made that money in whatever ways you made it, so there's at least, like, okay, well, maybe he went through some struggle or something to get that, but when you're a kid, bro, it's like, all right, cool, your parents are dishing out the bread to you, like, that's literally not impressive, dude, and also, like, you gotta talk to her, bro, but whatever, so the spoiled kid is like, yes, the thing I need to do is a big, extravagant whatever, like, I need to show my, my love and admiration uh, I don't need to talk to her, bro. I don't need to get to know her because she needs to actually, actually, she needs to get to know me. Not the other way around. Uh, I don't need to get to know her. I know she's fine or whatever, right? She needs to know how extravagant and awesome that I am individually. So, yeah. Uh, anyways, the spoiled kid is about to do something absolutely insane. So, let's jump ahead to lunch. So, Brett is sitting with the boys and Caroline's sitting at her table with her girlfriends, and uh, Caroline is, like, looking over, giving Brett glances. They're kind of looking at each other. They're being a little flirty. Love is in the air. Life is good, man. Brett knows that he's about to... He knows that he's about to close in on a, on a W, bro. Brett knows he's about to close in on a, on, a, on a win. He knows that, like, he's been putting in the work, he's been putting in the effort, and that his hard work is about to pay off. Basically, the rumor going around is that Caroline has more or less made up her choice and that she wants Brett to ask her out in the next few days. So the spoiled kid, hearing this, thinks that he needs to do something extremely extravagant, which he's about to in the worst possible way. So basically, um, they're all sitting at lunch, and that's when the spoiled kid... Okay, so basically at lunch, there is a kind of like a, a podium with a microphone... And what will happen is, like, when lunch is about to end, a teacher will go up there and make some announcements. It's kind of like, because they get the whole school there in the lunchroom. It's just a really easy way to get everyone together and make some announcements. However, the spoiled kid has decided to sabotage this for his own, uh, his own plans, right? And uh, sabotage it, he does. So basically, what the spoiled kid does is he goes up to the podium, turns on the microphone, is like, Hello, hello. Everyone, can I please have your attention? Please, I need your attention right now. And like, first of all, kids are not allowed to go up there. So everyone is like, whoa, 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 what's going on right now? It's like, ah, I need everyone's attention immediately. Like, no question about it. Like, Susie, can you shut up, please? Like, I need your attention. Like, literally calls out some kid in the back. Like, oh, okay. So he's like, okay, guys, I need this message to be super clear. Caroline. And immediately when he says the name Caroline, like, Brett is like, oh, shoot, dude, this kid's about to embarrass himself. Like, at the end of the day, Brett is only benef benefiting from, like, the spoiled kid looking like an idiot. But at the same time, like, 
He felt kind of bad, bro. Like, he felt kind of bad. Brett has at least a little bit of a heart. And so the spoiled kid is on the mic being like, Caroline, Caroline, I want to let you know that I know how into me you are. Which, like, first of all, hey, bro, what are you doing? I love how he opens it with, like, I know how into me you are. Like, dude, what makes you believe that? He's probably saying that, just probably thinking, like, oh, if I tell her, like, she's a sheep. If I tell her something, she'll believe it. So he's like, I know how into me you are, and I just want to let you know that I think you're okay as well. Like, I guess you're fine. So for that reason, I will be giving you the opportunity to go on a date with me this Friday. You, I mean, I know you're going to say yes, but uh, feel free to say yes in front of everyone so they know that I'm the winner and Brett is the loser. Yeah. And it is dead freaking silence for like a good couple seconds. I know you're thinking, oh, it's dead silence for a couple seconds. These were the longest seconds ever. These were minute-long seconds, or at least it felt like these were minute-long seconds. Like, this was insane. So, yeah, uh, sure enough, it's just dead silence. And then everyone turns their head. Like, every single person turns their head to look at Caroline. And Caroline, I guess she was, like, I don't know. Like, she wasn't really happy. Okay, look, dude, you can, and it's not okay. Like, these, like these, these big gestures, I think it's just, like, important for me to, like, reiterate. It's not a really okay thing to do, bro. Because, like, you're really putting this, like, this is embarrassing for the other person. It's totally chill if you want to ask someone out, but do so in a more respectful way. I mean, unless you know for a fact that they love the attention and that they want to say yes to you. Like, something like this is just, you're embarrassing someone. They don't consent to you embarrassing them, bro. Like, anyway, so she goes up to the podium, and the spoiled kid's probably like, Yes! She's gonna say that I won in front of everybody! So Caroline goes up to the podium, grabs the microphone, looks at the spoiled kid directly in the eyes, and says... Sorry, but no. The whole, like, crowd is like, Like, oh my god, she just said no to spoil kid in front of everyone. This means that her and that are Brett and are dating right now. And she puts the microphone back. And the spoil kid is, like, just kind of, like, sitting. He's just kind of, like, there, bro. He's literally just there. So the spoiled kid is very angry about this. He's like, oh my god. <sighs> and instead of blaming Caroline, which first of all, good, you shouldn't blame Caroline, right? The only person to blame here is really yourself in this situation. But the spoiled kid grabs the microphone and in front of everyone is like, Caroline, you're making a huge mistake. Brett is a little poor kid. I am the richest. And everyone's like, bro, what did you just say? Like, that is the weirdest sentence to ever come out. And he's like, Brett is so poor, and I'm so rich that my father could literally buy him if he wanted to, and it would be literally 0.001% of what he has. Like, he could buy him a billion times and still be richer than Brett, bro. And everyone's like, bro, hurt? What do you, hey, hey, bro, what do you mean by buy him, bro? Like, uh, what do you mean by that? And so the spoiled kid's like, Caroline, you're making a mistake. And then he turns to Brett, he's like, Brett. How much, like, what did you do? Like, what did you tell her? Like, what lies? What spells? What witchcraft? I am obviously the better one. Literally, I am the best. I have all the... And the spoiled kid literally is just having a meltdown, like an ego explosion. He's talking about how he's better than Brett, how he's, like, more attractive, richer, nicer, more humble. Like, the nicer and humble part is just pretty ironic for having a mental breakdown on stage about how epic you are. Like, you can't be like, I'm the most, I'm the most sexiest, richest, hottest, and most humble individual on planet Earth, and I need to let you know. So this spoiled kid is like, and I had enough of this. He literally takes the microphone and chucks it on the ground, and it breaks into, like, a bunch of pieces. By this time, the staff have made it to the stage and, like, take this spoiled kid away. And they bring him to the principal's office, and bro gets suspended for three days and has to, like, literally make a, okay, not a public apology, but he needs to write an apology letter to both Brett and Caroline. Bro got owned. Today we get a story time of a Gen Z kid who wants attention so badly that they literally fake being disabled and in a wheelchair. Eventually the Gen Z kid does slip up and gets exposed, and karma is proven once again to actually be real. I know you guys will enjoy this story, so sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, and let's jump right into it. So we're gonna call the subscriber who submitted today's story, Ryan. So anyways, in Ryan's class, there's this one Gen Z kid who loved attention. The Gen Z kid would always like post stuff on TikTok being like, 
I had a bad day or whatever. And look, it's totally fine to like want attention. However, it's definitely both the quantity of times that you ask for it and the way that you go about it. Look, attention is necessary, especially for human beings. They need attention from their other, you know, other human beings, right? It's good for your health, whatever. However, I think we all know that one person who just goes way too far to get the attention and or they're just super annoying about it. The Gen Z kid was no, like, was no different. And the Gen Z kid in this case goes way too far because, look, I find it annoying when people uh, try and get attention in annoying manners, as most people do. However, it's different from being annoying and pretending that you are literally physically disabled in a wheelchair just to get attention. There is a very clear difference in the Gen Z kid very obviously crossed the line. So the Gen Z kid was never in a wheelchair. They were never, they didn't even come into school with a boot. Like they never had anything like that. But one day Ryan was sitting in class and just thought it'd be a normal day in class. He thought he'd start off the day, you know, normal day, whatever. And that's when the Gen Z kid comes in in a wheelchair, wheels into class. Obviously this is a really big deal. I mean, you should treat everyone the same, but when someone that you've been going to school with for a very long time, this suddenly walks it, like doesn't even walk in, wheels in in a wheelchair, bro. You're definitely gonna ask some questions because it's not just like someone's like, you know what, I feel like, I feel like being in a wheelchair today. I mean, the Gen Z kid actually was like that, but no one would actually with this, no one with a sound conscious would ever do that, right? So anyways, obviously the Gen Z kid gets a lot of attention including the teacher kind of stops class because the Gen Z kid was a little late, but the teacher's not going to be like, should have wheeled her quicker, bro. <laughs> like the teacher's going to be like, oh my God, like what happened? So the teacher and everyone in class, you know, they were just like, oh my God, like what happened? Is everything okay? And the teacher's like, I didn't get a note from your parents about this. Not even, not in an, like an accusatory way, because in the very beginning, no one is suspected even for a second that the Gen Z kid was faking it. Even though the Gen Z kid was notorious and had a history of faking things for attention, or not even just trying to, not even like faking things, but just trying to get attention at all costs, nobody possibly thought that the Gen Z kid would fake being like physically crippled in a wheelchair. No one would ever believe that. And the teacher, when, when the teacher said, oh, your parents didn't even tell me about this, more of a kind of a statement of surprise than a statement of, I think you're faking this. Obviously, in retrospect, this was the first in a major red flag, but no one at the time, not even Ryan, ever thought anything about it. So the Gen Z kid basically goes on to say, make up this fabricated story. No one at the time realized it was fabricated, but the Gen Z kid basically went on to say something along the lines of, yeah, like, I was, you know, I, uh, you know, I went to the doctor, I wasn't feeling good, and it turns out, like, my legs may never work again. And the thing is, that is a very serious thing that happens to some people. It's very uncommon, but it is very serious and your life will never be the same. If you all of a sudden like cannot use your legs, then your life will never be the same, bro. I think that's pretty obvious. And uh, yeah, using someone else's uh, situation, a tragic situation that they have to go through the trials and tribulations of life, giving you the biggest curveball ever uh, to your advantage because you want attention is pretty sickening. But uh Anyways, and also, first of all, the Gen Z kid could have been like, oh, I broke my leg. I'm going to be in this for months. But the Gen Z kid makes up a story even more crazy. The Gen Z kid, like, literally says that they might be, like, disabled forever, bro. Because the thing is, if the Gen Z kid really just wanted attention, say that you break your leg, you'll have attention for at least a month or something, then you can start walking normally again and no one will ever bat an eye, right? However, you know, the Gen Z kid's like, no, I think I might not be able to, like, ever walk again. And while the Gen Z kid didn't give a lot of specific details about their condition, well, because the condition didn't exist, no one really questioned it. Because why would you go about questioning someone who literally wheels in with a wheelchair? I don't know about you, but probably the first thing that would come out of my mouth would be like, hey, dude, like, if there's anything I can do to help you, let me know. Not... I don't believe it. I think you're faking your disa like your disorder. Like that is not something that you'll hear coming out of my mouth. And so everyone was very just like, oh my God, like I'll let me help you. A bunch of kids got up to like make way. Every kid basically said, you can take my seat, like whatever, like, oh, I'll move my desk out of the way. Don't even worry about it, blah, blah, blah. All this kind of stuff. Everyone was being as good as they possibly could be to the Gen Z kid, giving the Gen Z kid a copious amount of attention. Little did they know, they were all falling into the Gen Z kid's plot. The plan that was meticulous, well, not very meticulously, you know, planned out because as you'll see, the Gen Z kid, you know, got, got the karma that they deserved because they made a massive mistake and exposed themselves, but that will be happening, happening a little later on. So 
you know, stick around for a second. It's worth it. But anyways, yeah, for a little while, everyone is just like giving the Gen Z kid the utmost attention, being like, whatever you need, whatever you want, we got you. However, as the days and soon weeks went on, one thing was very clear. The Gen Z kid was definitely using it to their advantage. One thing I will say is that most of the classmates didn't really care about this because if someone is, you know, genuinely comes in, and, you know, with a life-changing disability, then you will accommodate it for them. However, some classmates, including Ryan, were starting to believe that it just felt a little bit strange that the Gen Z kid all of a sudden was asking for people to do their homework or, you know, to go do, man like, certain tasks that you didn't really need legs to do. Obviously, no one really questioned it at the time and just believed that, you know, the stress of completely changing someone's situation was enough to, you know, just, you know what, they are going through enough right now, let me lighten the burden. Very, you know, reasonable thing to believe. However, this is where things began to, like, people weren't suspicious, but they were, begun, they were beginning to become almost suspicious to the, a little bit, a little bit. And also, the big thing is no one outwardly wanted to admit that they were suspicious because it just seemed like a really, I don't know, not a great thing. I mean, your classmate is going through a very difficult situation, according to them. I mean, they literally roll in with a wheelchair all of a sudden. You're not going to, your first assumption is not going to be, oh, they're faking it. Your first assumption is going to be like, oh my God, like that's terrible. What can I do for you? Yeah, however, um, Ryan was with his friend one Friday night, like two weeks after the whole, you know, Gen Z kid rolls in in a wheelchair, and he's having, like, a sleepover, and it's, like, you know, late at night. I don't know if you guys ever had these, but these were my favorite parts of sleepovers as a child. Basically, the late-night conversations with the boys or girls or whatever, right? But spe specifically, from my experience, the late-night conversation with the boys, right? You've already played your video games, you've already gone out, you've already got done stuff, and you're basically just staying up later than you tell your parents you're actually staying up, and you're just, like, you know, around by a flashlight or whatever, and then you just have really deep and meaningful conversations, or just, like, the most interesting conversations that last way, way into the night. So Ryan was having one of those conversations, and he's like... I have a thought that's, like, kind of, like, bad, but, like, I don't know how to go about it. Obviously, when someone says that, there's a lot of things that they could be saying. So Ryan's friend's like, oh, what do you mean by that? And Ryan's like, don't judge me by this, but, like, can you hear me out? So Ryan's friend will call him Ben is like, sure, whatever. Like, just tell me. It's, it's cool. I'll, I'll, I'll use the caveat of, like, I'm not going to, like, go crazy if you say something weird, right? And he's basically like, look, I know this might be bad of me to say, but I'm a little suspicious of the Gen Z kid. It just feels like, I look, they might actually, like, I, I'm not saying that they're not disabled, but I'm also, it just seems weird how they're going about it. Like, it seems as if, like, they're asking people to do their homework when that doesn't make sense that they're disabled. Like, I understand asking people to go get their books or to move their books from class to class, but it just, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. And also, the fact that the teacher never got a note from the parent, like, that just doesn't make sense to me either. Like, I, I'm not saying that they're faking it, and it's funny because Ben didn't have a shocked look on his face. Ben didn't have a disgusted look on his face. Ben kind of had a very blank look. A blank look of kind of like, keep going, and I'm going to agree with you. So by the time that Ryan was done telling Ben about his kind of, like, his deep personal thoughts that you would only tell someone at like the very late nights of the boys' sleepover, mid-deep conversation, right? kind of very exposing himself and where, you know, he kind of, part of him was afraid that Ben was going to be like, how dare you say these things? Like, our classmate is going through such a difficult time, whatever, right? But Ben is just kind of silent. And there's like a couple seconds of silence until Ben breaks the silence by telling Ryan, like, hey man, like, I've been kind of thinking the same thing, but there's no way I could possibly say anything. So then they're both kind of more free to speak. And they start going on about all the anomalies and all the inconsistencies with what's going on. So at this point, the Gen Z kid has not completely exposed themselves. The Gen Z kid has not done the, has, okay, and later on in the story, the Gen Z kid exposes themselves so bad and exposes themselves in front of every single person. And it's so clear and so obvious that it almost proves karma's true. So stick around for that. But up until this point, the Gen Z kid has been fairly good about their act. However, there are a few inconsistencies. The things that are becoming annoying is the fact that the Gen Z kid is asking for more and more for people to do. Which, look, it's understandable. If you come in with some disability that makes life harder for you, then it is kind of expected for your community to, to kind of step up, especially if you ask. 
For example, I can only imagine, you know, maybe carrying a backpack from class to class or a bunch of heavy books when you're in a wheelchair would be difficult. Um, so asking a classmate to help you out in that department is not unreasonable or ridiculous or anything like that. However, asking classmates to do homework or like, you know, people would bring in their own food and the Gen Z kid would like roll over to them, give them big puppy eyes and be like, man, it's been so hard ever since I've been in this wheelchair. Can I have your cookie? Like very obvious emotional manipulation, like very blatant stuff that seems to be almost using the fact that they're in a wheelchair to kind of get stuff out of them. And I don't know about you, but I feel like people who actually have that, you know, disabilities and stuff like that wouldn't use it like that. It's something that they actually have to live with. Obviously, the Gen Z kid doesn't understand the gravity of, you know, the situation that they're basically cosplaying as, right? Because they don't actually live it. So anyways, if you made it this far into the video, comment share down below. We'll make that the secret word of the day. And while you're down in the comment section commenting share, make sure to check out the pinned comment because in the pinned comment, there's a link to my Spotify account in which I upload these stories as podcasts. Feel free to listen to them on there as it also helps me out. And also the second link in the pinned comment is a link to my second channel, uh, Connor Stories, in which I upload, which I read stories not from you guys submitting it to me, but from Reddit. Please subscribe to that channel as it is newer, and you know it. Your views will go so much farther because it's such a small channel. Anyways, let's get back to it. So, Ryan and Ben both have similar suspicions, and so Ryan decides that he wants to do a little bit of investigative work. So anyways, uh, the students are picked up after school every day. Some kids walk home, but a lot of them are picked up. Ryan knows that, you know, the Gen Z kid doesn't, you know, Ryan doesn't know exactly where the Gen Z kid lives, right? However, Ryan also knows that the Gen Z kid doesn't walk home from school, or I guess would wheel back home from school at this point. So, you know, I mean, if you're in a wheelchair, you're definitely not going to wheel like 25 minutes unless you're like, that's your life and you're trying to do it for exercise. I don't know, right? I don't know. But Ryan knows that this kid doesn't walk home from school. So Ryan knows that they must be picked up. So Ryan, while not necessarily expecting anything, is just curious. So Ryan walks home from school. So he kind of has all the time in the world that, to get back. Obviously, if he waits an hour, his mom will be nervous and concerned and be like, where have you been, etc. whatever, right? However, right, Ryan decides to basically follow the Gen Z kid somewhere, right? And the Gen Z kid kind of like, you know, wheels out of class. And Ryan is like very sneakily kind of like following them while being kind of far away, while not being too far away. And watches as they, they don't go out the main exit. Because one thing he noticed was the Gen Z kid basically disappeared after school. And it was very weird. I mean, Ryan thought that, oh, they must have gotten picked up early or maybe they just got picked up somewhere else or something like that. And never really thought about it. But he's like, you know, I don't know. There's just inconsistencies with their story. And I just want to watch, right? He wasn't sure what he was looking for. He just knew that he was looking for something and something he did find. So anyways, sure enough, the Gen Z kid rolls, instead of going out the front door, goes out the back door, which is just very weird, right? Very weird. And uh, starts like, and, and, and Ryan, very carefully, right? He has to be very careful following her because he doesn't want to get exposed, right? Or he doesn't want, he, he wants to catch her in, in the natural act if she's doing anything, right? So he watches and he, and he follows behind her. And the Gen Z kid is like wheels out the back door and Ryan sneaks out the back door, wheels down like a one street, right? And then there's this weird place. There's this like old garage, a big garage that would have all these like, has like bicycles and old rusted out equipment. It almost seemed to be abandoned, but sometimes people just store stuff in there. And the Gen Z kid wheels into the garage. This is very, very strange behavior. So Ryan, while making sure that he's not gonna get exposed, still follows behind closely. That's when, the, well, that's when Ryan sees something completely shocking. I mean, it's not as if he didn't see this coming, but he also didn't see this specifically coming. The Gen Z kid, walks out of the barn. Listen to me again. The Gen Z kid walks out of the barn. The Gen Z kid does not wheel out of the barn. The Gen Z kid walks out of the barn. Yes. The Gen Z kid wheels into this barn, a garage type thing, and then walks out of it without a wheelchair. Ryan watches as the Gen Z kid, right, once again, like walks out and then like kind of looks in both directions to make sure no one notices and kind of like runs down the street to where, you know, their mom is like idling in their car. 
I can't assume what, I, I don't actually know the details, and by I, I mean Ryan does not know the actual details, but Ryan would love to believe that the mom doesn't know any better. Ryan would love to believe that the mom is not implicit on, you know, their, you know, child's, uh, you know, games, right, to get attention using other people's suffering. What might have happened was that the child's like, I don't want to be picked up uh, in front of everyone. It gives me anxiety or something. Like, please pick me up here. Please, mom, please. It's like, doctor says you have to do, I don't know. Maybe some kind of guilt trip or something like that. And the mom's like, okay, you know, when I was a teenager, I was kind of weird too, so I'm just not going to question it. So Ryan immediately calls up his friend Ben once the Gen Z kid drives away. And he's like, Ben. And Ben's like, what's up, dude? He's like, Ben, you're not going to believe what happened. And so Ryan explains everything, and Ben is dead silent the entire time. You know someone's really interested in every detail of a story when they don't say a single thing. Like, when I like a story, I might pipe in a little bit and be like, dang, bro, like, that's crazy. But when I'm really, really locked in, I don't say a word. And Ben was the same. And by the end of it, Ben was like, someone's got exposure, bro. And Ben was, ben was being serious. He was like, this is, like, unethical behavior, and someone's got to put an end to this. So Ben and Ryan meet up after school and they meet up at Ryan's house and they're just sitting in Ryan's room and they're just kind of like trying to contemplate like, okay, how do we go about this? How do we like, how can we do this? Because like, we can't just like go up to her in school and like push her out of the wheelchair because like, I don't know, she might fake it and be like, oh my God. And then we'd actually be expelled, right? Uh, We need to figure out a way to catch her in the act. We can't question her. And that's when Ryan's like, I got it. Assuming that she, you know, does the same thing every single day, uh, I was able to secretly follow her before, I should be able to secretly follow her again. And Ben's like, all right, that's genius. Just make sure to record it this time. So sure enough, right, the next day comes around. And once again, you know, the Gen Z kid wheels out in the back hallway, right? So Ryan decides that he's going to record the entire thing. So he starts recording and follows her out. So Ryan does what he did the last day following the Gen Z kid as they wheel out in the back of the school, go out, like, down the street, go down a couple streets to the abandoned kind of, like, garage warehouse type area, wheel into it, and then walk out of it. But unlike last time, this time, he's recorded the whole thing. He makes sure that he's recording, he makes sure the audio's good, he makes sure that, you know, I mean, he's sneaking around while recording, so it's not gonna be the best video, but especially in the most damning moments, aka when they walk in, or they wheel in and walk out, He's making sure that he makes sure that that is very, very clear and that is very, very, like that is like the video is not shaky at this point. So afterwards, you know, the same thing happens again. They walk into the car and drive off. Ryan calls up his friend Ben and Ben's like, well, how did it go? And Ryan sends him the, the, the video. And after watching it, Ben's like, all right, wow, like this is actually like bulletproof evidence right here. So they don't know exactly how to go about doing this. Um, They think, okay, well, maybe we could send it to the teachers or whatever. Maybe, whatever, we could keep this really quiet. Maybe we could send it to the Gen Z kid and be like, we know that you're faking it. Like, you need to, like, stop doing this and give them the benefit, give them the courtesy to be like, oh, guys, I'm actually okay now. Thank you so much. Whatever. But no. Ryan and Ben decided that, you know what, the, the... The Gen Z kid did not give any courtesy or any, the Gen Z kid was not polite. The Gen Z kid did not give courtesy to the people who actually suffer with this stuff. The Gen Z kid did not actually, you know, care or give like, you know, any credit, like, I I don't know. They just felt like, you know what? No, like the Gen Z kid deserves to be torched for this basically. Not literally guys, come on now. But so they decide that what they're going to do is instead of going to the teachers of the Gen Z kid themselves, they are going to disseminate this video across social media and not like try and get a viral TikTok, but at least try and get it on everybody's private Snapchat story. Try and get it like pushed around and try and get it sent to every group chat in the frickin' grade. And they do so pretty easily. So they text up a bunch of guys and a bunch of girls that they know and be like, look, you know the Gen Z kid, here is proof that they're not actually like disabled and they're faking it the whole time. And sure enough, the video spreads like wildfire. And by the end of the night, I'd say 90% of the kids in school have seen the video and 98% know about the video if they have at least have about 98% at least know about the video. So by the next day, when the Gen Z kid wheels into school, everybody is just staring at them with this look of like, I know the truth. 
For some reason, I think the Gen Z kid just didn't know that the video was circulating. Or even if the Gen Z kid did learn about it, I guess they decided to stick to the lie and just wheel into school, assuming that, you know, no one would actually confront them if they were in a wheelchair. Yeah, so to say the least, uh, people stopped doing what the Gen Z kid said. When the Gen Z kid was, like, trying to get attention, trying to get people to do stuff, people ignored them. And, uh, yeah, eventually the video actually made its way to the principal's office slash the faculty staff. And the faculty staff suspended the Gen Z kid for an entire week. I mean, it's totally understandable. And uh, after the entire week, the Gen Z kid had to walk to the front of class, or not the front of class, but the front of everyone, because they had, they had, week, they had like bi-monthly meetings or whatever where they'd all come together as an entire school. And the Gen Z kid had to walk on stage, yeah, not wheel on stage, walk on stage and give a public apology and was also forced to meet with someone who actually lives like completely disabled from the waist down to learn about the true struggle. It was a very harsh punishment, but it definitely fits the crime. How's it going everyone? Today we have a story of one of the cringiest Gen Z kids of all time. Basically, this Gen Z kid takes an IQ test, believes that he's genuinely a genius, and then starts to berate everyone else. And then he does a whole host of some of the craziest things you have ever heard. So sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, leave a like on the video to claim you free nothing, and let's jump right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted today's story, James. Anyways, right, James is a freshman in high school, and in his class, there's a kid who we're going to call the Gen Z kid. And when I say Gen Z kid, I don't mean someone literally in Gen Z. It's kind of just a term given to people that spend all of their life on TikTok, that, you know, you know, cancel people on Twitter, that just do a lot of dumb stuff like that. Everyone, it doesn't mean just because you're in a certain generation, just to be clear. Anyways, though, this story all starts one day when the Gen Z kid does one of those IQ tests you find online. So if you don't know, uh, you can actually get like a, a official IQ test. And an IQ test is only so good for certain things. It'll, per, it'll figure out pretty good how good you are at solving problems, but intelligence has a bajillion factors in it and you can't just take one test and really decide how smart you are just based off of that. And also, those online tests, a lot of them are BS and made up. And a lot of them are just trying to get you to click so that you'll watch the advertisements on their website. Anyways, though, so sure enough, one day in class, the Gen Z kid clicks on one of these, like, it's just, like, on TikTok, and gets, like, one of those, like, TikTok ad whatever things for, like, how smart are you really, whatever, right? So the Gen Z kid clicks on the IQ test and proceeds to take it. The thing is, though, that uh, none of the other subscribers, that the subscriber James and all the other people in the Gen Z kids class was aware of was that the Gen Z kid literally just put in the answers randomly. It was really, it was, it, one, it was a pretty fake IQ test. It was like 10 questions, right? It was 10 questions long. So like an actual IQ test would probably have a lot more questions. The questions would be a lot more difficult. But even though this was only 10 questions long and the questions were probably just like, oh, is this the color red? And then it shows the color red. The Gen Z kids still completely randomly guess these questions, which would be revealed later on to James, the subscriber and everyone else. But basically after spamming in these questions, hitting submit on the IQ test, it came back with like, 10 out of 10 questions answered correctly, which is actually statistically pretty impressive um, to get them all randomly correct. Maybe this website just told you everything was correct anyways. And labeled them with the score of intellectual genius, genius level IQ, or whatever you want to say. So look, the Gen Z kid who believes everything that they see on TikTok anyways, imagine they see an IQ test calling them an actual genius. So one, do you think that the Gen Z kid believes that, okay, well, I took an IQ test, right, and I put in the answers randomly, and it was a sketchy 